Wait, what? <laughs> Damn, oh, hey. what's happening, buddy? Yeah, I didn't see you there. <laughs> what's going on, everyone? We are Bangkok Strange, and we are live for the first time. Looks like we have a little bit of stream issue on one of the feeds, but... That's okay. Nothing big. We're nothing live big. on YouTube. That's what matters. All that matters. Absolutely. Oh, no, it's... Uh, here we go. So, our very first live stream, Mike. Welcome, Greetings. Welcome. Sound, buddy. Boom. Yes, indeed. There we indeed. go. A little fist bump action to start the morning. We could chest bump. Always be fisting. Yes. Always Wait, be fisting. What? <laughs> Wait, what? Dot com or, <laughs> or dot triple X? Of course, dot triple X. Oh, okay, I was going to say, you got to focus, dude. I mean, let's face it. Always be fisting. Woo! And so, speaking of porn, right? All let's, right. Let's, let's get right into it. Right into it, strange. One of the strangest things. Uh, well, two. I've got two porn-related stories for us this week. Well, that's more normal than strange. Isn't yeah, that? true. Right? I mean, so there was a there was a story that popped up on Facebook, got very popular, where a teacher asked the kids to go home and draw the logo that they see most commonly. <laughs> oh, and it was you porn. It was Pornhub. Pornhub. So some kid drew yes. Pornhub, and the teacher's like, "Well, where did you see this Pornhub?" He's and got he goes, T-shirts. He's like, "Oh, my dad always has this on his computer." <laughs> <laughs> I've seen like ten year old girls on the BTS with the Pornhub t shirt. Yeah. It's like, oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. Do you even know what that says? So the guy who uh, works at the drink shop I like to go to on uh on, on my main soy. Okay. He often him him and his mom work this shop together. Okay. And he will often wear a Pornhub t shirt. I've taken photos of like him handing me my drink with the Pornhub t shirt. Does he have on. any clue? But he knows what it is for sure. Because <laughs> when I take the photo of him in the shirt, he's Smiling ear to ear. Plus, his right hand is a lot more muscular than his left one. <laughs> that one jacked off. He's like, wait a minute, what have you been doing? Ah, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm shucking a lot of corn. So now his mom asked, like, uh, one time, she's like, oh, Ash, Jib. She's like, why are you taking the photo of. Uh... <laughs> My son, every time. Yeah. You know. And so Jib's like, oh, that shirt that he's wearing is very funny. And uh, I think you just tighten hair if you need Do I? Okay. And then uh, and she's like, well, what do you mean? And she's like, oh, well, yeah, it's like the biggest porn site in the world, probably the second largest analytics company in the world Roger as well. Roger that, yeah. And uh, the mom's like, <laughs> and he's like, oh, no, no, I got it from my brother. And then she's like, your brother's younger than you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, classic like, family values. That's pretty, it was, but, you know, I mean, it's funny, right? So, because, like, years ago, you actually give me a little bit more gain. A few, right. few years ago, um, I don't even know how many actually, but like one of the number one most recognizable logos in the world was the camel thing. Right? So we got camel gut to, filters. Real, real quick, we got Gut to Love Thailand and Steve Roberts in the chat, guys. Hello, Dave, how are you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you, man. So, Steven Roberts actually works at Dell. Really? He works at Dell Technologies, yeah. He's a great guy. In, great uh, guy. in California? No, Bangkok. Oh, wow. Wireless. Or yeah. no, I'm sorry. They moved their main offices, actually. I mean, because it used to be EMC, right? Okay. And Dell Technologies bought everything. But yeah, he's a great guy. Good to see you, buddy. Thanks a lot for coming in. Nice. A little Dell action. Before I was a Mac guy, I was a hardcore Dell guy back in the day. I will tell you that I have a lot of respect for the companies they bought, but as far as like their laptops go, yeah. I got no uh, allegiance whatsoever. I used, to, I used to love my Dell laptop. I've had one of these big monster. Oh, XPS. Dells. Yeah. Yeah, the better. And then they bought the Alienware, yeah, right? Yeah, they bought Alienware. So that's, yeah, that's a it good was, It was so baller, though, that, that laptop. For sure. And like when the fan would kick on, it'd be like, <laughs> like like, the, like taking off. <laughs> you're like, oh, you start feeling it a little yeah. bit lower. You're, like, you're, you're a little yeah. chubby. I'm like, all right, Dude, right. This power, is epic. power. I love this laptop warming me up. <laughs> so, camel filters. You're saying, what yeah. Those? Well, I mean, well, no, no, not filter. Oh. I mean, if you're gonna go, you're gonna go. Yeah, you're no gonna filter, go. but no, the camel logo, right? Okay, I mean, yeah. obviously, everyone knows Coca Cola. Cool, cool, cool camel Joe or whatever. Yeah, I'd walk them out for yeah. a camel <laughs> yeah. toe. Yeah, walk them out for a camel toe. Like, why doesn't Pornhub sell those? I'd walk yeah. a mile for a camel toe. Yeah. It'd be great. I mean, they should, they definitely need to contact they, me. They, they need to get some Bangkok. Actually, Pornhub should be sponsoring Bangkok. I completely versus. agree. We would completely rewrite the spelling of Bangkok, <laughs> that's for sure. But I'll tell you what, though, um, porn is technically illegal in Thailand. Like to stream it and everything? You no, know, to watch it. So it used to be a lot of stuff was blocked. Like you just go to it and it would. Yeah. And I heard a, it would have like this government site saying like it was blocked for whatever reasons. And I heard a rumor that you could use a VPN. And I don't even. Know. I don't know what a VPN is. Nah, I don't know. it's way too technical. I was a network engineer for for a decade. Nah, you know we never learned that. No, actually. never learned VPN. And then going yeah. to the going to the specific sites. Yeah, I mean that just doesn't yeah, add value. No, so, but anyway. 
In theory. In theory. So this kid maybe outed his dad. Yeah, right, exactly. Well, at least it's not China. At least they're getting yeah. thrown in jail for using a VPN. Well, maybe the dad would he was just like, I was just getting analytical information about the U.S. election. Precisely. It's like, wow, number eight website in the entire globe. Yeah. I should probably review this yeah. and see what kind of content like, they're giving out. Alabama watches a lot of, like, inbred gay porn. Like, really? So, Alabama? So if, Pornhub does these hilarious... Um, analytic drops like every year your Especially, friends tell you this so it's so i've heard from other people mm. but they they did the um the analytics of like the election and like oh which states look at the most porn it's always the red states <laughs> and which states look at the most like gay porn it's <laughs> always the red states <laughs> you know when Nalen palin was uh oh we got mango sticky rice aloha good to see you buddy. my favorite Mama. dessert dude big time kanye mark moore it's a, is that what you call it kanye mark moore yeah. or is that one of your favorite porn stars that's both okay got yeah. it yeah. <laughs> the, the, that's the sticky rice sticky rice indeed yeah. it puts the sticky in mango sticky wow rice. that just i mean i may need a mint after that that was just a crazy so <laughs> Oh yeah, so remember Nalen Palin was a really popular player. Ah, like, got it. That was most Sarah Palin was like one of the most searched terms. Like what was that 2016 when they ran against uh, or tw- oh, 2008 when when uh, her and McCain ran against uh, Barack. And how he used to bend over the pages, but on boom, <laughs> tsh, how you doing? <laughs> so the second big porn story in Thailand this week isn't really about porn, but a porn site, Cam Soda, and okay. Full Metal Dojo probably one of the most creative, interesting fight promotions on the planet, right. did a show streamed on Cam Soda. Really? And so they, they timed it. It was like a morning show, so it was supposed to stream right before the UFC. Okay. Now, you, it's weird enough that you're watching MMA or, or fights. Soda, yeah. So it was their event called Fight Circus. Okay. And it was on uh, this porn Cam Soda. So like I see, and Jib comes over, and she's like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm watching the fight. She's like, she's like, what is that girl next to the fight Define doing? Fight. <laughs> yeah. Why is there all this chat with all these little <laughs> yeah, so, emojis? Yeah, there's all, people are like throwing up like like all these like fighting emojis and stuff. <laughs> but one of the uh, one of the funny things about it was like all the little things you'd see next to it, like like girls eating ass and all this stuff. <laughs> but like while you're trying to watch the fights, but this fight card was crazy. Essentially, every fight was open weight. So no weight classes. They had like lightweight versus heavyweight, middleweight versus super. And what heavyweight. happens in those scenarios? Does that bet does basically the better fighter just simply cream the other guy? Well, there's weight classes for a reason. It, precisely. So, like if you fought me, I'm dead <laughs> in like four seconds. So nine times out of ten, the bigger guy will win. Yeah. So there, there was a few cases. A uh, local legend uh, fighter in Thailand, Tangmo, who uh, okay. is essentially I, I guess now he's uh, one in seventeen. He's lost almost all of his fights. The, uh, but he nailed it on this thing. No, no. So the only fight he ever won was the only fight he had to win <laughs> to make him a good, legend. Good for him. He fought like this uh, racist, roided out cop from the U.S. that okay. had retired to Thailand but hated Asian people. And uh, he's just juiced to the gills. <laughs> like, But he's a retired cop. He's a retired he's cop. And uh, so racist. Like the, the things he would say on a regular basis were just insane. Like right um, before the fight? Like, like, Screw you, Thailand! In, in general, drop. in general, just okay. the things he would say were ignorant and racist. Yeah, okay, and got it. Like, he's like, well, black people get killed; they deserve to get killed. They shouldn't. There yeah, you go. like that that's type of douchebag. If you've just joined the broadcast, yeah. that's actually not where he comes from. <laughs> no. trust me. So, Tangmo took this fight, and he's supposed. Tangmo is especially supposed to lose. Tangmo means okay. watermelon. This kid okay. looks like a watermelon. Okay, that's why they call him Tangmo, and. um He's lost like 16 fights at this point. Takes this fight, and like he, he he takes fights against like lightweights, and he'll just gas out after like 30 seconds. And he's a lightweight. What, no, what he's class? a super heavy. He's like Jesus. 200 kilos. And how can okay? So anyway, so he's in this fight with someone that clearly so, he should beat. No, no. So he's in the the fight with this roided out cop, and he, he knocks him out in uh, 10 seconds. <laughs> and just so we made these memes. It's like this okay, dude Tyson it. who he fought getting just murked. And it's like, you know when you've been tang mode. It's an animated You've been gym. tang mode. <laughs> so there you go. Tang mode, he fought a, uh, they call it Trinity rule set, where it's like boxing the first round, kickboxing the second, MMA the third. Okay. And it's two-minute rounds. So he wins the first round on points, yeah. boxing. Comes out gassed in the second round against, like I think he was fighting a, a lightweight. 
So it was multiple opponents throughout no, this. So, no, this is just him. This is one fight. Okay, got it. And uh, he comes out, gets kicked in the head once, turns around and quits. <laughs> he quits and he didn't just fall on the mat? No, he, he just, just went back to his seat. Yeah. He's like, nah, I need, a, I, need a, I need a smoothie. I'm yeah, done. He's like, I'm done. I need a smoothie. I need a smoothie.com. <laughs> What the fuck? Doesn't his manager like, dude? I don't expect you to be able to reconfigure a router. Get well, your ass out the gun. When you're when you're one in sixteen, I mean, yeah. your manager doesn't expect much. That's true. And yeah. He's taken fights in Australia and Japan. Like he is I mean, literally, he's a legend just for the fact that he takes any fight and loses them all. Yeah, essentially, he took a fight against uh, like a guy who was a hundred fifty five pounder up in Chiang Mai. And uh, he was drinking beer and smoking cigarettes before the fight. <laughs> 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 I'm on the mat, <laughs> like right next, right next to the ring. He's I like, got this. <laughs> there's a, a photo of him drinking a beer and smoking a cigarette. And he's wearing a gi, and he's got his gloves on. <laughs> Instead of walking around, the gorgeous girl with the number <laughs> for the round, she's like holding an ashtray <laughs> right in front of it. Say, oh no no, sorry, cop. You know what? So. That, that segment, but they had a fight, they had a couple fights on this card that one was two guys, 120 pound guys, versus a 185 pound guy. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, good, two, two. Oh, so, so presumably, right? I mean, obviously it's not linear math. Yeah. You know, it's not like 240 versus the 180. Yeah. But plus, I mean, dude, even if getting attacked by two guys, I mean, you've been a fighter. Like, yeah. is it difficult? I mean, you don't want to concentrate on anything else but the guy you're beating no, the crap I, I've on. I've never right? fought two guys at the same time before. Wait, hold on. I'm gonna. We may need to edit this out later. <laughs> David told me a story about you on the BTS. Yeah. Two guys tried to mug you. No, one guy tried to mug. Oh, uh, I see. Once again, if David listens to this, the guy embellishes like a mug. <laughs> it's just like, oh yeah, no, you should have seen Dan. There was like 19 guys. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. entire big C emptied out. It was okay. So one guy. Like one tweaked out German dude okay. tried to like steal my. Oh, good. I'm glad it was a German. Yeah. He told me it was like Thai guys. I, I got into, I did get, so I, I got, not jump, but like two Thai guys did try to start trouble with me one time, but. On the BTS? Not on the BTS. The BTS was a German guy. Oh, okay. But like, I just, like, I, I they were small and they were drunk. They were, mm-hmm. they were and it was in Patumtani. Okay. And I, I just basically push kicked the front, the first guy. Yeah. And then the other guy just ran away. He said, uh, <laughs> <bastards>. <laughs> he said, I'm one in 16 to begin with, so I'm out of here, grabs his cigarettes and his liquor and he starts. <laughs> but. I'm really interested in this two-on-one, this two-on-one fight now. Now the way you described the Cam Soda thing, yeah. it was as if it's already happened. It happened. It was live, live streamed. So you missed the two-on-one thing. So I watched it. Okay. But now I want to do it. Oh, what yeah. do you want to be? One of the two guys? Or no, I want to be one, the one, one guy with two guys coming at. Yeah. How? I mean, okay, the fact that I, I think what we need to do is hopefully someone is cutting up this video so that they hear Cam Soda, two and one, I want to do it, yeah, I, you know, I mean. I want to be the one guy, not the two guys. I want to be the one guy, not the two guys, slash Cam Soda, slash, you know, girls eating ass. I mean, you know, pretty much those are the hashtags. That's, 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 that's hashtag central. We right are going to get a lot of concurrent streams today. Good. I can feel it. Very glad that we're not monetized at this point. No. This video would be demonetized. Yeah, I think, you know, because, you know, YouTube's going to judge. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to be open-minded like we really wish it would. It's not going to be like two-on-one, three dudes. So talk to me about, I mean, I I have no idea why anyone would ever, like, want to be a boxer. Yeah. Or be fight. I'm, you know, we can debate this. As, I'm one. Of, I'm the guy that basically says it's not a sport. Okay. okay. Because it, it, and it could be based on ignorance or whatever. That said, I love friggin' hockey, which people joke about. It's like there's a fight, but then a hockey game broke not, out. Not anymore, right? Like. Well, yeah, ex- right. Which is why you watch college, yeah. right? Or like you know, like it's not called double A, but whatever the previous. Triple A, right? Or. I I think I know it's based, but I don't know what like the previous team is Minor before league, you become yeah. NHL. Yeah, exactly. But the. I mean, the desire to want to get out there and get the crap beat out of you. Like, I don't... I mean, obviously, the desire is to beat the other guy. Yes. Uh, the, no, maybe some people have the desire to get the crap beat out of them. And and there are those people who will just scrap no matter what. Okay. But, just because they like the sport kind of thing. They just want to well, be part of it. It's not about the sport for them. It's that they just want to fight. Okay. All right. Fair enough. I, I'm not really a big fighter. I don't like to fight. But... Okay. I, I enjoy the the competition and sport of it. Like I okay. fought my friend John, who's the promoter of FMD. We fought before. And you did like the, the gloves with. The yeah, we were, we were the main event of a card he promoted. Okay. I ref the whole night. Yeah. And he was promoting the whole and night, and then we there. fought. Blam. And but this is the thing, right? But why like, two guys? Like, why does that be like? Oh, dude, I totally want to do this. Because it's so interesting. Wouldn't it be like? 
I mean, how long are you going to last? I mean, so like, while you're doing this, isn't some guy, like, beating the back of your head? Well, not the back of your head. There are rules. But, like, oh. like, like this is the question. Okay. Right? So, one, it's a controlled environment, right? It's a, there's a referee. There's, it's as safe as can be, right? <laughs> it's as safe as can Okay. Well, In other words, there's no jello, so you yeah. won't slip. Yeah. So, but I mean, there's you know, there's it's a controlled environment. There are rules. Okay. They, they fight under what they call Bangkok rules or Full Metal Dojo rules, okay. which are you're allowed to soccer kick someone in the head when they're on the ground. You can stomp them. Okay. Like Twelve to six elbows. Everything's allowed. You essentially. Kick them in the balls. Oh no, not in the balls, but like hit uh, them from behind. So the, in MMA, there's the unified rules, which has quite a, it, which is the the majority of organizations use the unified rules. Okay. Which, no soccer kicks. You can't knee someone in the head on the ground. Right. Uh, no 12 to Seems reasonable. Elbows. Pretty much like IT. Yeah, so pretty much like <laughs> IT. But Bangkok rules or Full Metal Dojo rules are all of that is allowed. Really? Yeah, so soccer kicks. like It's basically old pride rules. And how many more rules. people die no, competing no, with Bangkok rules versus I, the other one? No one's ever died in Full Metal Dojo, which is really the only organization that uses it. And so the whole kicked in the head thing, I mean, you have to stop at some point, or can you just keep doing it? No, the referee will stop the fight. Oh, okay. So one kick in the head is all you get, basically. No, I, well, it depends. In. I saw one guy take, like, six. Well, that's my, yeah. I mean, that's going to have permanent damage. Well, he was right? blocking, and he was still moving. I <laughs> he mean, was still moving. Was, see, again, this is the way no, I no, but, but moving intelligently, right? So he was moving <laughs> He was moving to try to avoid the kicks. Okay, okay. And so okay, okay. as he was getting kicked, he was right. blocking, he was moving deflecting quite a bit of the quite a bit of the damage that he okay. was taking so and all of these moves right are what calculate or add or subtract points right uh, so it like if i'm laying on the ground and someone kicks me in the head i assume he gets a point if i move away while he tries to kick me and he doesn't kick me and he misses my head like i get a point like is it that no so it, it, it the, the scoring of fighting in general is very complicated uh, okay right? I was so gonna it's not think, just yeah, right. what you land it's yeah you know, control and, and there's dynamics involved. Okay. In it, right. So, I, I, but there's it, contact. I'm sure it, you get points for, yeah. Well, you get points for damage. Okay. All right. So, and then you get points for control, and you get points for successful techniques and all of that. Okay. So it more complicated than just yeah yeah. Regular. So I don't want to get stand up, whole, fall down. That's it. Yeah. yeah but this whole two on one thing is really intriguing to me. With, it, with Bangkok rules. Yeah. Wow. Where yeah. is it going to be? So they they do it in Bangkok. They did it at Insanity. Uh, which is where they the hold... nightclub? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ! What do they have like disco ball yeah. going on? So, oonks, oonks, so that oonks, that new nightclub, they when they built the new Insanity on Soy Eleven, yeah. right, at the end of Soy Eleven, right. it used to be. Do you remember when it was up on Sukhumvit? On um, I mean, on, I remember it was, it was elsewhere. On, it was but... on the even side on Soy Eight. Okay, all right, yeah, yeah. And so when they we, we used to hold the fights there. Okay. And now when they built the new Insanity, they purposely made the dance floor base level big enough to hold the cage. And the, oh, okay, so it's a full-on cage that they put in. There's none of this, like, ropes and stuff. Well, they did a ring last time, I think, because the cage was not available. Okay. But I, I like the cage more, personally. I find it safer. Safer for the fighters? Yeah. Okay. You can't fall out. Yeah, well, true, but, I mean, if you fall out, like, I mean, how often do you fall out? Is that well, like a professional real... boxers fall out of the ring all the time. Really? Yeah. And, but they don't make... Bernard Hopkins fell out of the ring on his last fight. He was, like, 50-something, and... Fell, he was 50-something years old? Yeah, fell through the ropes yeah. and landed on the floor, like, below the ring, smashed his head on the concrete. And did he pick up, like, a folding chair and go up there and, like, start smacking the guy in the head? Like, We, in, got, we got someone new here. Hugh, from, yeah, Hugh! Hugh to, Hugh, what, Hugh to what? Moving or twitching. There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's how, they, that's how Hugh basically scores the fight. He's like, is he moving or twitching? Because. So, I, I, I was in my... Second professional fight, third professional you, fight. Physically, you're in the room. Uh, sorry, sorry, you're in the the, uh, the cage. Well, I used to be a professional fighter like 20 years ago. Okay. And uh, professional meaning like that was your source of income. Yeah. Well, Jeez. I mean, I were I was still working, but I was like, like I, I wasn't making enough to live off. Right. Of, but, but I was fighting at professional level fights. Wow. Okay. And uh, my third fight, I choked this guy out and he was twitching. I mean, like. Well, rare naked choke, so I was under his under his neck and chokes him unconscious. Under his neck. Really? Yeah. And the rep was like, oh, yeah, yeah, well, we'll wait until he goes unconscious, and then I'm going to call well, him. Well, no, because he didn't tap. Got it. Yeah. Well, when you're unconscious, you can't do a so, whole lot like, of he, constructive. So he went to tap out, like, right as he went unconscious. Got and, it. Yeah, so. But it, getting choked out is not, not dangerous if it's let go. Uh-huh. Right? But Agreed. It, not as dangerous as getting head trauma and getting knocked out. Right. Which is the head well, trauma. Well, her heroin's not dangerous, <laughs> provided you take the needle out. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, head trauma is why I stopped <laughs> fighting. Yeah. 
Uh, is this the channel about midget wrestling? <laughs> so, so do you know Rike? No, I don't. He's one of the probably uh, uh, initial, if not most popular, uh, vloggers from the Philippines. Okay. He went over there and uh, started doing that, I want to say, almost, what is it, six, seven years ago, Rike? Right. And so he's from Southern California. So, and Rike, have you been to the midget boxing in Manila? In, is, I think it's Makati or just outside Makati. He probably hasn't been there. He's been, like, living not necessarily in the province, but I think Cebu was probably the biggest okay. place. He's, he's usually good about commenting, but... Um, yeah, I mean, it is, I mean, he's, he's commented about, like, cockfights, right, so, that sort of thing. I've, I've been to cockfights. Yeah. In, in Thailand, they don't use razor blades, so the on chickens the, don't die. Right, right, right. They, they use, like, these weird boxing gloves. Seriously? Yeah. On they, the chickens? Yeah, yeah. They put them on the back of their feet where the razor blades would go. Yeah. I don't know how they scar it, but the chickens don't die and they don't bleed. Okay, so I understand. Back like, in 2012, we went to midget boxing. My man. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's a real thing. In Manila, they have he's, midget boxing. In the okay. red light district, and they have to in the red light district. Yeah, talk. We want to red light districts in the Philippines are a friggin' joke. <laughs> it is just like not. I mean, yeah, they really only use red lights because that's yeah. all they can afford. <laughs> but I mean, as far as like you compare that to like say cowboy or, or Nana, yeah. I mean, there's no which aren't they're, they're, cowboys a hardcore red light district. Nana's kind of red light district light. Uh, me, but why? Why do you say that? It just, I don't know, it feels more touristy now than anything. Nana? Yeah. I don't know, dude. I think cowboy, I mean, again, not, this is pre-COVID bullshit, right? But yeah. I mean, it's yeah, like. Yeah, there's no red light this Yeah, year, right. It's like, yeah, it's like a mildly pink if they're lucky. Yeah. Um, but I mean, walking down, <laughs> is it pink and healthy? <laughs> Absolutely. Can't you see my gynecological yeah. exams? The, uh, I mean, you walk down cowboy. Yeah. And I mean, it's almost, almost like Disneyland. Well, it's like Disneyland for sex tourism. Yeah, 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 for yeah. sure, right. But, I mean, like, Cowboy is, like, the hard sell everywhere you go. Now it feels like yeah. like Nana. Like, I've cut through Nana at night to get to somewhere else. How do you... Oh, because you can go all the way through the back? Yeah. Where do you go from there? Like, so, like, there, one? There's, like, some restaurants and stuff back oh. there. Oh, right on. But, like, Middle East and stuff. That whole area is, like, Middle Eastern food. So you tell your friends, yeah, I'm going to, um, you know, Nana Plaza to eat out. And they're like... <laughs> Uh, yeah, like, you shouldn't pay to do that. How come you floss <laughs> afterwards, dude? I mean, is it your beard or her? So I come with a curry all in my beard afterwards. Come with a curry, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. So you can cut through there, but, like, to me, Nana now is just, like, kind of, like, like red light district light. Well, so here's the interesting thing about those. So I got a buddy who lives down in, Pot, uh, in Phuket, and we were thinking about doing a live stream because he's yeah. coming up here and we're going to hang out. And, uh, is this Robbie Rob? Yeah, McRob? yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> McRob. <laughs> Robbie <laughs> Rob McRob. Robbie Rob and the and the interns of love. But he, I was thinking, hey, dude, we should do a live stream from either uh, Soy Bucal. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Soy, um, soy Cowboy. Thank you. Soy Cowboy or... Uh, I just realized you were a raw dog in my table. Nana Plaza. Well, I mean, it's hard wood, dude. I mean, it's like you could cut me. You're a raw dog in the hard wood. You're going to cut meat on this thing. I'm thinking, this is... A little water won't hurt this thing. Would you, you, you just stain it correctly? Speaking of Cam Soda, yeah. no. So, I mean, he, and I said, okay, should we do it in Nana or in, you know, Cowboy? So I pinged David, right, mm -hmm. who's got fairly good knowledge of, of basically... These places. Of, of, of Bangkok. Yeah. Let me just say that. Of and Bangkok. He, of Bangkok. <laughs> And he says there's no way you're going to be able to do one over in Nana because it's so highly controlled by, like, the police or whatever. Yeah. You might be able to do it in Cowboy. But again, I mean, you know, you walk down there with a camera and all the girls, like, attack yeah. you. All the lady boys are like, hi! Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, but I mean, would you think that would be possible to do a live stream from one of those places? No. Because uh, if it is, that would be Bangkok strange. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. Given the current COVID situation. Precisely. Maybe. Free advertising. Maybe. I mean, because we could be like, look, if you come by right now, yeah. come by right now. Yeah, right now. You, you see, what, see where I'm going with this, dude? You see I what did, I did just now? I am picking up what you are putting down. Wow. I, I mean, am picking just, up what you are putting down. We need down. some rating. Is it sweeps week? Should I take my shirt off? But yeah. <laughs> Viewers go. <laughs> They'll be like, Jesus, Mike. Are those implants? No, either, it's just a lot of soy. Either either viewers like quadruple or they all go away. They're like, yeah, I'm going to go to Camp Soda where the content is actually appropriate. But I was thinking that would be like a really... But I agree with you. I mean, arguably both of those places are very touristy. Yeah. I mean, again, in the main sort of, you know, that in let's say last December. Yeah. If you take that as a sample size. So, okay. So we were talking about the fights and everything. Yeah. I wanted to make sure we hit all of that. Because when you said... Again, when you said... I'm ignorant to this, yeah. right? So I see it. I'm like, okay, I guess that's cool. It looks like neat cartoons. But, I mean, the are you going to actually spend like hours after this, like watching the two-on-one... 
I've won, fighting. So I've watched it a few times already. Okay, and so I, the guy, the single guy lost. The two guys each, won each time. Yeah. I mean, that's but, to be expected, right? So, but I think. I, I think I've got it figured out. I okay. think I, I've got an algorithm to, <laughs> to to beat it. So okay, you mean you've got a system like no, those no. guys in Vegas? Like, no, oh, no, no, I got a system. So like fighting is very much like an algorithm, right? Okay, like, yeah, like, yeah, sure. So you have a game plan going into it. Yeah. And you have to like figure out, and you have to put the pieces in place. And so I think I've got it figured out that I think I'm big enough. The other guy, the guy who right. had the the two on one, was one eighty five. Versus as a heavyweight, as a heavyweight, I think I would have a much better chance, just like a physical size. You're heavyweight, I assume. Yeah. What yeah. is the minimum weight for heavyweight? Mm, uh, no one fights at the minimum for heavyweight. No, I know, but what are the so it's like brackets? Two hundred and five to two hundred sixty-five pounds. Okay, and you're like what two twenty? Like no, right now I'm like two eighty. So I, I would get down to like two sixty-five. Meaning that you would lose fat and convert it to muscle kind of thing. No, I wouldn't. I would just lose. I would cut weight. Not cut weight. I would lose weight to 265. Oh, to get down to what's above heavyweight? Super heavy. Okay, and that's two. Which I mean, everything's open weight here, so they would. Oh. Let, they would let me fight. If I was 300 pounds, they'd let me fight. So you could but, fight like right now. Yeah, but like, well, technically, yes. Could I fight right now? <laughs> no, I'd probably die. She'd be like, Camp Soda, oh. help me, get me out of here. Oh, I can't fight. Jim, give me the website. So. But I, I think I, if I get down to like 250, okay. right, where I would have better agility, okay, better mobility, yeah, and I would be able to contend with two. I'd be large enough, strong enough, and fast enough to contend with two people. Who chooses the other two people? The, the promoter. But I want to fight like the two guys who fought the 185 because they were the most talented. Okay, the two 120s. Yeah. All right. So I want to fight them, and so I already asked the promoter. Uh, we'll see what happens. So John Nutt. Full Metal Dojo, if you're listening, if you do another two-on-one, I want those 120s. He, I want I want to fuck up both those dudes. <laughs> so, here's what's... Because, you know what? Here's, 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 if I had any interest in, like, being physically part of this, I would want to be with the two. Yeah. Because I'm a team guy. I love doing... I, I would just imagine that, like... So, I mean, that, that's the, the better synergy, odds, right? Like, if you, if you... Sure, but... If you plan around... Right, the two, those two guys, they had a good game plan going well, in. Well, that's my point, yeah. I mean, that must be really cool, like, planning that. Yeah. Like, dude, you punch this, do this, and then they, like, have a... I don't know, they probably have some degree of communication. Like, are they yelling at each other? No, they were just, they were just going at it. Really? And, yeah, they, they got the finish quick. And you have to... So, if it's a tap out, you have to tap out twice because the, the guy gets two chances because there's two guys. Right, so you would have to beat both of them, so they have to beat you two times. Oh my God! Yeah, you got to be able to take. So, another, so what does that mean? You tap out. What's what's a tap out? Just one tap? No, like that. Like if you're getting choked. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, two like taps. The ref knows what a tap. Basically, out is. the minute you start whacking your arm against that, yeah. and it's not like basically yeah. a seizure yeah. that he's caused by splitting your spine in half, or like breaking your arm, or your. Yeah, like, yeah. At one point, they were like foot locking the guy, and like, so I think I'm big enough that most submissions. Uh, my joints would be nullified. Okay, all right. Right? In, in, in a fight situation. Okay. In, in a straight grappling, like, I, I've been caught by very high-level, like, lightweight grapplers before. Okay. And you, you're caught, if someone at that level, you're caught, you're caught. But that's in a, just a grappling situation. I think in a fight situation, it, it's okay. much, it, it is much different. Got it, it. It's a little bit more dynamic. You can punch and you can slam them to get out. So wow. I think, I, I think size-wise, I think... Size-wise, I think you know everything. I could, I would stand a good chance against. Good chance. Against. Are you wearing head. headgear? I mean, no, no headgear, just gloves. Just go- yeah. okay. Then a cup. Okay, now yeah, right. Yeah. So I got, I, didn't okay. metal cup. There you. All right. Now, when you sh- sent me this link, yeah, weren't there women in there too? Yeah, so a woman grappled against a guy and she won. Gra- so in other words, you don't call it grappling; you call it fighting when no, you're in the cage. No, so she didn't. They didn't fight; they just grappled. No what does strikes, that mean? Just wrestling. Okay. For submission, she won. She beat the guy. And the dude is a pro wrestler. I've seen him pro wrestle in Bangkok. What before. pro wrestling? Yeah, like but he's bullshit. also he's also was an amateur MMA fighter. Apparently, not a very good one. Well, clearly. She, this girl dominated. She hit like right off the bat. She hit him with a power double, and it was done. What? I don't know what that means. It was like takedowns, like a. Well, let's just say it was two different levels of individual grappling. Okay. And the dude wasn't the dominant player. Now, how, now, was she, I mean, you look at her, like, if I see her on the street, does she look like a guy? I mean, does she buff? Does she have the No, whole, like, she looked very feminine. Really? Yeah. But just obviously incredibly fit and talented. And she, very skilled. Yeah, 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 yeah. She didn't, like, just start this yesterday. Yeah. Kind of thing. So, how many women in general are in this? In, in MMA? Fighting. Like, in, in general, like, in Asia? Yeah. 
is a fair amount because Muay Thai, like yeah, one of the one of the most popular uh, Muay Thai fighters in the world, uh, female fights in one championship. She's from Thailand, named Stan Fairtex. Okay. So I mean, she's a badass. Now, is that because like just like you grow up in the you know the province and you know how to like farm rice, for example, you also like learn Muay Thai? Like well, I mean, is so that a just... lot of these kids like they, they, their parents can't afford to send to school or whatever, so they yeah. give them to the gym and they fight for the. Okay. That's why you see eight-year-olds fighting at like the stadiums. Is it as much of a sort of stereotype as like, well, of course I learned how to play hockey. I grew up in Canada. In other words, uh, of course I learned how to. To, to some extent, but like not for Bangkokians. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. For the most part, like in Bangkok, you don't see that. But up in like. Uwan yeah, yeah, but around right here you learn how to basically go to college and ride yeah. the BTS and you know work in an office for well, thirty thousand a month. Fight culture is is very much big in in Thailand, right? Okay. And so you can every night of the week you can watch Muay Thai on TV. You can go to a stadium somewhere. I mean, right. it's it's big. Okay. All right. Well, with that said, yeah, we got well, the fighting out of the yeah, way. Now, how about some of the loving? Like, like let's <laughs> transition 180 out of phase. You know, that's right, right with this love. live stream. So yeah. back to porn. Yeah, back to the show. <laughs> right. Which is really love. It's just simply on TV. Yes. You know, they're paying for it. So I had this interesting uh, interchange with a lady boy. Okay. And, and I want to talk about that because you talked about, you know, the, the women that are fighting. When you say interchange. Well, as it turns out, <laughs> you know. No, here's what's funny. is it, it, Mike's it, first power bottom <laughs> experience. I'm like, oh, my God, she was so beautiful. And then I realized. She yes, came in me. I came on the floor. <laughs> this is like hangover part two, right? But it's like, hey, it's called yeah. Bangkok for a reason. <laughs> they don't call it Bangkok, honey. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sitting there and I'm talking. And she was actually, uh, she's fairly feminine. But yeah. you could tell, right? Adam's apple, that sort yeah. of thing. But what was interesting for me was that, I mean, I've heard a lot of the stereotypes, which is, you know, they do the injection mm. and, and all this. Um, but she was doing that. But there's still this level of persecution. Mm. And she was like 23. Yeah. And, but she says, and this is what I've heard of a lot of them between like 20 and 30 kind of thing, is it's, it's, it's less. Mm. It's getting less. Do you think that because like just women in general are doing the fighting thing, mm. that that's like spilling over into the lady boys being more accepted because it's a, a guy doing female shit? Well, you know, so the there, there's... I, I sent you a link of... Oh, you said that you wanted to see a lady boy fight. I said Google Nong Rose. Nong Rose yeah. is a lady boy Muay Thai fighter that fights guys. Okay, yeah. And regularly knocks them out. Yeah, now she was buff. Well, she, she's clearly on testosterone. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah, she's right, right. jacked. Total, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. but and with implants. And then she just like... I watched one of her fights and she spunny elbowed... Spinning elbowed a dude in the face and just knocked him out cold. She should be called Antoinette Huge. Yeah. You know, which <laughs> is another thing. Which reminds me... That T tonight, 9 p.m., is that when it's going to drop? Yeah. The whole thing? Four, four hours? Times, four hours. Yeah, we should really talk about that, actually. Because yeah. Dana... Well, you, you tell about it, because you set it all up. It was amazing. So, well, uh, Eric, Minority Nomad, actually okay. set it up for us. But So, Tony Hughes... Uh, Anthony Hughes. Anthony Hughes. Yep. Uh, uh, Dr. Tony Hughes. In, yep. <laughs> JD. Yep. Um, he, you know, well-known bodybuilder, kind of internet personality proponent of uh, body liberation, I guess, or freedom, body freedom. But also focuses on, like, the nutrients that could arguably be very controversial. Yeah. Right? I mean, Psalms, he's, he's got, like, a supplement yeah. company, you know. He makes SARMs, which are, like, uh, not programmable, but, like, targeted steroids yeah, right. or androgens. So he came on the show, and basically he, he reached out, like, through Eric to want to come yeah. on. He's like, I want to do interviews with people who will push me. And Eric's like, oh, I got the guy. <laughs> he's like, he's like, you want to be pushed. He's like, I got the guy. And so Eric reached out. I was like, perfect timing because we just relaunched. We had yeah. literally recorded like a day or two before. I think so. Yeah, it was and, the first one. And so I was like, come on by and, and we'll talk. But I was like, like I'm not going to pull punches. Like I'm going to challenge you if you stay, say the stupid shit about... You know, oh, I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor. Steroids yeah. are good. Right. I'm like, look, you can call yourself a doctor. Anyone can call themselves a doctor. Mm -hmm. He does have a professional doctorate level degree. Jurist doctor. He's yeah. not a medical doctor. Correct. And you know, but he was very clear about that. Absolutely. As well. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, he came on. He talked about like his love of lady boys. Is like what, what, open relationship. His open relationship with his girlfriend. With his girlfriend, girlfriend here, yeah. who was like I fucking both of us. Oh my god! I like turned around. Yeah. And I'm like. Okay, I felt like I needed to cover my right. cock. It, it's it, just like, and at the same time, he's like, if another guy wants dude. to fuck her, he's like, I would let him. I'm like, but he's not even forty, no. right? And he's saying, listen, I can't satisfy my girlfriend. Yeah, that's a, I mean, talk about it. I so mean, there was one point I look up. You so, 
the studio for, for the, was this. We, but, the video didn't come out great, so we're not yeah, going to post that it. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Now, and it's not a big deal. I mean, it is, it we'll is what it, out it is. We have, at some point, we'll have video that looks good. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, between the two of us, we should be able to see something. Yeah. Maybe we could hire so, some cab soda people. So Tony was sitting where Mike is, yeah. and Mike was sitting directly across from me. Yeah. And his girlfriend was sitting like in the back behind camera. Tony's girlfriend. Tony's girlfriend. And so. At one point, I look up, and his girlfriend, her name was Rose. Yeah, Rose. Yeah. She's I fucking Mike, <laughs> right? And On like, the back of my head, like, basically. And like you were like kind of looking out yeah, the corner of right. your eye, out, uh, like oh, what the fuck is going? <laughs> and so I look up, and then she sees my eyes. She makes direct <laughs> eye contact with me and starts I fucking me. And I look over at Tony, and Tony's like, Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think I paid for? <laughs> And I mean, and he's like, and then I said, he posted something the other day on Instagram where he's like telling her, she's cooking dinner. He's like, I'm going to go to short time, bang some girl, come back and eat. And she's like. See, that's what's funny is he talked about that specifically saying he doesn't go do that because yeah. then when he comes home, he does, he's not able to basically. To give, bang her. Yeah. To bang Rose. Yeah. But what was interesting, it, it's so funny, all this shit that you like talk about with just one of your friends, like at a yeah. Starbucks and you'll never tell anybody and else kind of thing, you know? He was just like talking about, oh, it's like, oh yeah, I would definitely, my, his, the the mother yeah. of his second child, yeah. was prostitute. Like, I purposely went to the Philippines to find a prostitute yeah. that would be the mother of my child yeah. because I wanted to meet some girl who was skilled. Yeah. I don't want to have to train some chick on how to blow me. It's like, look, at here's 4,000 pesos. Yeah. We are in this. Lay there or take charge. Yeah, and then he's like, and then he's like, but she became a born again Catholic. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and then she's got this, you know, he's got this baby like, yeah. floating around the Philippines. Yeah, he's got another one in the U.S., I guess, with a, another Filipino chick. But here's what's interesting is if you know anything about this guy, I would submit that if you don't, if you haven't sat down with him and talked to him, yeah. you're going to know, like, the stereotype. Like, this guy's full of shit, he yeah. takes steroids, you know, and somehow that's bad or whatever. He's a really cool guy. Yeah, de definitely. I mean, I've got, like... I have a very newfound respect for him after. Big time. And like I, I told him like when he was here, I was like, I saw you in one of your videos where you injected. Oh you, yeah, that's you right. reconstituted <laughs> growth hormone with drinking water. And he's like, I actually remember that one video. I was like, and when I told uh, Jib who was coming over, I'm like, the guy with the the drinking water with the, in with Vietnam. The drinking water. And in she face. was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> but you know, so he's very honest. This yeah. Is the thing, like. It's not like a Dan Belzerian thing where you see Dan Belzerian do an interview and you're like, oh, this guy's full of shit. Yeah, he's lying on yeah. camera kind and of thing. Tony Hughes is like, like, I like to do steroids. I like to be jacked. I like to do a ton of drugs. I fuck girls, ladyboys, and dudes. Yeah. Whatever. No, but he was, what well, was also, and actually, here's what's interesting about that, is I think a lot of guys will stereotype someone who's, like, on steroids, whatever. Yeah. The guy's got low self-esteem, yeah. he can't, like, pick up girls. And what does he say? Tony, why'd you start working out? Because at 13, well, yeah. I wanted to fucking meet girls. He said he wanted to kiss a girl. Yeah, he wanted to kiss a girl, and I knew if I didn't, like, look good, so he started doing it, and then he kept doing it, and then bang, what does he have, his, like, 38th birthday, the, you know, yeah. two weeks ago? He's banging 20 chicks on a boat. On a boat, you yeah. know, and it's just, I mean, you know, he's living the fantasy of a lot of guys. Yeah, I Yes, and I mean he's obviously, at the same time, like his whole his whole ideology of like uh, of body liberation or body like freedom. Right? Yeah, like, yeah, right. Like you should be able to do to your body what you want, yeah. which is again like I don't necessarily like testosterone and all that. Like I, yeah. it's very beneficial, but he takes it to to another level. Yeah, and he's but, experimenting too. But he's and he is very much a biohacker. Yeah, exactly. Which, which I think people will get that sense from the interview that Tony's very much a biohacker. He's experimenting on himself he's injecting himself with with other things you know? what i think is hilarious is some people out there that aren't willing to take on their own personal responsibility yeah. all of a sudden you know they're like hey this guy shouldn't be giving us advice and the first thing he says in his videos is yeah. don't do this yeah, don't don't listen to me. i'm doing this but yeah. of course they fast forward past that and say yeah. oh yeah the reason that my arms are bulging is because tony suggested yeah. that i do it's like come on man yeah he's, he's very upfront about like yeah. hey, i'm doing this he's like if you want to do do whatever you want to do right. but at the same time, he's selling things like SARMs, which are, uh, he, yeah, again, not. Uh, it's, it's controversial. It's very controversial. Yeah, yeah. Um, but clearly, he's huge. He's got results. Yeah, like, for sure. And he's doing something. I thought the, the other thing was hilarious was talking about the magic mushrooms and his girlfriend thinking she was puffed the magic dragon. <laughs> and he's like, I had to stay awake the whole time so she wouldn't jump, jump out, out the, the window. <laughs> yeah. Jump up the mouth. She'd be the only girl you ever hear about in Pathia that like jumps up. Yeah. An actual Thai person fell to the What? <laughs> well what happened? Did the white guy push her? What's going on? Well he would they... totally go to jail. They... Oh, can you imagine? Yeah. I just can't even imagine. I was talking to so, so talking to someone the other day 
and you know, I mean, the world knows pretty much. I'm I'm sober. I'm clean and sober, and that sort of thing. So whatever, for whatever reason, they brought up the you know cocaine, using yeah. cocaine. They're like, oh yeah, a couple weeks ago. I'm like, I cannot even imagine yeah. using drugs. Meaning, I can't imagine going to a Thai prison. So if you use cocaine in Thailand, you're essentially saying that you are okay with ingesting things that have been up a Nigerian man's ass. Right, which, you know, I mean, for Tony's or, perspective. Or a white girl that have been in a, a very granola, crunchy white girl's vagina. Yeah, I mean, you know, poop, <laughs> pooping a balloon, really, yeah. is kind of a sport, you know, that kind of thing. But I, I can't even imagine. I mean, the, the yeah. prison, I mean, it would just terrify me, even if I was still using. Yeah. I would just be like, no, 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 no. This is where I'm going to get clean. <laughs> yeah. I am not. Plus, like when you land in Singapore, yeah. I mean, this part of the world, yeah. it's like, look, dude, here's the deal. You get caught with illegal drugs, you're going to fucking die. Singapore, Indonesia, Philippines, you're pretty much dead. Yeah, right? we're going to kill you. Yeah. Well, in the Philippines, they'd be like, so you either give us a really good deal on this shit. Well, I think, or, didn't, they just in, didn't they just do a mass execution in the Philippines? Yeah, they they do mass weddings, they do mass executions. Didn't you know. the, don't they want to, like, fuck a bunch of women at, like, a mass wedding? I don't know about that. Um, <laughs> he was like, oh, I would give all the wife something, but I'm too old. <laughs> he said that? Yeah. He's amazing. I mean, you know, you can say what you will about, like, politicians that, like, say, you know, bullshit, you yeah. know, whatever, but he just comes out and he's like, look, here's the deal. If you're going to be a drug dealer, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. Can you imagine a, a U.S. politician saying that? How is human safari not a thing in the Philippines now? <laughs> Like, I really wonder about this. Like, why can't I go to the Philippines, pay, like, 5,000 pesos yeah. to ride around on the back of a pickup truck with, a, with an M16? You get a copy of The Most Dangerous Game. You yeah. have to read it ahead of time. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, I totally, shh, 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 you, all that. This you, is you watch Hard Target. <laughs> right. Right? You get, and, you know, you go in there and you're like, I, 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 you know what? I bet that is available. I bet you can do that, like, in Africa and that sort of... I mean, if you're one of these crazy billionaire guys... Yeah, but I don't want to do it in, like, some, like, safari, like, in the middle of... You want of, the woods? I, no, I want to be in the city. Oh, there you go. Like, on the back of a pickup truck. Perfect. Going through Manila. Well, you can't really drive through... You're stuck in traffic <laughs> in Manila. <coughs> <laughs> Just shooting, like, every 10, 10 meters? Yeah, that wouldn't work. Sniper rifle on the well, back. Well, again, there you go. That's the infamous shooting, you know, fish in a barrel. Yeah. I mean, like, how many people did you kill? All, like, 130. Yeah. Done. How many points well, do I get? So th this is the interesting. Like I've been to Manila. You've obviously been. Oh sure, man! And I always thought Bangkok traffic was bad. Not no, compared to Manila. Yeah, no, Manila traffic is ridiculous. But then, see, Manila is, is nothing compared to Yangon. Okay, I've never been to Yangon. Don't go. It's, it's actually so. Jim and I were having this conversation the other day because uh, there was a, a couple when I was uh, studying at Thomas Hopkins. There was a few Myanmar E's or whatever Burmese students. Okay. Who uh, would take offense if you refer to Myanmar as a third world country, okay, which it, yeah. it is by definition yeah, a third exactly. world country, yeah, true, right? Yeah. You know, and um, emerging, whatever. Not even. I mean, it's well, the main city, right? But everything else. Oh yeah, even Yangon is like. You well, they have internet and barely, barely. Oh really? Okay. And there are like cities and rural provinces in Thailand that are more advanced than you. Yeah. The, well, yeah, yeah, and again, that's the myth, right? Yeah. I mean, Thailand is not a third world country. No, not even close. No, man. Not even middle close. of nowhere, uh, you're yeah. getting like 4G. Yeah, 4G on the rice pad. Yeah, yeah, literally. Yeah. I mean, I, my girlfriend, she had this like seven rye, and she's yeah. like doing mangoes, and and I look up on top of the mountain, and there's this tower, and I'm yeah. thinking, okay, whatever. I do a speed test, like 126 down, yeah. 85 up. Yeah. You know, and of course it's 11 bucks a month. Yeah. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah, I've got chickens unlimited, everywhere. Unlimited data for like twenty two dollars a month. What do I have? Um, let's see, I'm paying eleven hundred twelve hundred baht, right? Yeah. So it's forty dollars. Yeah. Yeah. For unlimited and it come but it's but it's an unlimited uh, so it's high speed and unlimited. So it's basically I mean I'm getting at least a hundred. I, I do too, but I've had the I've had the package for years. Yeah, so. see that's the beauty yeah. of it, right? You come here, you get locked into these things, post pay, prepay, yeah. That so, sort of thing. Yeah, I've got the, the well it's technically Jib's uh, account, right? Because it's easier to set it up as a tie. But ha, why? No, it's because you need a passport and like all this other So stuff. I got mine seven years ago. In fact a friend of mine's like, Oh let's go to seven eleven. Yeah. And so she just like grabbed it. It's not one. like that anymore. No, no, I know yeah. that. I know you gotta like it but you know. But yeah, so I've got yeah, it's twenty two or twenty seven dollars, unlimited data. 14. We could literally be streaming this live stream I, I on your phone I right now. Stream it on my phone easily. Yeah, yeah. No, that'd be easily. great. Yeah. You know, let's talk about that doing some live streams. So obviously when you started yeah. Bangkok Strange, right? Mm -hmm. You and Woody, yeah. and a lot of people can go. And if you guys haven't done this, please go back to the podcast. Yeah. Are you going to upload the previous 
uh, someday. someday. So, so YouTube, Maybe, yeah. we'll give. I'll do it. Yeah. Give it to me because so I think it would be good. Season to one, uh, we'll call it season one or whatever. The 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 early episodes, episode one through eleven. Yeah. On Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, anywhere you get podcasts. Exactly. Twitter, uh, Stitcher. You know, tune in, all of that. SoundCloud? SoundCloud. No, not SoundCloud. Because you got to manually upload there. You got to manually upload, and you got to pay. Bottom line is it's iTunes. Yeah, and, yeah you, can, you can find Everywhere it. Everywhere but SoundCloud. Yeah, right. It, well, we got to redirect BangkokStrange.com, too. Yeah. I noticed that. We need to redirect that somewhere. Oh, it's going to, I think it's on a... It's not a, going anywhere. It's not? We'll figure it out. It doesn't... No, you go to www. <laughs> you didn't do an ad side? You didn't do the root? <laughs> no. Do we need to talk about DNS, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> where, needs, where the hell is Cricket Lou when I need to have a DNS? Oh, also, if you guys want Bangkok Strange merch, oh my God. shop.bangkokstrange.com. That, absolutely. Shop. We'll put that in the yeah. notes. Big yeah. time. It hasn't come in yet, but yeah, shop.bangkokstrange.com. So you can get masks, most important. Thing. You can get a mask, you can get mugs, and you can get t-shirts. Can you get boxers? No. Uh, you, can get a, you can get a tank top, so if you want to drink your... Singha okay. on Khao San Road, yeah. you no longer Bangkok need to wear Strange. a Chong or a Singha tank top. You can wear a Bangkok Strange tank yeah, top. Yeah, that's going to make a lot more sense. Yeah. Going to get you a lot more pussy, man. You get Absolutely. one of those things on, that's going to change your life. You, you you go to Starbucks with your Bangkok Strange yeah. mug. It's got the little, like, uh, the stamp the graphic I designed. Yes. So Love that. Yeah. We got to come up. I'm We. Everyone. We need to come up with, like, slogans. But it's yeah. so easy. I, think I mean, Bangkok Strange. I think one of the things we're going to do is uh, when we see, like, really stupid misinterpretations yes. of TV show, of uh, T-shirt sayings, yeah. we will make a collection of fucked up <laughs> fucked up T-shirts we see in Bangkok. We need to put a link to that, actually, in the description of the show notes about the uh, the podcast you and yeah. Woody did. Yeah. Because one of the ones you talked about, this guy's wearing a T-shirt that says, I eat ass. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the? <laughs> Clearly, he in the, he in the, he in the yeah. Pornhub T-shirt yeah. kit. Yeah, yeah. What was well, the other one? I've got the pussy, I make the decisions. It's like an 80 year old dude. Oh, it's a guy wearing Yeah, it's an 80 year old dude at Topps Market rocking a t shirt that says, I've got the pussy, I make the decisions. Is it like shopping for produce? Yeah. It's on, I'm in my old condo. It was uh, there was a Topps in the complex. Oh, down, but yeah. So on the first level of the first building. And so I was in there with Jib one day, and I, this old uncle, I'm like, the fuck? <laughs> This dude's wearing a shirt that says, I've got the pussy, and I make this. You didn't just lose it? Like, so I, I'm like, all right, let me go get Jib and just <laughs> confirm. Because not believe yeah. me. So I walk like two hours on, babe, come here, let me, let me show you something. We walk back, I'm like, check sure. out that guy's shirt. Right. And she's like, she's like maybe it's his wife's. <laughs> so she was like, no, nah, I'm totally cool with it. Yeah. She, it wasn't weird at all for her to see this. No. You got a big call coming in? No, no. It was, um, we could take calls on this, couldn't we? Could we? You've got the well. I've got an 800 number, so anybody in the U.S. could yeah. basically call 877 Wow Dude. 877 Wow Dude. I don't have request lines. I have dude lines. Yeah. Right now it goes to a Google Voice number. Okay. So you could bring up like I could log into Gmail. And yeah. We could bring that up and then bring up the audio, and so oh. we could try that maybe next time. So not them calling in live, but yeah. them leaving a message. No, calling oh, in. Calling in. We could because you can open up like Gmail. Okay. Right, and then in the lower thing where the where the chat is. Yeah. You can use Google Voice inside oh, there. Oh, nice. I want to set something up where people can like leave voice messages for the show that we can respond to. Okay, so they could absolutely do that. Because okay. if it, it, it rings and doesn't go. So 877-WOW-DUDE. 877-WOW-DUDE. Yeah. If you have a, a comment or you want to ask a question live on Bangkok Strange on an episode. Yeah. Leave a voice 877-WOW-DUDE. Yeah, 877-969-3833. 877-WOW-DUDE. And just say, for Bangkok Strange, what's your name? What your question is about Bangkok? Yeah. Or strange shit in Bangkok, yes. and we will, we will uh, get that on our show. Here's the here's the funny thing is that we have a huge list yeah. of like all the crazy things. And what I mean, I'm walking over here, yeah. and I thought to myself, one of the things we should talk about is all the friggin' stereotypes about Bangkok. Yeah. Like, have you ever just said, "I live in Thailand" or "I live in Bangkok" to any of your buddies back home okay, that have so never that. exactly yeah. that have never been here? They're yeah. like, "Oh, dude, I hear the girls over there blow you in the fucking taxi yeah. cabs." Did, did you have uh, do you have internet or is there electricity? <laughs> oh, that's enough. Are you riding elephants yeah. down the front? You're like, of course. I'm yeah. in Chiang Mai. Of course. No, in Bangkok, <laughs> right? we've got elephant tuk-tuks. And so, but what I think is the most amazing thing is how technologically advanced it is yeah. over here. Infrastructure wise, yeah, not necessarily the use of them. I mean, unless you're under 30, yeah. then you're like very sophisticated as far as like using a mobile phone, yeah. But I mean, I was just so thrilled to be over here because, again, I had the preconceived notion I'm gonna come over here, 
I better have cash on me because they're not going to take credit cards anywhere. Yeah. And I'm not going to, you know, and I go over here, like literally, and this is seven years and ago. now no one wants, you can even pay for street food with Pompeg. Scan their QR code, I, 40 bot, boop. I used my true wallet yeah. to buy a coconut shake from a guy who's got the look. And then, here's what's crazy. Is I'm push using, car. Yeah, he's got a push cart. Yeah. And it's like the, the umbrella's like totally sideways. Yeah, yeah. Rain's falling off yeah, one yeah. side, you know. Yeah. And he's got like this big bucket, the big blue ice thing yeah. that they get delivered. 25 bucks. I mean, they basically paid 75 cents for this thing, for yeah. this guy. And then I'm using my phone to pay for it. Old meets new. Of dude. course. Do we got any good comments going no, on? But, so I'm going to change the thing from remember to subscribe to uh, ask your questions in the comments. Yeah, no, absolutely. That would be good. Now, again, of course, this is our first live stream. First live stream. Um, and b But can you do live streams on podcasts? You can't do that, right? I mean, it's got to be an uploaded MP3 with basically an XML wrapper. I mean, that's what a podcast is, technically. Technically, yes. Yeah. So you can't do live. Like, there's no... Like, you can't go to, like, iTunes and type in anything and have it be live. No. Okay. Not that I know of. I mean, because Instagram, you can live. Right. I mean, you can you can I mean, on a bunch of platforms, obviously. Now, today we're on Facebook and YouTube um, and, you know, we're less concerned about monetization, really, certainly mm. via the platforms. And so therefore, you know, whether you come here via Facebook or you come here via YouTube, yeah, doesn't really matter. But uh, and the nice thing about StreamYard is that if, you, if we got comments from Facebook or YouTube, we would be able See to it. show them. Yeah. On. Yeah. So that'll be kind of cool. But, I do enjoy me some StreamYard. No, absolutely, dude. I mean, like, like I, we've talked about this before. It's like for whatever it is, like 15, 20 bucks a month. Yeah. They do like 10 things really well. Yeah. You can hit the limit pretty quickly. Like if you wanted to do, you know, uh, layers, that's yeah. not happening. Uh, to some extent you could. Like you can manage it in here on... Um, on cam. Yeah. I mean, if you had like a, if you had an external video switcher. You absolutely could get pretty sophisticated, but at the end of the day, I mean, that's like saying, okay, well, if I use well, I showed you the the class we did. Yeah, no, that was pretty impressive, and you uh, basically, basically it was it was two people, it was yeah. two physical machines. Yeah, yeah, and so you can like do that, and that that, that was that was great actually. And it's just um, funny because a lot of people are like, oh, how'd you do that? I'm like, yeah, that's not that hard. Well, no, because you told me you, like in monitor mode, so I'm like going through all. I'm like, where the hell's monitor mode? No, I'm like, I, oh, I, just, I, just I meant, use like, two PCs. I just meant like, like this you little thing. Dick. Yeah. <laughs> tell me your secret sauce, man. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> it's just crazy. Yeah, no, but it worked out good. And like that, that was yeah, probably no big time. Especially when Jim was teaching online, it was just good for you know that COVID time that yeah, she was able sure. to really like dial it in and is she not doing that anymore because she's in school full time oh that's so, true yeah. yeah okay now did, did she go back to school when everyone else basically went back to school here in thailand so her school was supposed to start in february okay and, or normally march yeah but they they postponed it and actually so she did the interview she did okay oh no she didn't get to do her interview uh, they, they, it was supposed to be in February for the interview. They, they shut the palace down. Okay. And so she was like, oh, I don't know if it's going to happen. Maybe it'll be next year. Mm -hmm. And then they called her like, all right, interview tomorrow. And in March? It, it was like March or April. And they were like, interview tomorrow. Physically or like on Zoom? Physically. So okay. she went to the palace, interviewed, and like literally because like her program is like very, very difficult. Yeah, as far as clearly. Like, like what people, like how many people attend. Yeah, and, right. Limited. Like, there's only like a less than 50 percent graduation rate wow and so they were like they took everyone who applied it was like okay. a maximum 30 and they only had like nine apply and only seven ended up in class or something interesting and so and what degree is this it's not a degree it's, it's a it's a special it's the royal thai academy for arts and crafts okay and uh she's studying like um thai embroidery classic thai embroidery. wow yeah now, for a Thai person, like, I mean, I've, I've talked to some Thai people, like this one lady who's a journalist, yeah. and she talks about, you know, oh, yeah, and I, I got to meet the king as part of being, and I'm like, okay, wait, you don't just, like, roll that off your shoulders. Yeah. I got to meet the king, and it was Raman, you know, the one that everybody yeah. loved, and I'm thinking, what was, she said, it was literally the best day of my life. Yeah, so. So I'm thinking, like, if you're Thai, you meet the king, but, or you get into, like, embroidery, yeah. or something that's very Thai, that has a lot of history to so it. So at the palace, they make the robes, at this program the people who graduate from this will could you could end up not you know, not that you necessarily will but you could end up being one of the people who makes like the robes for, for the, the queen, king the king, and yeah. queen and like all that hand embroidery huge honor gold thread yeah yeah like like i when people would graduate from like uh, thai universities at like masters or phd level right um you know usually for undergrad one of the you know when 
Robin Nine was still alive, like the prince or the princess would show up and give you your diploma. But for wow. graduate level, you would take a photo with a picture of the king. Yeah, I mean, I mean because yeah, obviously, yeah, obviously he, that he, doesn't he, scale. Yeah. He, he didn't have the energy at that point. Sure. Yeah. But apparently, he, he used to, like 20 years ago, would go to all the graduations. I've heard, watched documentaries, talked to Thai people. Yeah. I mean, I don't think there's ever been a leader that well respected. Yeah, worldwide. I mean, longest just, serving monarch, right? Yeah. yeah. And I mean, but uh, the way that I learned of him is that I, I was talking to Thai people that I would meet in the United States, and they would always refer to him as my king. My yeah. king. I mean, the attachment to him. It's. I mean, he's almost a god to yeah. some people. So the first Sp- Sp- Spider Man Homecoming was. It home- yeah, Spider Man Homecoming. The one that premiered here first, kind of thing, or was something like that? Yeah, well, it was the one that. Uh, it was the first one in the MCU. Okay. And uh, they were eating at a Thai restaurant, and uh, there was a picture of uh, Ramana right. in, in the uh, in the restaurant. Yeah. And uh, they they had one shot where it's like Peter and Aunt May, and then boom, the king's in the background, and they're talking about like LARP or something like that. Right. And I was watching that movie at Scala, okay. which is like my favorite theater. It's closed now. Yeah. I uh, COVID that. killed it, but uh, yeah. So they were when that shot came up. There was in the the theaters like maybe. It was pretty empty. It was probably like forty percent full. Okay. Right, because Scala was never. It wasn't like a big action movie. Theater. Right. But that came. That shot came up, and everyone was like, oh, "Like you heard they, the they gasp." Didn't, they didn't stand up. No, no. But okay. they they heard the gasp. Like like right. you, you could hear people like, "Oh, like like yeah. in the middle of the rom- here's a picture of Roman Nights. That's how Reverdy was. That like an out of focus. Yeah, totally. Shot of him in it's a like, movie. Oh yeah. But you know, I mean, like you see his image. It's People so walk iconic. down the street, they stop, they why, yeah. they pray. Yeah. It's freaking amazing. I tell you, one of the things I love about Thailand, it's not necessarily, it's different. I certainly wouldn't label it as strange. But at the beginning of every single movie, you yeah. stand up. Well, so, you know, That's I, awesome. I used to think that was strange. So they, oh, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They, so For, they play the King's Anthem at the beginning of every movie. If you guys have been to Thailand and, and going to a movie here, let us know in the comments yeah. what you thought of that. Uh, leave, leave us a comment and we'll, we'll respond. But for me, when I first got here, I thought it was strange, right? But then okay. I think about it, like, you know, in America, we play the national anthem at the beginning of Baseball, sports games. Baseball, yes. And everyone hockey. stands yeah. and covers out. People cry. Right. True. Right? And, yeah, sometimes. You know, and for the most part, though, the King's Anthem, he, he actually wrote that, the music to that song. He was a musician. Did he? He was a very, very talented yeah, huge jazz thing. musician. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. And um, that's why it's very Western. It's actually a much nicer song musically than the, the national anthem. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that they play every night at, like, what, 6 p.m.? So, no, that's the... So, the, the, the national anthem they play at 6 p.m. Yeah. But the King's Anthem is, like, incredibly, like, musical. Oh, okay. Very, very Western. Oh, nice. But, um... But even better than... Like, I think it's more musically... It's more easy to listen to than the American national anthem. Which is a bitch to sing, too. It's like, a bitch to yeah. listen to. Like, oh, yeah, I know. Right. It's a little long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's, 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 it's not paced well. No, but, but again, it's probably a product of the time. Yeah, right? yeah for sure, written. absolutely. But, but yeah, it's uh, so they stand during the movies, but at the same time they don't. At the have, beginning, at the beginning. Yeah, at the beginning, and when they play, they'll put the picture of the king up, and they mm-hmm. they play the anthem. And I'm actually glad they didn't change the anthem. Yeah, yeah, agreed. When uh, they changed the king, because that a lot of people thought they would. Yeah, for sure. But it's it's such a nice song. Well, it's a really interesting uh, sort of. It's it's one of those things like you were saying. We should have a list of things that were strange the yeah. first time. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but again, at least for me, let's say, it was strange. And then I'm like, I want to do this. Like, I want to be the first guy stand. Because the first time it happened, yeah. I'm like, oh, I wonder what all these people are doing. Yeah. Why does everyone say I should stand? Well, <laughs> and thank God I was there with a Thai person. Yeah. You know, because I'm like, oh, what are you guys doing? Yeah. Do I have to do this kind of thing? Of course. And, and I'm an American. Like, I mean, I wasn't that obnoxious. But I was just like, okay, I guess I don't need to do this or I shouldn't do it. Yeah. And then she's like, no, 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 stand up, stand up. And I did it. And I was like. I feel a part of you guys. Like I want to, I want to hang out with you guys. So I, I actually saw an old guy like bitch out some young kid, Thai kids for not standing. Good. Like during the movie. Good. It was really interesting to see. Like, Thai this, people didn't stand. Yeah. So it was. This was after. Dude, that this was is... recently. Under, yeah. Under King Ten. Yeah, yeah. See, I don't. You know, now there's the protest that they want to get rid of the monarchy. Yeah. 
Which, as, as an American, like, I'm all for, like, getting rid of monarchies, but, like, mm-hmm. living in Thailand, like, no, maybe no, no. not this one. No, exactly. <laughs> no, I mean, for, and, and so recently, like, a Facebook group got yeah. banned, right? I think they have, like, a million followers, and the guy's in Japan right now. Yeah. And that got banned, you know? And uh, I, 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 I think it's a fine law. Honestly, I mean, with the uh, Ma- so then they're Le not Mezgev. enforcing the uh, Le Mage law anymore. Well, not like they used to. No, no. So the, the ten, and I, I think this is actually a pretty cool move. Said he's not gonna that he's ordering the ministries not to prosecute on Le Mage anymore. Okay, so well, they're not prosecuting, but they're still sort of enforcing. I mean, well, there's a cultural this, norm. This has more to do with the uh, with the uh, cyber crimes division. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Got Facebook it. thing. Yeah, right. So it's, in cyber, cyber laws here are very fucked in, in in a lot of ways, but that's a conversation for another day. That's another strange. Yeah, but, that would but, be good. But there have been protests recently against the monarchy, and like I said, like like from an American perspective, I'm like, yeah, monarchy, yeah, whatever. But then, like, <laughs> as, as someone who lives in Thailand, I'm like, Le- leave our monarchy alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, absolutely. Yeah, just let that be. Well, again, right. it's not like they don't have like sort of administrative leader, a governmental yeah. leader. I mean, yeah, they have more a prime a, minister. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know, I guess they're basically elected. He sort of ish. Sort of won an election. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of. And that's coming up. And yeah. but you know what's great though is like the people protesting are you know fairly educated. I mean, at the end of the day, the majority of them are college students, right? Yeah, well. The majority. This is not all. That that party is weird, man. That future, what they call future now Fe- party. Yeah. And uh, the, the dude who's in charge of that party just seems like a douchebag. Yeah. You're an idiot. That's 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 the downside to having basically younger leaders in place. He's like they don't he's older than me. Yes, but and they they always refer to him as young man. Yeah. The, the young yeah, man. But he's like literally like three or four years older than me. I'm. 41. I would p- prefer it if they really sort of picked a leader that was around their own vintage. It, not just, you know? so here's the other thing, like that dude is like notorious for like starting things and not finishing. Precisely. Like uh, yeah. my favorite is he wanted to, a Thai team to break the record for uh, traversing to the South Pole, right? So like okay. he wanted them to like do a round trip to the South Pole the quickest. Okay. And... So if you know anything about like the history of like these trips and like the timing that it needs to happen, there's a very small window. Oh, okay. And, and so weather based, yeah. Weather based and climate based. Sure. And so he was his trip was supposed to leave. It generally takes I think the record seventy days okay. or something like that. From from what, like South Africa or something. No, no, it's um like you get to the Arctic. Okay. And so you get to the south to the South Pole, but get to the pole and back. Got it. Okay. You know, there's mountains and all this sure. stuff you have to cross. And I think it's like six, 70 days or 60 days to do it. Right. And like his estimated, he was training with a, a team okay. of like people he picked. Right, right. Like social media influencers he was going to take yeah. to, the, uh, <laughs> to the South Pole. Right. And like his window gave them like 30 days or 35 days to make it and come back. Like half the time. <laughs> half the time. What was he expecting? That they would hike 14 hours a day? Yeah, I mean, there's I, no light. Yeah, so I'm just like, but no, it's always light. Oh, it, okay. That's so. That's the time of year where they do. Okay, yeah, got it. Got but it. but it's also like, it's also minus forty degrees. It's yeah. also a hundred mile an hour wind. Okay, yeah, that's ridiculous. And you've got to carry everything. Yeah, with exactly. You. Right there but, and back. So it's just such poor planning. And this is the guy who wants to run the country. Okay. Right. Yeah. Can't even doesn't even understand. <laughs> like, there's a reason it's people do it during the summer months. Right. Exactly. Yeah. In summer, in quotes, in the in the South Pole. Well, the other thing too is that you know to be. You know, a country leader. If that's like your priority, uh, I mean, I'm thinking, no, no, no. There's probably about 97 other things before that. And he's it's a like, mama's boy, like. You know, oh, really? Yeah, big time. But can't think. I mean, in in my mind, mama's boy means they basically can't think for themselves. So that's it's a big part of it. Okay, well, that's bad news. Yeah. Because they, the, the the ties in general, I would argue, need some sort of motivation. Yeah. To you know, ask more questions, think outside the box, be more entrepreneurial. So the, question things. I, I've I've never been like a fan of Pry, the uh, current prime minister. Yeah, but recently. I mean, so I said this I think on, a, on one of our other episodes, and I was saying this to a, one of my Thai friends who's like, "How can you say you like?" I'm like, "He's done a good job with COVID." Yeah, I mean, right. He listened to doctors, and then he he, he bitched out the health minister yeah. for for saying bullshit for talking yeah. bullshit. Like, no, 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 no. We're gonna get medical yeah. opinion. <laughs> yeah, he's not like, yours, dude. He's like, no. He's like, you probably shouldn't be the health minister anymore. As right. Well. Yeah. So I mean. I, I kind of wish America would like take a take a hint. The delta yeah. between the COVID culture here in Thailand versus anywhere in America. Quite yeah. well. There's got to be some counties in America that have just like been really successful with this. Like everyone is wearing masks. They're smart enough to know. 
I saw some video the other day of a guy in Northern California. He's like, this is supposed to be red country. He's like, you're all propagating the hoax with your masks. Where was he and... doing yelling at Costco? No, this was, it was like a town hall meeting. Really? He was basically threatening civil war at the town hall meeting. Which, you He's know, like, I mean... There's what? a million Americans like me that will take up arms to fight you masked uh, tyrants. <laughs> you masked marauders. I mean, if he said marauder, then I would have been like, oh, I might listen to this yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. Because he might be doing some comic book stuff at home. Yeah, this could be later really on, good. yeah. But no, the, the, the idea that you're going to fight a civil war over masks. Here's an interesting thing. Thailand has been labeled the number one yeah. most successful country in the world. Not like not top, top ten. What other things do you think Thailand, globally, have they been number one at that are, is well respected? With the exception of maybe like rice years ago. Not anymore, but rice. Well, the, up until the uh, rice scheme under the Yinluck administration, yeah, right. they were the number one exporter of rice. Yes. They probably will be again. Well, I don't uh, know. China's now that, not, well, full tilt boogie. On well, that. I was saying now that uh, they blocked off the Mekong essentially. Yeah, they, less water, yeah. sure. Um, so maybe not, but I would say that road deaths definitely number one. Okay, yeah, right. <laughs> and we'll, we'll talk. I think we're, we'll talk about uh, total show the, just on the that. new uh, the new motorcycle laws. Um, so I mean, there, there's there's really a lot of stuff that just t- food. Sure, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. The most delicious food kind of thing. Well, I, I would put Malaysia up there with Thailand. Malaysia, would you? Okay. Malaysian food is out of this world. But, like, here's the thing. Like, if I ate Malaysian food every day, I would die. Yeah, no, I didn't like it as much. Gracie uh, I, and I have I been there. I love the food in Malaysia. No, I love, I love the, the food. Thai food in Malaysia. That's, no, that's... the Thai, Thai food is, is like, fresh, right? It's, like, refreshing. Mm-hmm. It's you know, Spicy. Wise, spicy, I, and I love spicy food. Yeah, right. But in Malaysia, it's, like, it's... It's a little bit heavier, spiced differently. Yeah. It's, so, to me, I love food in Malaysia, okay. but like Thai food, obviously number one. I would say soft power. Like I think a lot of people sleep on the soft power that Thailand has through, through, through culture. Yeah. Okay. Um, we talked about combat sports at the top of the show. Obviously, I think Thailand number one in the world for combat sports. Muay Thai, obviously. Muay Thai, being the... boxing. Look at their record at boxing in the yeah. Olympics. Right. Uh. Also, like, not a combat sport, but weightlifting. Look at, like, their women weightlifting. I didn't know that. Olympics okay. From, uh, all these little Isan chicks are just, like, jacked. Really? They're, like... Isan, like, 40 kilo chicks, like, lifting, like, yeah, three times a they're, they're, like, four feet tall, like, <laughs> just, like, thick necks, like, big shoulders. And they're just clean and jerking crazy amounts of weight. Um, Snatch yeah, lift? Yeah. Like, I love that Super, term. Super flat nose. Like, love just, that term. <laughs> um, Lady so, boys. No, no, like number one in Lady Boys. Yeah, number one in Lady Boys for sure. Um, probably the best beaches in the nah, it, good beaches. Probably the I wouldn't say the best beach. I've been definitely been to nicer beaches. Overall, though, they have the highest concentration yeah, of good o- nice beaches. O- overall, like the amount of quality beaches. Yeah. It's like getting a good piece of pizza in New England, right? Yeah, Nine out of ten times yeah. you're gonna have an above average piece sure. of pizza. Down to Florida. On the national Not on happening. the national scale. Yep. Midwest, don't even buy pizza. Fat chance. Yeah. Yeah. Boston to Philadelphia, nine out of ten. Rocking it. Right? So it's like a beat that's like beaches in Thailand. Okay. You go to a beach in Thailand, yeah. nine out of ten times. Absolutely. It's well above average. Mm-hmm, for sure. Um like, where, where would you say is the best beach though, in your I, experience? For me, my favorite beach was in Borneo. Okay, I've heard of that too, yeah. But I'll tell you what, you were just in Copenhagen. Yeah, and it's pretty sweet. I've never been, but god damn, that beach was gorgeous. And here's the deal. So here's what I do when I go on vacation, basically. Well, I live on vacation, but when I go elsewhere outside of Bangkok. When, when you're on vacation, in vacation. <laughs> From my vacation, yeah. and I go to an island and I'm going to a beach. My goal, one new beach every day. Yeah. Right, and usually I'll just start somewhere like the, at the ferry, and I'll just like basically go like say clockwise around the island. Yeah. And so I was there for four days, and I made two beaches. Yeah. And that second one I went to, I mean, I love these, like, super long, you know, I, I would have never, on. you you were staying on the beach. Yeah. Like, literally, like, so if you guys, I'm sure anyone watching this, probably most of you have seen Mike's live streams, uh, and you were watching this one from Copenhagen. Like, literally, your bungalow was on a gorgeous fucking beach. Yeah. That went to that really famous, was that an Ismith or? Ismith, yeah, basically. I mean, especially right now, this time of year, yeah. like the water never so goes over. I've here. never seen. Coma, by the way. So I've never seen that empty. Right. 
Yeah, it's a total like tourist selfie, you know, kind of. It's packed with yeah, people. Yeah, right. Packed. And boats that have come there from yeah. like the other side of the island. I mean, there wasn't one boat. So here's the one thing I didn't like. The one thing that was a detractor to me about Copenhagen is that you were in the Gulf. And why is that bad? So I just think the water's nicer in the end. Oh, I, okay, yes. But again, this is COVID. Yeah. Right. That's kind of like saying I'm never going to go to Copenhagen because there's so many goddamn full moon parties. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but I'm, this, even so. It's much cleaner now is my point. No, 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 it's not the cleanliness of the water. I just think the water, if you're on the Andaman side of Phuket, yeah. uh-huh, uh-huh. Like where you're facing the sea. Yep, Patong Beach, for yeah. example. Like the, well, not Patong Beach. Kamala. But, yeah, Kamala. Like, the water is so nice and like beautiful. I will tell you that when I was on Kofangan, I was looking out over there, and I thought to myself, this water is nicer really? than the beach in Kamala. So when I've been, I've only been to, I've never been to Kofangan, but I've been to the other side of the Gulf to uh, Cement. Cement. Okay. And I just thought the beat the, the water was a bit murky. It was like that Gulf water. Okay, well, cement, don't forget. I mean, there's a big yeah. oil refinery north True, yeah. of Rayong, <laughs> Not right? Not far. So, yeah. But again, like, right, like, I was in Pattaya. I'm, like, walking down Beach Road, and I'm looking out over the water going, oh, my God. This is actually kind of, I, I might actually swim here now. Really? I would, it's ridiculous how much, A, how quickly nature can take care yeah. of the bullshit that we Filter put in it. itself out. But secondly, I mean, there weren't any boats, and there weren't any, you know, sort of, and that was really refreshing. But secondarily, they had also filled it with a shitload of sand. I mean, over the last two years, they yeah. probably put an entire continent like on that beach. So I went, uh, I think I told you this, I went parasailing and uh, paragliding, parasailing, where they pull you on the boat. Yeah, I thought that was, I thought you did that in Kopangan. No, I did that in Pattaya. Okay. And they dipped me in the water and I got a skin infection. <laughs> <laughs> you go, dude, this is great. The best hepatitis I've ever had from the freaking. Oh my God. They dip you in the water? Yeah, so it, it was like one of the things, I was like, they're like, oh, do you want to do it? I was like, no, and they fucking did it anyway. Of course, yeah, they're like, I think no means yes in yeah. Thai. But it's funny, because when you do it, where I did it in uh, Pattaya, you take off from a barge. They bring you in oh, a boat way out. to a That's barge. Oh, way out, that's right, I forgot about that. And, uh, but this is the crazy thing, some dude just rides on the back of your fucking parachute. You're strapped to some guy, like the first time you go hang- No, he's not strapped in. He's just holding on behind you? Yeah, then he... Just in case? He loops his legs up over the thing. It's to control the... Seriously? Yeah. He but just, he's not... He's in a strap. No! Is he a flip-flop? No, right, he's barefoot. He's barefoot. Yeah, right, sure. Right. Is he texting up there? I mean, standard tie. He's just, like, on there, like, pulling with both hands. And that's his job. That's his full-time job. Yeah, so they rotate. Like, he'll come back in, and he Drive jumps off, and he pulls you in to, like, make sure that you get... You get onto the the platform. Okay, got it. Yeah, and yeah. then some other. Then they, they all down. grab you and they disconnect you. Okay. And the boat waits and they hook up the next. Otherwise, guy. the the parachute's probably yanking you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And so then like another guy will jump on with the next person. I, I was like, God damn, that's kind of wild. Like that's got dangerous. I was job. gonna say, yeah, that's pretty. Da- I mean, they must dig it. That must be Money's fun. money, right? Yeah, no, that's true. Probably yeah, making yeah, yeah. minimum wage, like 300 baht a day. Yeah, what do you do? Ah, uh, you know, my, pretty much my uh, my office is 1,000 feet. How it, far do they go up? Is it 1,000 feet? Far, no, it, it's it's probably like a like an 800-foot rope. Okay, but so 40. Run, it's a, yeah. You're, what, a 45? Yeah, about a 45. Okay, yeah. so, yeah, quick math. Yeah, not, not, not too high. Yeah. High yeah. enough. Yeah, I mean, you're, okay, so you're up there. Are you, like... This is no big deal, or so you know, like when, kinda... when you're up there, you're just like, yeah, whatever. Because if I fall, I got a fucking parachute, yeah. so I'm good. And you're well, right. so let's say if uh, let's say you disconnected, like there was a guy who died in Phuket, okay, he uh, he fell off the, the harness, disconnected somehow, okay, and uh, his wife filmed the whole thing, oh, so, so his Thai wife, surprisingly, shocker, <laughs> yeah, she's like, fuck these buildings in Pattaya, we're gonna lose yeah. this, and then, so he like, falls into the water, sure. he, fell, he fell into a shallow part of the beach, ah, shit, so it's like maybe three feet from water. Now, yeah, so his legs went basically but also, up through his but body. He, he was full extension. Okay. Right, so he's like at least two hundred feet in the air. Yeah. Hundred. Yeah. At least so, like hundred. But even like I think at a hundred feet, even if you hit, you're moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh-huh. And so even if you hit the deep part of water, water still hurts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At hundred feet, yeah, well, absolutely. Right. So well, thirty-two feet per second per second. So I mean, you're yeah. cranking at hundred. Nine point eight meters per second squared. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But you, know, you got to think that when you hit that, it's like concrete. I, I've heard that, not from anyone who's lived, right? Yeah, but yeah. I mean, it's like there's the theory. Well, so I've done high dives. Like, Have you? And you feel it like in your hand? Yeah. As soon as you talk, like even jumping feet first, like your feet hurt. I'm trying to think the tallest, because I remember I was part of this swim club, you know, and they had like 
to the point where when you get to the point where the diving boards aren't boards. Yeah, I think they're, they're concrete platforms. Ten right? meters. Yeah, I think it's the tallest. And uh, other than sort of the anyone, any of you guys listening, what's the tallest? What is the tallest diving platform, like Olympic diving platform, if you guys know? I wonder, like, um, you know, it's, it's a dive like immediately kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean. So well, maybe I don't. Maybe he suffered and drowned a little bit, but everyone like rushed over to get him. Yeah, yeah. I would imagine. Except his wife, because she's sitting back yeah, there like filming. A, Instagram. Yeah. You know, oh man, this is gonna be great. <laughs> Updating her Tinder profile, oh, single. <laughs> Absolutely. Swipe left, baby. She's got a picture of her holding a <laughs> freaking yeah. balloon. Look at me, I'm safe. But I think like if you hit it from that from that height and yeah. you're moving right. and the water's still. No, forget about yeah. it. Yeah, it's not it's not a good not a good look. That is like bad. Yeah. You know, it's funny. So you, you, you we were talking about motorcycles, right? Yeah. Like death and that sort of thing. Okay, so the recent article that came out, I think it was, was it Bangkok Post? I ba- can't remember. Bangkok Post, yeah. Yeah, bangkokpost.com. So, and you can Google this if you guys want to, but basically it was the discussion around the new procedures that are going to be necessary to Correct. get a motorbike license or any license? A motorcycle license. I believe any license will now require a health certificate. But if you want to have a motorcycle larger than 400 cc's, okay. you'll need to take additional testing to Driving? show that you can, yeah, maneuverability to show that you can that you can handle a motorcycle. Okay, what's now, the health test for? I mean, is it's it... like a standard health check, like when you get your work permit or visa, like standard. Oh, I'm gonna need to do a health check for my work permit. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, but you just you go to the clinic and they check your heart rate. Actually, no, yeah, I needed to get a to take your blood for my OA actually back in the United States and the, but it was it, like I don't have leprosy mm. you know and I'm like well no shit that's how I was able to sign the goddamn so thing check, without my arm falling they off. check you for syphilis here when you get your health check okay you have to have a negative syphilis test how do oh. they is that the swab they no, do it's a blood check okay good but, I, but I'm like what why, why are you checking for syphilis and why not like HIV or seizures hepatitis so it, what else? Really? So like what? Because syphilis is what you you die from like a brain. I mean, eventually. I, think right? you, I don't think you die from it. I think you go crazy. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. You, you have crazy. like stuff dripping out of your dick. Okay, well that. Well, that part, might be gonorrhea. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But I, but thank so, God we're like totally <laughs> did, never had that. Yeah. So I don't know. But I think syphilis is curable from uh, antibiotics. I think all of that stuff is. I mean, at the end of the okay, so Not here's HIV. <laughs> so I, I knew you were gonna say that, but crazy that so a buddy of mine from San has Diego HIV. has HIV. Okay. And he comes to me and he got it like, so I don't know, now it'd be probably, I started, I knew him because I knew his partner who was in my master's program and I graduated from that in 2010. So for the sake of argument, it was like 10 years ago. And so towards the end, you know, Jeff comes in, he's like, oh my God, my partner has, you know, HIV. And of course, you know, we all sort of cried everything. And then I started hanging out with him. So I'm talking to him and he's like, the medication, because I'm like, look, dude, you don't look like you're friggin' dying. Yeah. And I mean, you're not coughing, you're not like, what, so is it like non-symptomatic? He says, the, uh, the medication that I'm on, very expensive, yeah. this is, but his health insurance is paying for it. He says, my doctor says that given all the medication and all the treatment that's available now, and that was probably 2010, he, his doctor said he would rather have that than diabetes. Oh, yeah, for sure. Wait, I, what? You believe that you would rather have HIV than diabetes? I'd rather have neither. But, well, no shit, but I mean, it's like... But, I mean, no, I'm saying for sure that you could live longer. With it, HIV? It's more treatable now. Look at Magic Johnson. When he got I contracted have, in the 90s? Okay. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't well, know. Of course, he's like two standard deviations outside norm. Yeah. Right? Credible physical shape. There's that, yeah. Unlimited resources cash-wise. Uh, yeah, totally. But I believe that the drugs are good enough now that if you're living a healthy lifestyle, you can you can definitely live a very normal life. It's not curable. Yeah, yeah, right. I knew a, um, I knew a kid, dumbass kid, who came to Thailand. This is a dude... I used to joke that he probably had HIV because he was getting Sakyan tattoos at like this... That's what the bamboo stick? Yeah, well, it's a, a metal bar. Okay. And uh, they use the same needle on everyone. Yeah, like, of course, why not? And they just wipe it with alcohol, and he was getting it... They like, just go... Uh, yeah, so he was waiting behind like these lady boys, like they were getting theirs Sure, dog, absolutely. And then he was getting his. And I'm like, dude, like, you're, so you're sharing like needles with ladies, like, oh, they cleaned it with alcohol. I'm like, it doesn't kill viruses. <laughs> He's like, well, HIV is curable. I'm like, it's not curable. What's wrong oh my with you? God. He's like, well, you could live a long time with it. I'm like, you're an idiot. So did he end up getting it? No, he he said, well, he says he got tested and he's clean. He went back to America. Yeah. But uh, fucking, he, this is also a kid who, who rounded up from 16 to 30. Oh really? He <laughs> no, he's, he's a genius. Okay. And Jim used to be like, she's like, he has a college degree from America. 
just keep just like yeah. there's a bachelor's degree. I'm like, yeah, but it's in psychology or something. Mm-hmm. I mean, not even a real science. But did she say it that way? Because Gracie's done that too. Things like she he's got this something from America, so therefore it should be. You know, well, so Jib said it in a way that's like disgust. Like yeah, she's like people in America want to talk about like shitty education overseas, and this guy's got a bachelor's degree from a state university. Yeah, right. Okay, which was presumably decent. Well, right, right. Rhode Island College. Okay, yeah. Not, not a bad school. Not, not awesome. a bad school. Yeah, yeah, but, but still. It's no Harvard. No, 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 no. Well, come on. Harvard is arguably <laughs> it, the it, number it, it, one no, or two. It's no Chula. Yeah. <laughs> it's no Chula Longhorn here in Bangkok. So, okay, so let, so we discussed the, uh, we talked about the motorcycle thing. Yeah. Another thing, Bangkok Strange, that I just heard coming over here this morning yeah. is that apparently there are a total of 72 prisons in you Thailand. You were telling me this. It's... 72 prisons in Thailand, and what they're going to do is they're going to turn them into tourist attractions really and they're gonna have like shops like you know how like you walk down and there's like these one shop after another and the yeah. guy sells brooms and then the next guy sells you know cow by guy and then yeah. the, right one after another t-shirt that sort of thing 12 guys selling like plastic pipe yeah in a row. no exactly <laughs> and every like tenth shop is the exact same thing yeah. and it's just like um, they're gonna be doing that inside of the cells so oh. they're gonna open the bars they're gonna have like food and everything like this and I'm thinking oh that'll never work and they're like yeah because they've already done it with four Wow. They've already done four, and then for the next year, they're going to do 72. So you can go into the prison, and the prisoners will be selling you... No, that's the thing, is that apparently they're not not—they're going to like have less people in there. Okay. Because they're going to be taking up the cells with... you know. Now, what they want to do is have, yes, some of the prisoners like making things. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, wait a second. Like, this guy, obviously... You told me about your friend who's been in prison, yeah. and, the, and the, uh, the punishment that he's getting on a regular weekly basis. Yeah. So, and we've all seen that movie. Yeah, uh, Pray Before Dawn. Pray Before Dawn, which, which is, is like, one of the pray your gra- ass off yeah. before you get raped again. One of the most graphic rape, prison just, rape scenes. If you've seen American History X, that's like a kid's show. <laughs> that's kindergarten. To, that rape scene is like a kid's show compared to Pray Before Dawn. I cannot, I mean, I, I can't even imagine. But regardless, it's like, you know, anyone who's in there, uh, you know, I'm going to say at least 90% of the people that are in there probably should be. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to, like, buy, what, some rice from that person? They're going to make it? They're not going to... So, I mean, come on. That here's the thing, right? Like, I don't know what, like, if Thai prisons have, like, craft programs or re-education. I don't know. True. Yeah. Right? Yarn. But, they make it but, I mean, they could be making stuff, woodwork, you know, whatever. License plates, you yeah. know, like the old but, stereotypical. But, I mean, like, you think, like, I'm sure have you seen, like, in America, they have, like, the prison rodeo and... No! Yeah, so, like... Rodeo? In, I think it's Louisiana. They do, like, a prison rodeo and where the prisoners will, like, ride... They, they do something called prisoner poker where they sit down at, like, a they, table <laughs> and they let the bull out. Okay. And the last person sitting at the table wins. Wins what? Meaning he gets to leave and save his life or he has to ride the goddamn bull no no like he he wins the event okay maybe he gets like a, a free sandwich at the okay but there's no interaction with this animal no the animal's knocking them off right it's like running through them Jesus so Christ. They're, they're, they're sitting there playing poker and then the, the animals are running through so in in thailand they do prison fights where the prisoners fight each other box yeah yeah Okay, I've heard um, of that and they in fact, I've seen that yeah and, they, and you can actually win Only early time. release yeah yeah right so yeah, I, I think, like, for me, if you're going to go to prison, like, you should, the prison should be working to make you a better person. In theory. Be, in theory. Yeah. Right? And so, if it's a Thai prison, and, you know, they get to, like, do things that they can sell, and maybe make some money, and... I'm guessing. Well, that would be a good thing. But wouldn't you say that, I mean, again, this is based on my stereotypical knowledge. I have had friends that have yeah. done time, like, in uh, actual prisons, yeah. not, like, jails. Prison, but prison. Donovan State Prison, for yeah. example, that's in San Diego. Like, ass rape prison. Basically, yeah. yeah. No, in, in fact, they have uh, the, the multitude of, um, it's like Gen Pop, yeah. right? They call it Thunderdome. <laughs> and they have, they have, like, I think two, maybe yeah. even three-story yeah. uh, bunks. Yeah. And apparently, you know, you're always, like... There's a hierarchy for sure. You yeah. fight your way through. You get your money, whatever. But apparently, if you're able to like steal, like because they have these mattresses that are above them, if you're like you're able to get one of those from the other guy, and yeah. he has to like sleep on the metal, and you get two of those, yeah. that's called a Cadillac. <laughs> so apparently, if you have two pads, two shitty mattresses, two shitty mattresses, then you've got a Cadillac. So, but I mean, in doing so, uh, you know, yeah, they can get high school degrees yeah. and, and that sort of thing. Graduate, get college degrees, for all I know. Yeah, I have a friend who got his college degree, his undergrad, in prison. 
in the United States. Yeah. Yeah. And over here, I mean, again, you Probably know. Probably not over here. We, we definitely have to go to one of these friggin' prisons my, that's being turned into a... My buddy Jay can arrange, like, a, a prison, like, meeting or a prison tour. In the United States? Here. Here? Yeah. Like, of a live prison? Yeah, my, my partner from Dapper Village, he does a lot of charity work with prisons. Does and, he? Like, nice. help, helping prisoners find work on the outside. Really? Yeah. Good for him. Yeah, so he's, he's big into that. And it's, like, kind of a passion project for him to, like help prisoners transition back into the world. Nice, dude. Yeah. Are there things like that here in Thailand where it's like, you know, if you hire prison, you know, ex-cons, like you get a supplement from the government kind of thing? Is Probably there... not. Okay. I think I told you about my Taco Bell experience where everyone was like a, uh, when no. I worked at Taco Bell. Oh, in the U.S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I worked at Taco Bell. Everyone was like on parole or probation <laughs> or something. Well, because, yeah, because Taco Bell probably gets paid to pay them. Yeah, so, well, yeah, they probably, the way it works out, right, the more... This is a tax credit. Yeah, yeah, it depends yeah. on your state and everything. Sure. Yeah, which is and, why tacos are so cheap at Taco yeah. Bell. So this is my friend bought one the other day in Bangkok, and he had a to taco pay, here. Yeah, Taco Bell. Okay, and he had to pay extra for beef. Oh right, yeah, because pork was cheaper, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So pork's the default, and yeah. it's like a dollar extra for beef. Yeah. So one taco ended up costing him three dollars. Right. A hundred baht for one taco. For one taco, and it turns out in America they're two for a dollar. At Taco Bell. Yeah, and that's America, where like yeah. everything is just like more expensive because it is. So, but imagine paying six x. That's just incredible. Well, I saw so McDonald's the other day because I get the little ten baht ice cream cones, yeah. right? And I'm looking down, and they have like the infamous ninety nine cent menu, and yeah, I mean a hamburger is thirty baht, you know, like a small yeah. little hamburger. Yeah, but you've seen the Big Macs that yeah. have four patties, three hundred and seventy nine baht. Ten dollars. Insane. It's like, it's like a New York City Big Mac. There's a Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. And McDonald's in New York City, I think a Big Mac is like 14 bucks. Yeah, I think Chicago is 12. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, Bangkok's not a cheap city to live in, right? And so, so it can think, be. It can be, but it's also not. Like, it's still it, expensive to do things. If you live, I would submit, if you live in Bangkok, similar to the way that you would live in New York City, meaning the majority of people don't have a car, yeah. they take public transportation, because it's actually pretty decent, it's really That's public trans. So you and I are both New Englanders. Oh, yeah. I, I grew up in Rhode Island, yeah. you grew up in Massachusetts. MBTA. Yeah. The, the BTS and MRT blow the MBTA away. They're friggin' amazing. Rhode Island doesn't even have a train system, right? So they have buses. Rhode Island buses suck. Public yeah. transportation in Rhode Island might as well not exist. Bangkok is by far Singapore is pretty dope as far as like uh, oh, yeah. public transportation. Yeah. Malay Kuala Lumpur the train, is pretty dope. Yep. But Bangkok is just like you can get it's pretty stellar. much everywhere. Yeah, and the other thing too is that they're not just like, oh yeah, we did a pretty good job. I mean, over the next five to ten years, yeah. Everywhere. You're gonna be able to go everywhere. In, ideally all you'll need is two passes. Yeah. The MRT one and then the freaking well, rapid. Well, card. ideally you only need one. Rabbit. They call it the Spider Card. Wait, they have those now? No. It, okay. It was supposed to launch in 2016. I'm still waiting for it. And I heard about that, but if I'm the Rabbit guys, I mean, mm -hmm. if you think the amount of money that they've dumped into marketing yeah. and the benefit that they give their customers, yeah. if I'm Rabbit, I'm like, look, your Spider thing's interesting, but we are like 90 million bot yeah. per month into this thing. So the the nice thing about Rabbit cards, you can pay a lot of places. Yeah, the McDonald's, Seven yeah. Eleven, absolutely. I so love using it. The the nice thing. The thing that Bangkok has on public transportation that Singapore, Kuala Lumpur don't have. Okay. You get off the train. Yep. Any station. You walk to the bottom of the stairs. Yeah. You need lunch. No, you find a guy on a motorbike, and he will take you to your your last mile destination. Yeah, absolutely. So they have last mile delivery, whereas Singapore and Kuala Lumpur do not. That's a great point. Yeah. Kuala Lumpur, they have motorbike taxi drivers. Yeah, but right? it's not as not as prevalent as Bangkok. Where Bangkok, they're everywhere. Whether they're legal or not. No, no, yeah, they're but everywhere. I mean, they have the guys with the orange vest. Usually yeah. they have their license on their back kind of thing. So they line up. In Bangkok, you get to the bottom, and it's just like, all right, where do you need to go? Boom, 30 baht, you 20 can, baht, 10 baht. And they're not going away. No. I mean, you know, Grab came out, right, and like stuff like that in the United States. Oh, yeah, all the cab drivers are going to be pissed. They're like beating up Lyft drivers, all that stuff. Here... Well, they still fight here. Like, you, like I've seen the motorcycle taxi guys jump a grab driver on a bike. Like, like oh, literally. okay. So, because they are taking their business. See, but here's the thing, though. My experience here is that, you know, these guys, yes, maybe some people have done that. But they're also like, okay, I could either beat this guy up or yeah. add myself to the grab app on my phone. Eleven seconds later, I got a guaranteed fare. Well, some do, some don't, right? So, yeah. I guess there's like a, you can't have a criminal history to be a grab driver. So that eliminates a lot of the, the bike drivers, apparently. It Really? Apparently. Yeah. 
So that's a lot why, of them. That's too bad. And also, a lot of them aren't legal bike drive, like legal bike taxes. Yeah, they just pay their buddies in the circle money to be there yeah. that day. And so, so that vest they wear, yeah. that's like their medallion. Right, like right, their, right. Their taxi medallion. Yeah. But to me, like if I'm leaving here, if I'm going to the BTS from here, I'll take a Grab bike, thirty bucks. You just go out to the. No, no, I just you, order from here. They come pick me up. At yeah, the game. right. That's smarter. To Boom! Them. Right to the right to the BTS, thirty mm-hmm. thirty bucks. In the morning, you have to. Because I usually walk here in the mornings yeah. from BTS, which is like, you know, one and a, it's, it's, well, 1.4. 1. 1. 4. Yeah, 1.4 kilometers. But I like it, yeah. right? And because in the morning, it's not freaking hot. Yeah. Know, it's like it. But it's nice. But the traffic going the other way, mm. it literally is backed up all the way down from Sukhumvit to that place where the bridge is. Yeah. Solid cars. Yeah. So, I mean, if you don't take a motorbike, there's yeah. no freaking way. You could literally hop there faster yeah. if you don't take a motorbike. So... Any soil like that, essentially, yeah. All of Sukhumvit, like yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, main for sure. soil of Sukhumvit will be backed up in the morning and the afternoon. When does it start? I'm not really sure. Uh, about seven. About seven goes to like ten. About ten, maybe a 10. little bit before ten. Okay. And then starts around three. Okay. And goes until depending on the night, seven. So you know what's funny because of this COVID thing? I mean, you could like again where we are down yeah. here, and you you look out and you're like Bangkok's back to work. Yeah. Like, it is going. There is mm-hmm. traffic. BTS, right? I mean, 5 p.m., you're, like, so, doing one like, of these. March, April, May, basically no traffic in Bangkok. Empty. Empty. And now, places like, you know, that were very high tourist areas, mm-hmm. still pretty empty. Yeah. Copenhagen. And I've never seen a photo. There's, yeah. You walk that beach multiple times. Yeah. Peak hour. The sunset, sunrise. Right. Sunset. Empty. Yeah. It was crazy. I mean, there were people there, like, doing photo shoots and stuff. Like, oh, maybe I shouldn't bother these people. Yeah. People, and my buddies, just like, they were like, dude, normally, there's yeah. a thousand people there. Like, noon. Yeah. A thousand people yeah. at noon. Peak in the, the day, sun. super hot. Yeah. I go to that massage place that I showed in the yeah. video. I'm the only person they had, the whole time I was there. You were the only person in your resort, or one more? Um, That was sleep. So where I was, where all the bungalows were yeah. on the beach, I was the only one there. You told me the woman had to open it up just for you. Yeah. Right? Like they had like those plastic sheets that they put down in front yeah. of the, the porch kind of thing. Every single one of those other bungalows had there. And then she, you know, and of course on, you $22 know. $22 a night. Yeah, $22. 700 baht. I saw you had, you had the bed and a couch, bathroom. Yeah. Oh, actually, so mine was one of these deals where it's got, you know, it's got like a family room, right? Yeah. So it's got a queen size bed and then a twin bed or whatever. But yeah, so I had that and, you know, a desk. I mean, it, it was an older version, right? Yeah. So therefore, like, it's the, it, it had like the, I don't know, like the tile slash concrete pillars kind of thing in the front. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but I mean, you know, hot water and it was like, it wasn't like the shower area spilled into, water spilled yeah. into, the, they had a divider that was, yeah. you know, tile and classic, everything. Classic, yeah. Yeah, pretty classic, you know, but I mean, kind of a, a step up from the standard Thai bathroom, yeah. if you will. Um, but I mean, and again, you know, online, you know, there's a little bit of poetic license and yeah. the amount, but you know, they say it's going to cost 7,700 baht normally. You know, that, that's 77? 7,700, yeah. But I mean, that's bullshit. 7,700. Right? 7, yeah. No, and I'll tell you right now, if I were to Google like Hofangan and I would check, there are places that are like 93% off. Well, I, I'll tell you what, that 7,700 baht anywhere in the world on the beach. Not like close. Yeah. 200 not, bucks. Not across the street from the beach. No, just not not on the same side of the street as the beach. Yeah. Literally, you walked off your bottom step into sand. Yeah, exactly. Like, it, it was crazy. I mean, here's the thing too: is that there would be like if you've never been here before. I got buddies that like see me take pictures, yeah. and they're like, "Oh my god, how much does that cost?" I was down at the beach in San Diego, for example. Yeah. Minimum 350 yeah. a night, plus Maybe. taxes, plus all this bullshit. For a shithole. Yeah. Like, it's got rust in there, yeah. and it's like, yeah, but it's, and especially if it's in July. Hookers rent from the room next door, running blowjobs, like, every 15 minutes. Dude, if that was available in San Diego, we might not be having this conversation right now. <laughs> Let me tell you, it is not happening in San Diego. They are not next door. They can't afford it, no matter yeah. what they charge. Yeah. They are not at the beach in San Diego. And, you know, here it was just, yeah, so, so you come here from San Diego, mm. and you're like, yeah, I'm going to get a bungle on the beach. Oh, it's only $200? Nothing. Yeah. That's nothing. Yeah. You know, and so, but living over here, you know, if, like if, like if the woman said that's going to be a thousand baht, I'd be like, I don't know, uh, in this neighborhood? Uh, I mean, I'm thinking, but you know, here's the other thing too, is that I'm going to these places and again, I'm the only guy there. Yeah. Okay. Literally. So, yeah. So the first place I stay, because usually what I'll do is I'll take the ferry over or I'll take the plane or whatever. So I get there and I get off the ferry yeah. and I walk around, but I do ahead of time, I go to Agoda and I like get the place because I need a place to stay because yeah. I've never been there. So I walk over to this place. 
the doors are closed, there's a phone number. Mm. So I call the phone number, and it, it says it's going to be open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The office yeah. It's like 4.30, fine. So I call her. She's like, okay, I'll be right here. So she walks over. She opens up the place, yeah. takes me to the bungalow. that We were going to do the live stream at. I was yeah. really bummed that I didn't get that accomplished, but I'm glad we're doing this today. So I go over there. It's, it's the bungalow right in front of the pool. Yeah. And she says, okay, so here's... And then she starts showing me, like, how to turn the ceiling fans on, like, where the breakers are for the lights yeah. in, in, the, in the patio where there's normally a restaurant. Yeah. So she shows me everything. And she goes, yeah, just make sure you turn all this stuff off before you leave. And I'm like, okay. She goes, all right, well, if you have anything, let me know. She leaves. Yeah. Not only am I the only customer there, I'm the only person. Yeah, there. no employees. Yeah, she's like, well, normally, like, the pool, you know, you're supposed to stop using it at 7. I'm like, let me guess. If I use it, I'm not going to wake the neighbors. She goes, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so when she says, yeah, it's going to be, you know, like 900 or 1,000 baht, I'm like, Jesus. I mean, I paid 700 for a friggin' bungalow at the beach. Yeah. This chick wants 1,000, you know, right? That's it. Whatever. Yeah. Her electric bill. My electric bill is 2,000 baht. Yeah. Mine's 10. 10,000 baht? Yeah. Okay, you got how many? 150 square meter? About 280. 280? Yeah. And, like, I mean, before we came into this room, this room is air-conditioned. Outside this wind, outside this door, yeah. it's 107 degrees outside. Yeah, well, keep in mind, most of the time I'm running the aircon downstairs in yeah. the studio. Yeah, and that's what? That's, like, 65 square meters down there? 140. The whole bottom floor. Mm. Okay, so 280, got it. Okay. Actually, 150. And what you're doing down there is consuming electricity. Yeah. Like, in other words, you're not sitting there, like, basically gluing wood together. Yeah. You're using machines yeah, yeah. that, when you start, are a dead short. So, well, so, because I've got the stepper motors, right, there. Yeah, okay. They save a lot of energy. For sure. I only have one machine that runs a clutch, my uh, bar tack machine. Do you have three-phase here? No. It's no. just single-phase 220, right? Okay. And well, you, don't, you don't really need three-phase in well, no, I figured maybe if you had a giant motor, like I didn't know. So I, I, was looking at, I was looking at buying, not not seriously looking, but I was looking at potentially buying a fabric loom. And chum, 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 like an automatic one? Where it shoots the... Like a shuttle loom to make salvage. Jesus down. Christ. I mean, I can get noise from that. I can't even imagine. Chum, 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 so, chum, so I mean, I'm, it is loud. Yeah. yeah so I'm looking, at, I'm looking at it online. and uh, <laughs> That's your porn. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And Jip walks over to my computer and is like, "I've got my no. looms for sale." <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> "She's like, no." Wait, yeah. Exactly. No. Right. She's like, "If you want that, buy a factory and we'll move." We're not buying a harvester. We're yeah. not buying a fucking <laughs> buffalo, and we're not buying a loom. A here. fabric loom. Yeah, that's not happening. So we had looked. I had looked at before, like a, a manual loom, like uh -huh. a, like a wooden. Yeah. Like, like you shoot like the thing. School. You yeah, move yeah. the feet. And uh, just, it's like a, like a craft thing just to, to yeah, play around sure, with. Yeah, sure, right. And Jim has like a little manual one that only does like belt size or like strap size okay. stuff. It's just, it's so like complicated to use. Yeah, you got to pull the thing. Yeah. I mean, every stitch effectively yeah. has to be, yeah. And so uh, I was looking at like, a, like one that I could make my own denim on. I was like, maybe? And she's like, wow. Look, she walks over as I'm like, looking at the price, like a million bucks. <laughs> In, like for a used, great investment. like a fifty-year-old used loom from like the middle of like uh, the Kanayok, and she's Some like Chinese lady's hair hanging off the side <laughs> of it from the factory that you're like, buying it on. still in there, <laughs> and she's like, no, no, not not gonna happen. <laughs> Listen, hubby, of all the investments that you're made, that is not yeah. Yeah, what we're gonna do. She's like, we already got ten sewing machines. You do not need a. You, do you seriously have ten? Yeah. And you just bought one recently, so like yeah. three weeks ago, you only had nine. Yeah. And but again, each one does, does something, something different. different. Talk yeah. about your just because again, this is going to be watched by your guys, my yeah. guys. What so, is the? So yeah, we have a design studio downstairs where. Uh, so that's called. Uh, Super villain design. Super studio. villain design yeah. studio. Okay. But basically, uh, I do all the prototyping for Dapper Villains, which is my brand. Got it. Okay. So we have Dapper Villains podcast. Okay. Have some checkouts about design and menswear, but I do all the design work. Okay. Um, head of design. And so I do all the prototyping and everything. I have a big cutting table and like these machines. And my wife is also a professional crafter maker. Uh, and knit, she's got a web. She's got a YouTube knit, channel. That's... Knit, knit by Jib. Yeah. yeah. If you want to learn how to knit and tie, but which is kind of hot on hiatus while she's in school doing um, her master embroidery. Yeah, class. but the videos are still there. Yeah. Pretty popular. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Basically, we've got ten machines downstairs that <laughs> that all do something different. So I've got like a walking foot. So I use probably three machines 90% of the time. Okay. And then all the other ones are like very specific things. Specialty. Yeah. 
what do you call those? Like stitch, right? Yeah. Specialty stitches. Yeah. Specialty stitches. Are, like I have a saw off the arm flat felt machine that does of one type of seam. Just one off the arm. I have a, like a post bed roller foot that does one type of. It's only useful like one thing in hats. See, now this is the kind of stuff that I bet like people that have tie, like the ties that have podcasts yeah. in, in Bangkok, they talk about strange shit white guys do. Yeah. <laughs> like Bangkok white guy strange. Yeah. <laughs> For wrong strange. That's our competition, basically. For They're going to be like, there is a guy that is an AMA fighter. MMA, not AMA. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, American Medalist goes so. I mean, you're the doctor, right? I mean, it's just like. Ask me anything, fighter. <laughs> Trust me, I'm a doctor, right? So you do, oh, so MMA fighter and a seamstress, right? I'm sure that's not what they call you. Taylor. Right, or yeah, whatever, exactly. Yeah. Haberdasher. Uh, Haberdasher, I like that quite a bit. Yeah, so can you make a tie? Yeah. Like you could just like cruise in, bam, just make it. Okay, well, we should, we should probably get those. Can you upload your own products on Teespring? No. You can only choose from their manufactured, and then they just print them. Okay. Yeah. So well, I can't make a tie. It's complicated, right? Because I was wondering. A, a real, uh, a professionally made tie has to be cut in a bias. Okay. So there's a lot of waste in the in the cut. Unless oh really? You, unless you do because it's slow. So it's a 45 angle, right? Yeah, so unless yeah. you're doing a bunch. Right, right, right. right? Yeah, you're, you're sure. You're wasting you're wasting a lot of fabric, and okay. then you know because of the uh, you flip it obviously this wide side narrow side wide side narrow side you flip it to to get the most out of it. Okay. But, and then a real professionally made tie has to be hand rolled, and then there's a, a layer of canvas inside to give it a little bit of structure. Okay, so this then explains to me, thank you, why ties are expensive. Yeah. Like I go into Nordstrom's, right? I mean, yeah. you know, I don't know if the other they have. I don't think they had those back east, but obviously you've been to yeah, California. Yeah, the, well, there's a Nordstrom's in Rhode Island, but it opened in like the 2000s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you, again, you've heard of it. Obviously. Yeah. And uh, I would go. I mean, eighty dollars. For, and I was like, what? Because in my mind, I'm like, this isn't really that much fabric. There's more fabric in my boxer shorts. Like, at, 80, why is this? at eighty dollars, it's probably not a high end tie. Seriously? Yeah. What's a high end tie cost? Like two fifty? Yeah. Really? So a high end silk hand rolled online tie. So you can make them without actual human hands. You can make them machine only. Oh yeah. Oh okay. But then the hand rolled, as you say. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are the ones because you know you, then you start. Plus the production. I mean, what do you do? Like maybe ten a day versus a machine that can do a hundred an hour. If you're hand rolling, it, you might do like twenty a day. Twenty a day. Because if you're good at it, you can do it quick. Repetitive kind of motion, yeah. Well, I, I hand rolled a neckerchief the other day, which is, is something I'm a product we're, we're prototyping for Dapper Villains is a, like a neckerchief. Is that like a ascot? No, uh, similar. So it's like it's like a half a bandana, yeah. but like double okay. sized. And then you, you can either tie it around your neck, or we have like little pieces of jewelry you can use as a cinch. And is that like COVID motivated? Like in other words, I know you're making masks. Yeah, so right, the, obviously. The, the masks are different because right? we have like obviously Jim and I are both were scientists. I was an engineer, she was yeah. a scientist right. in our previous life. Sure. Yeah. So there was quite a bit of research that went into like the construction of the mask, yeah. with, like the fabric filtration and everything. Yeah. But as far as like, so the neckerchief is just it's like a, a piece that you can wear as like instead of. If you don't want to wear a tie, okay, right? You don't want to go like full ascot. Yeah, it's a little weird. Right? You want to do something. You still want like something on your neck, but you don't want to have a. You don't, especially in the tropics, you don't want to close that top button. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I'm I'm up until I basically moved here full time. I'm a yeah. scarf guy. Yeah. And I would come over to San. I would come over to Thailand. Everywhere in, in Thailand, you could buy a scarf for. Yeah. One hundred baht. Yeah. yeah. They're all one hundred baht. Yeah. Essentially free. nothing. In free. San Diego, you call it free, yeah. right? We have a word for ties. They cost the three hundred dollars or three dollars. Yeah. And uh, and so I would and I would wear those constantly. Yeah. In the United States, and uh, it was great because it wasn't that you know I wasn't constricted like yeah. a freaking tie, but it was like okay yeah I'm still wearing something around me you know kind of thing. So yeah, with the dress shirt, I like the, yeah. the neckerchief because you could tie it or you could put the if you want to be a little fancy, you put a little piece of jewelry on it. Like, uh, we've got these little rings that we're working on, some uh, engraving, like, with, like, Dapper Bill and Sane. Cock ring? Yeah, well, well, I mean, if you can fit... Like, uh, <laughs> if you could wear a standard <laughs> Thai condom, yeah. right? Yeah. Which are, you want to talk about strange. Constricted. Oh, my God. Yeah. I, anyone who's never been to Thailand, yeah. guys, if you're coming to Thailand, buy condoms ahead of time. Yeah, ahead of time. Whoo! There's a few places you can get, like... I would call normal size. They would call large size. Yeah, yeah. right. Or the or American or yeah. whatever they got. It's like having a zip tie. I tell, the first time I used a tie condom, like I didn't I didn't know there were like different sizes. No, me neither. I was like, what the fuck? Why is it like? And you can't feel anything. No, you don't have any circulation. You basically last forever because you're just like shit. 
I was going, what is with these things? Yeah. And then I said, made in Thailand. I'm like, oh, well, no wonder. It's half the size. So then I fly home, yeah. go to like Costco or something like that. You right? flew home just to get coffee. Basically that weekend, I'm like, son, I got to take care of this solution. I go back there, and what do they say on it? Made in Thailand. Yeah. I'm like, well, these are going to be freaking horrible, you know? So there's actual sizes on yeah. the packages. I didn't realize. Well, like Magnums. Yeah. Right? Which... <laughs> So that would be what I would wear. And I know that that's not, oh, mega. No, but they're not that massive. Yeah. They're not that much bigger. It's just a normal size. I think. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, but, over here, my God. I think they start here, like, smaller than they even sell them in the U.S. And that's what are normal. Yeah. Like, that's what, like, cabbages and condoms. Yeah. Right? If you go over there, they got the buckets of them and stuff. Yeah. And, and great scene, I remember. She, oh, well, you should go. And I looked at them, and I said, absolutely not. No. <laughs> like, whatever. Because I, I, by that time, I knew the millimeters. Yeah. It was way too tight. Yeah. I don't even know what it is, but. Okay, so are they? Yeah, I, so think, I think Thailand's number one in condom production. They right? start below fifty here. They're in the forties somewhere. Uh, dia uh, circumference. Yeah. Okay, got like it. Forty-two millimeters, like their their standard. But like in America, it's like fifty-five. Yeah, which would be five point five centimeters. Yeah. Around. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Crazy. Thing. But are they number one? I think Thailand is number one in condom um, production. And automobile production in Southeast Asia as well. Yep. Tr yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, and parts as well. Mm -hmm. Not just the full automobile, but like actually the Ford parts. Ford and Chevy all have production facilities here. For the parts? For full full vehicles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They assemble. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, down on the uh, on the Gulf is where most of that happens. And again, that's why that's strength, because no one knows that. Yeah. They twelve percent of the world's tires. So I've been to Rayong. Not the greatest place. No, no, it's not. I mean, the only I went down there basically to get to Koh Samet. Yeah. Right. And of course, the ferries weren't running then. Yeah. And then July first, they started. Because yeah. I guess Koh Samet's like a uh, national park, right? Part of it. Yeah. Yeah, and the parks weren't open, so mm -hmm. no. Koh Ko Samet's cool, but it, it, one, it's small. Yeah. And two, it's crazy expensive. Really? Yeah. Because like when I went to Koh Larn, right, yeah. small, right off, the, and again I did it now. When yeah. There's like one ferry a day, versus like one every 15 minutes, normally filled with Chinese people. No judgment. Yeah. But you know, go, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. But uh, you know, you go over there, and yeah, it was a little bit more expensive, yeah. but it wasn't significant. So Koh Samet shouldn't be crazy expensive. It's not that far off the coast. No, but it well because of that, there's a huge national park on the island. Right. There's not, like, you can't bring cars over or anything like that. Oh, that's which right. Which makes any construction very difficult. For I think sure. that I saw, like, maybe two little pickup trucks over yeah. there. Everyone else has four-wheelers, scooters. But, you know, it, it's a cool little island. And, like, if you get a scooter, drive up to the peak. They've okay. got, like, a radio tower up there. It's nice. kind of cool. Big and, fan. And, and, of course, I geek out when I'm like, oh, High Point Radio Tower. Let me <laughs> right. see what we have going on here. Well, based on the bay distance, we're talking, talking about 1.5. Is that a microwave dish? Okay, okay. What's Clearly, that's 105 megahertz. So, you know, there's there's that aspect to it. But it's really just, like, two roads the whole Yeah, island. right. You know, you know, Center and, and then and obviously circumference. islands are like that. Yeah, right? sure, right. right. Actually, so, it's, you know, it's like one, one road goes up to the peak, and yeah. then there's, like, a little loop. Okay. They have a cool... When I was there, they were building a very cool reservoir type of expansion. Good for them. And so it That's was uh, forward looking. Yeah, and so it was like really kind of cool to like see like how they were laying down the concrete barrier right. and, and all of that. That was wild. And so I don't know if they filled that since or, or what their plan is for that, but it was at the bottom of the uh, the hill that goes up to the peak, so that. I'm assuming there was some type of rainwater capture idea. Well, hopefully. I mean, that's one of the things that, you know, a lot of uh, islands mm -hmm. really suffer from, right? Like, where are we going to get fresh water? What yeah. are we going to do with all the sewer? Yeah. Uh, uh, Kosi Chang, one of the things that they always freak out about is electricity. Yeah. They have this giant, you know, generator at one end, and then massive gas tanks. Yeah. You know, and, then, and then right next to it, an incinerator, right? Yeah. Just in case maybe you get a little bit of, you know, gas that you might want to burn. You know, a lot of people kind of... A lot of people's default is like, oh, how come there's no, not everyone's using solar out here in Thailand? <laughs> and I think people don't realize solar is not that effective when you're in, when it's Super hot. hot. Yeah. yeah. Right? The, the efficiency of solar goes down dramatically. No, it's photon driven, not yeah. infrared. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. And so when it's like 700 degrees on your solar panels and you're only pulling like one milliamp. Well, plus, when I was, I had a, a house down in Mexico, right, northern Baja, yeah. and I had, you know, a bunch of panels and everything, and the panels would be okay. The batteries, battery, mm -hmm. maybe I'd get three and a half years out of these batteries, because yeah. the heat, like, in June, July, August, September, they would swell, yeah. you know, and I had to make sure that there wasn't too much water in there. Yeah. I mean, it was crazy. How, yeah, yeah, yeah. This was before lithium ion and all that. Well, well, yeah, but plus lithium ion would have been way too expensive. Still, so, still expensive. 
I think the biggest thing now is that Thailand now allows some some places to put put power back onto the grid. Oh, so they've got the same meters that we have like back in the U.S. Yeah, so I've got a meter here. Okay. Like in your condo, yeah. you have a meter, mm -hmm. um, and you can you can reverse it with solar. Okay. Right, so it works the same way. Yeah. But it's not legal everywhere to do that yet. But so here's the thing, though. If you put solar on your roof here, like mm -hmm. my neighbors have solar. Wow. If, okay. If we looked out the uh, the door here, you could see it. And you know, theirs, I believe, it looks like it, it's thick enough that they're probably using it for heating, like heating their oh, water. Oh, heating water, yeah. Um, but they're probably also using it for electricity. The way, because I can see it, it's wired really? up in some way. Interesting. Okay. Um, but again, like that's a huge house, like its own compound. Right. So that there's different laws that apply. But again, it's the the efficiency of it when it's in like direct sun and yeah. I was talking to an engineer here, uh, an architectural engineer in Thailand. He was saying that if you've got it spaced enough and you've got convection. Oh, okay. Underneath you get so some cooling essentially. You've got so, cooling. So yeah, you can basically have like these passive fans that they put underneath to to move the air. Interesting. And uh, what about fins? Heat sinks, right? I mean. So. Keep in mind, though, what are, what are roofs made of here? A concrete, as far as I know. Clay. Clay? Yeah. Like, so you got concrete walls, clay roof. Yeah. Isn't that a little bit soft? Don't they want something it's, a little it's, bit... It's that, it's that clay tile, that baked clay tile. Oh, oh you mean... Okay, you mean the, the shing, shingles, effectively, yeah. right? Okay, they got it. Okay. So it's like that, that clay tile. Well, how do you attach to that? Do you drill through it? So they, they put frames on it. Okay, yeah. And then they mount on the frames. Well, so it's, it's so then it's basically like, kind of like the Thai house, where it's like built up on stilts yeah. for the airflow underneath. Yeah. They do the same thing with the panels. So, yeah, you want to get like enough airflow to be able to, to keep it at least ambient. Yeah, right. Well, if you're doing hot water here, I mean, this is the place for the hot yeah. water solar systems, yeah, for right? Sure. Obviously. You don't put those in, in February in Boston. No, you're not getting a whole lot of I/O out so, of that. So well, actually, you do get you do get in New England. So, yes. So. so one of my when I lived in Lincoln, one of the guys who I knew in Lincoln, Rhode Island, and obviously cold as fuck. Yeah. And uh, but one of the guys who I knew, he would actually heat his hot water all year with solar. All really? Yeah. Now was it just one guy, or did he have a full family in the house? Full family. That's tough. I mean, if you've got circulation, you got you could have to have a big storage tank inside the house to hold the hot water. Right? Yeah. So it's a closed coil mm -hmm. system. So yeah. it comes down to the tank. Yep. And uh, he had he had geothermal as well. So. Well, because the problem is, is that it like during the day all day long, yeah. and then the minute the sun goes down, you want to keep circulating the water because you're freaking cool it off. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a pretty good system. I mean, again, that wasn't as popular. Yeah. San Diego was ridiculous. Well, not the least of which is the fact that the the utility companies pay you yeah. to basically have the things on your roof. So yeah, in the, in California, they have great incentives. <laughs> Big time. But solar panels is like you can get the cheap Chinese solar panels yeah, now. Yeah. Like they're they're not super efficient, but they're still your ROI in somewhere where you have a, a high a high solar index. Yes. It's still really good. Plus, if you're getting the rebates. Yeah. But at the end of the day, then you realize these, you know, 25 year, no, 10 years, yeah. 10, 11 years. Max. Yeah. And you're supposed to clean them. Yeah. Most people in San Diego don't do that. So it, they have robots that will actually clean your, uh, that you can put on your. Oh, like the ones that people have in their pools? Yeah. The little things that cruise around? Well, but these are, they, they mount on your frame. Okay. For your panel, they just basically squeegee it up and down. Okay. Yeah. That could be cool. Maybe we should do that here. It sprays water on it and then it. See here it'd be great because it rains at least you know at least once a week if not yeah you know. but you're gonna get pollen all over your uh, the pollen here will, yeah the pollen will stick to your uh, to your I panel. didn't know there was pollen I mean I've never seen pollen here like so, I've seen it in New England no, where the yellow powder it's everywhere it's different right? okay. so pollen here looks kind of fibrous but the, it's the brown it's white white yeah you sure yeah you sure you weren't down on the i was well yeah that's where i saw her back alley <laughs> but <laughs> some lady boy told me it was pollen <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that you know kind but, of thing so it is so it, apparently most westerners aren't allergic to the pollen here. Uh, yeah i didn't even know it existed yeah. i wasn't like oh my god i've got any headaches or something from that but it, it's not like New, New England pollen is insane well yeah i mean you literally have to like wash it off of your car yeah. it's like this yellow fill like the yellow powder like yellow cake uranium. Yeah. You know, so I'm thinking, what <laughs> is what this? it looks like. Oh, explode this stuff. Yeah. No, I, I, I'll tell you what, I fucking love, like, that, you know, there's no hay fever. Like, no. Yes, oh, absolutely. So no, good. dude, I mean, there's so many things about that. I mean, yeah, it's got all the modern stuff, but I mean, the weather for a big city, 
But again, here, see, here's the thing. I am it's not as hot as balls. It, it, yeah, absolutely. Twenty four seven hot as yes. balls. Yes, the lowest it's probably ever been is it's like. 90. Three in the morning at, not, at 90 degrees. Yeah, 100 percent humidity. And it, the humidity is intense. But again, that's why I moved. One of the reasons I moved here. Because well, you came from San Diego, it's dry, right? It's yeah, it's a desert. It's a yeah. desert at the friggin' water. Yeah. And uh, but again, I come over to Southeast Asia enough where I was like, okay, this whole like 70 degrees bullshit that you tell me is perfect weather in San Diego compared to the rest of the United States. No, I'm not doing it. I love that. To me, like, well. Before I lived in Asia, okay, seventy degrees is perfect. Oh yeah, see, too cold for me. But now that I've lived here, minimum. Now that I've lived here, mm. eighty is too cold. Yeah, tough, no shit. Yeah, no, I'm over here and I've I, been here eight years. Yeah, I go back to the U.S. in the middle of summer. I'm freezing. My fr- my my class, my high school class, they have the the class reunion in November every year, like around Thanksgiving, which is of course a shitty time to in travel. Massachusetts. In. Yeah, and I'm like, you're fucking delusional. I said I won't even go to San Diego in November. <laughs> I'm like, forget it. Oh, yeah, man, you got to come back. You know, like, to, to you know, New England in yeah, November? in November. No. At the end of, you know when Thanksgiving is. I don't want to go to New England anyway, let alone November. I will tell you, July and August, my favorite months. Hot, humid, thunderstorms. I fucking hate, well, I hate Rhode Island. Okay. It's well, a shitty state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even Boston now, it's such a grind. Depends where you go, dude. Yeah. I mean, Beacon Hill's pretty friggin' nice. You go down to Charles, it's right across from MIT, there's some great places. Beautiful city for like two days. No, but Boston. Dorchester's a fucking shithole. Like, I mean, you don't want to go... Two days max for me, Boston. Boston? Yeah, yeah, no, I get that. But see, where I grew up in the south, I mean, we got boats everywhere, friggin' harbor. I go to New Club. York weeks. No, I Boston, can't. Boston, two days. Yeah, see, and I'm actually the opposite. New York City, I am not into that place. Oh, I love it. I don't. Okay, well, where do you love to go? Brooklyn, yeah, Manhattan? Yeah, Brooklyn, Harlem, you know, but all of Harlem? Yeah. Really? Dude, everywhere in New York's nice now. It's not like the 80s. Yeah, I know, that's true. Like, so, my last name, right? So, Somerville, Mass., right? Yeah. You remember that's, like, right yeah. on the end of Tops Medical? Right next to Cambridge. Right next to Cambridge. And t- and that used to be the highest the red density. Line. Yeah, right, right on the red line there, on the T block. On the T, yeah. On the T. Just take the T. And, uh, right past Harvard Square. Right? You, you get can, to Porter Square, bang on. Man. You can't. You can't park there. You can't park. You, can <laughs> you can't park your car. Can't park it. You can be my pocketbook cheater. <laughs> and so Somerville, highest density housing projects anywhere in the country. Well, who do we have here? Oh, Aztec is here. What's ah, up, Aztec? good to see you, buddy. He's yeah. from uh, Australia. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. I get about probably on my live streams. I get about fifty percent Australia because I do them in the morning Bangkok time. A buddy of mine actually just sent me an email uh, and he's like, "Hey, can you do some?" live streams when the UK is awake, oh. which is like 5 p.m. here. Yeah. So like noon their time or yeah. something like this. So that'll be kind of interesting. But Aztec, good to see you, buddy. Thanks for coming by, man. Um, highest density of housing projects in the entire country. Somerville? And, uh, yes, used to be. So then some guy comes in, he goes, okay, this real estate's worth nothing, and it's right next to fucking Cambridge. Yeah. So he like double clicks on it. Now, $650,000 for like a, you know, two-story yeah. house. Somerville. So in... Look, I have friends who live in Somerville. It's not a bad town. Not now. It's 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 a nice place because it's next to Cambridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. I mean, it, again, it's location. It's not, but it, like Revere, Sevier. Revere's I used to date a girl from Revere. White, yeah. White trash. She put out though. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, she was. Did oh, you have a Camaro? Was that why she went out with you? <laughs> no, was, she was uh, a. <laughs> she's an ex-girlfriend for a goddamn good reason. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly because she's from, she's very, <laughs> she's very revered. And that's the thing. If you're not from back there, yeah. you don't know. What's that? What's that roast beef clam shack on the uh, on the water? In Revere? Yeah. Uh, is it the Holly Gullies? No, thing it's like a person's name. What if there were only a global information network? Yeah, that, that would have. Chat. Nah, yeah, nah that doesn't impossible. Exist. That Maybe doesn't next exist. year. Yeah. That's some IT startup. But but she's a uh, oh, su- such a revered chick. Very nice, very nice young lady. Really? No. I was going to say. Yeah, there was just a, from Revere. It's just from Revere. Right? Like, People from Revere right now, like, cancel yeah. Bangkok Street. Oh, yeah. Well, they're, they're like, oh, no, no. We have, no, they're proud of it. They, no, that's no one, what's crazy. No one from Revere uses the internet. Dude, <laughs> they wear this shit like a badge of honor. What was Wonderland? Wonderland. The, the, the dog track, right? Yeah, so which like, is no longer. So you'd have to dog. go to Wonderland to get to her house. On like, the blue line. On the blue line. Yeah. Which, like, like when I, I lived in the green, so I lived in Mission Hill. Right, and so it Boston. Yeah. Okay. So on the green, the E line. The so green what was e. your? Uh, I didn't even know that there were there were never letters when I was growing up. Oh, it right. was always just colors. So so the green line. So when it gets to Copley. Yes. The, that used to be the end of the green line so, for me. So the E splits at Copley, Got and it. then the rest split at Kenmore. Yeah, Kenmore's a big hub. 
And so I remember when Kenmore was like actually like a little cool area. Now it's like a little bit more commercialized. Yeah, well, what's cr- I mean, you get off, you're like in a friggin' tunnel. There's like yeah. dirt everywhere. There's a friggin' Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. Selling fresh donuts. Yeah. I'm like, you want to talk about pollen? <laughs> this has mucus on it. <laughs> From the guys that are like, I mean, and, but it's so 50% on time rate. Yeah. What's, what, what is it here? 99 point something. Yeah. It's Over crazy. 99% on time. So here's the crazy. So talk about Dunkin' Donuts, though. Oh. Like, how different is Dunkin' Donuts here? Ah, the donuts suck. Right, they they suck, and then yeah. the coffee's Thai coffee. Yeah, which is better here. So here's the, so Dunkin' Donuts coffee in general is pretty bad. Yeah, it's so shitty. It, it, it's useful. It, There's it, caffeine it, it, in it. It's made to be mixed with milk and sugar. And eaten with a donut. Yeah, and eaten with a donut. Yeah, so fat but, sugar. But here, yeah. they they take milk and sugar to another level because Thai coffee. Yes. So if you order, if you just order coffee in like a regular Thai shop, you say I want coffee, they're gonna give you Thai iced coffee, yeah. which is about an ounce of coffee. Very black. Very black. Yeah. Super black. And like burnt, the, the blackest of black. Like dark roast, black, yes. like overpowered, bitter coffee mixed with about eight ounces of condensed milk. Yep. And cream. Cream and about three ounces of sugar. Yeah. Like physical by volume, by weight ounces. Poured all, over ice. All, all mixed together, yeah. poured over ice. And then they're going to pour more condensed milk yeah. on top of that. Drizzle it. And then they're going to put a cover on it and give it to you with a straw in a bag. It'll look like this with the little, the little, um, <laughs> the little panda on it. I mean, there's nothing quite like Hello Kitty, you yeah. know, to have in your coffee. And they're gonna pour more condensed milk on top of that, and that is your diabetes in a cup. But I mean, that is how coffee should be done. And people are thinking, oh my God, that's so sweet. No, it's still friggin' bitter. Yeah. Because the coffee is so goddamn strong inside of this thing. Yeah. And and most of the time, most of they have little coffee stands here. Yeah. So that's where I always get mine. And Twenty bucks. Is it is it a three in one mix that they put in, or they no. do the cafe baron? No, they do the cafe baron, right. which is if you guys don't know, there's these like basically metal containers, right? Yeah. And then they have the sock inside there yeah. or the filter, basically. It's like a, 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 a I don't know. It's a coffee sock. It's a fabric filter. Yeah, like kind of a cylinder or but more they like a boil, cone. They boil. They put the coffee into that, and then they boil that in yeah. the in the metal cup. Right, and then beneath it, they usually and then one of those usually actually has fresh cream being yeah. heated all day long. So then they pour that on top. Yeah. But yeah, the baron. I love that stuff. So the baron is like a really dark coffee plus herbs. Yeah, that, and I think that's one of the reasons I like it because when I have these, I'm like, it almost tastes like a mocha. Yeah, so I'll have the I'll, I've drank Cafe Baron straight without sugar. Okay, it's not bad. It's here's the disappointment though is that you know when you go up to certain Thai things, right? Certain mm. th- they they look at certainly me, maybe not yeah. you, but they look at me and they're like, okay, Farang, right, right? Foreigner, so he's gonna want like for example, if I go and get Pad Thai on the yeah. street, yeah. always add sugar. Yeah, I gotta say my one, my one. I don't want sugar. Right? Yeah. They see these things and what do they want to make me? Instant coffee. I'm like, no, 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 but on, but on. They're like, and I'm like, what? And I, what do you say? Thai style. Yeah. You know, and then they kind of know. But um, cause, because I hate the instant coffee. Yeah. I like the three in one. Gosh, I can't. I, I, I don't drink anything instant. The, uh, really? Yeah. Well, what? You I could, do prepare coffee. Yeah. So I'm, you saw my side. Yeah. No, I have like a whole bench right. dedicated to Just coffee. so you know, it took us 10 minutes to get the entire live stream set up. 15 minutes for him to explain to me <laughs> the kind of coffee he was making. I mean, the look at the size. What is that, like 24 ounces? This is 900 milliliters. Yeah, it's yeah. like a friggin' liter of coffee. And you haven't had to go to the re- Oh, in other words, I thought he was going to have to go to the restroom. Look at what we got down there. <laughs> like, what, that's, that's hard wood, man. Yeah. <laughs> you need to, <laughs> we need to get a bucket for you. It's like, how did you do this live stream so long? You drank all that coffee. Yeah, so, I well, here's the thing, right, with... Like, so we went through my whole coffee process. I love Thai coffee. Yeah. Right? And it's cheap here because it is, yeah. Thailand's a coffee producing company, country. So Certainly not number one, though, right? Not number one yeah. by, by far, but because they produce coffee here, yeah. imports are expensive. So, ah, if you get, true. like, even Indonesian coffee is crazy expensive compared yeah. to Thai coffee. And so here's the thing it's not, it's definitely not the, like, there's very, very good coffee. There's high where's your coffee. Where's your super expensive bucket of uh, that little, the flask of coffee that you were showing me? It's like uh, 400 baht. Here it is. Yeah. And this stuff is like, you buy this for how much for that container? This is 400 baht for this. Okay, so it's like basically. This is a cold brew, but this was a. Um, $13. Yes, yeah, so, but this was, this is an Ethiopian uh, and a yeast processed coffee. Okay. So it's. It was a very expensive coffee to import. The, yeah, I was going to say, the cost of it is based on, like, what is it, 50% duty? Yeah. 
Okay. So, but ta if you like coffee that tastes like a very, like a very coffee tasting coffee. Yeah. Like, easy way to say it, very earthy, like kind of chocolatey notes, earthy notes. Thai coffee is for you. And it, but again, it's your Arabica beans. Thai Arabica. Yeah, see, I like Robusta. I, Robusta thing belongs in espresso and yeah. that's the only place well, it should be. That was your first response. You're like, yeah, yeah there's more caffeine in it. I'm like, yeah. totally. So <laughs> espresso is normally 40% Robusta. Okay. And then it's Arabica, because Arabica is where the flavor comes from. Yeah. Robusta, Robusta is just bitter. Well, again, it, that's why so, it's so awesome. But he, when so they make... my friend, my friend from the Philippines, Roz, she owns a commune cafe okay. in Manila, in Makati, and she would argue that you can actually get a very, a very uh, diverse flavor profile in Robusta. She's a coffee okay. expert. She does coffee tasting. She works with coffee growers. Okay. I, I just, I have not found that. For me, like Robusta, the yeah. Arabica, and then That's in Thailand we have Thai pea berry coffee, yeah, yeah, yeah. which has a very teaish flavor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and if you get like a light roast pea berry, that's a beautiful coffee. Okay. But I haven't tried that. I do a medium roast Thai Arabica. It has very earthy tones, very coffee flavored coffee. So this cost me twenty baht, right? So that's basically like seventy cents, yeah. something like that. Um, that's about the maximum I'm willing to spend. Like when I do the three in ones at home and I get the Makona gold, yeah. right? And they do the thing. I'm at about 16, maybe 17 cents a cup. Yeah. So I'm, I'm huge with that. Because over here, Starbucks, here's another thing that's fucking strange. Yeah. You think, oh, yeah, everything's cheaper. And, oh, you know, Starbucks, crazy expensive. I think a, what did I get recently? Probably a grande caramel macchiato, right? With maybe an ad shot, because that's like just what I'd say. Yeah. I think it was over 300 baht. For sure. It's ten dollars, guys, for a cup. Of, I mean, so you give me this all five dollar cup of coffee shit. Yeah, I'd love to be able to only pay five dollars so for bought, a cup of coffee. The other day, Jib was getting a massage, and uh, I was waiting. I was meeting her at that Starbucks. You gotta let me know where to go because yeah. that's I want to go to the place because I mean I can do the whole thing, yeah. whatever. But it's like I need someone who's fucking skilled. Yeah, like, like if you want to jack, if you want to go to Jack Shack, yeah. go, go to Soy Twenty Three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want a real massage? There's yeah. a spot. Yeah. And so he, one of the keys is to know if there's a, if you can see into the shop. Yeah. Then you know it's usually legit. Right. Or if they're not all sitting out in front. Well, even at the in regular shorts. Massage, yeah, in shorts, it, <laughs> if there's no fake titties to be seen, it's probably a legit shop. Yeah. Um, and they're not going to be like, mess up. They're not going to say that to another Thai yeah. person. Thai person will be like, okay, I'm going to the next door. So I, one time I was on Soy 23 and they grabbed me. Yeah. Like, uh, and Jib was with me. Really? Yeah, they're like, oh, you want massage? That's oh, weird. And, so, and Jib's like, the fuck? No, that yeah, with a Thai person. Because if I walk anywhere with Gracie, even if we're not holding hands, soy twenty three. They look very aggressive. So where? Okay, twenty three is cowboy runs between twenty one and twenty three. Okay. Oh, so tw soy twenty one is the soak. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay, got it. So twenty three is on the other side. Yeah. Ah, okay. So, you know, what do we have? A robust is for peasants. <laughs> a blonde Ethiopian for me. Hate the player, hate the game. What's up, brother? <laughs> yeah, I I am. I am with you on that. Ethiopian Ethiopian yeast processed coffee is where it's at. Okay. Flavor wise. Best coffee I've ever had, Jamaica. Blue Mountain Coffee. That's the best coffee I've ever had. We'll go one day. What are you doing after we record today? We'll go over to MBK. I'll take you to Gallery uh, Cafe. We got to totally do that. And we got to figure out like a si Yes, I'd love to do that. We got to figure out a system to be able to take. Because first of all, you've never done a live stream on Talk yeah. Strange. So thank you guys for coming by for thank that. You I'm stoked that we're doing that. I hope we can do that like maybe at least once a month. Yeah. Probably a good idea. It'd be good if we can bang out a few, yeah. Well, that plus I want to get some interaction yeah. from other people. And again, if you guys don't know, I'm going to say it again. 877-WOW-DUDE is basically the toll-free number in the United States. I also believe it works in Canada. But it's toll-free, and you can call there. You can leave a message and say, look, this is just a message for Bangkok Strange. 877-WOW-DUDE. 877-969-3833. Leave a message. Leave yeah. us some comments if you're watching this on the replay. But I want to go out into, the, into Bangkok. Yeah. And start doing some videos of strange shit. Yes. And I want the people to be like, dude, isn't it really weird that they like have really expensive Nikes over there? You know, and kind of think it's like, what? What are you talking Sneakers about? Sneakers are crazy expensive. Real ones? Yeah. Well, because yeah, again, it's ones, duty. Yeah. yeah. It's the import. Duty. Even so, a pair of Converse here, like $120. Yeah. Legit I, Converse. I, yeah, I just bought some Nikes and they were like uh, probably what, 120 So I, I wear Thai sneakers called Nanyans. $12. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When we can buy. So, Gracie. And they last for years. In the Philippines, right? Years. So, she gets like, you know, it's got three stripes in it. Yeah. But it says, Abibus. Abibus. <laughs> and they're that, like, that's, just, that's just the localized pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but they don't last. They last yeah. like friggin' two, three months. 
Yeah. But MBK, so let's talk about that. Malls. Yeah. We that's we gotta have a whole show on friggin' oh. malls. Because the Bentley dealership inside Paragon. Yeah. Next to the Aston Martin dealership. McLaren. On the third floor. You can buy a fucking McLaren. I mean, I honestly don't think that's available anywhere in the United States. A McLaren? No, no, no. Even a, a dealership mall. on the third floor of in a mall. mall. The only place I mean, I've seen that San Diego absolutely has a very you know high exotic car, play brand new. So they sell yeah. Rolls Royces and for uh, Austin Martins. Yeah. Okay. And then there's another one on the other side of town in La Jolla that also sells uh, uh, Ferraris. This yeah. is a Ferrari. Dealer. But in a mall, no. like this is not on the third floor. What is the best mall, even close to like a mall here in Bangkok, in the United States? Nothing. Trying to think like the best one I've ever maybe no. the Galleria, the Gonorrhea in Los Angeles. Not even close. Yeah, it's, it's not. The Paragon? Oh no 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 no! It's it's like a it's literally it's like a five star hotel. Yeah. With friggin' shops in it, and by five star I mean you walk in, the guy clicks his heels together, salutes you, right? Yeah. I mean it's just, it's just the customer service over here at places like that, because again you know he's like oh yeah that guy's you know full time. So you, you want a shop? Thai customer service is either outstanding. Sure. Next level, unlike anything you've ever seen, or it's the worst customer service you've ever had. Their level of urgency <laughs> is definitely yeah. Like if I go to Power Buy, yeah, yeah, you're not you're not getting good service. No, and returns. That's something but I also, would really. Also, you someone who makes ten dollars a day. Sure, but again, they could go elsewhere and make ten dollars a day. Yeah. Okay? So I mean, it's it's comparative. But like you go into, even like. You just go into like a, a regular shop on the soy. Like yeah, yeah. If it's the person who owns it's working there, nine times out of ten, their customer service levels look through the roof. No, absolutely. Yeah, this coffee. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they wanted to like hang out with me. Yeah. They started laughing because, of course, I pronounced Borong probably wrong, you know, kind yeah. of thing. Because she goes, Oh, you, you want Ron? Just like you pronounced uh, Kopanang wrong in all of your videos. <laughs> How do you pronounce it? Kopanang. 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 You, you don't pronounce the G. No. You're a coponang. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> Jib, Jib was laughing, <laughs> laughing. Clearly at me. Yeah. See, that's the beauty of me coming over here during the day, because she's at work. Yeah. Or she's at school. Yeah. So I can't walk in. She goes, oh, yeah. I mean, literally, she could probably give me shit every single time I come <laughs> over here for at least 10 words no, that I say your wrong. Your pronunciations on places are kind of hilarious, because well, here's the thing. You're I'm pronouncing sure. it phonetically. Right, for right. how it's been Romanized. Yeah, exactly. Th- Thai's not, a, it's not like no. Filipino, right, which has been Romanized. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Vietnamese has been Romanized. Yes. Thai has. Well, that's why I love people that come over here, you know, they come, they come over here for their second trip, and yeah. then they think they really know Thailand. And I probably was guilty of this in, to some degree. And they start basically um, complaining or debating about the spelling of, like, Pattaya. Like, one T, two Ts. I'm like, dude, it's the phonetical spelling. Yeah. You can't You can't bargain on that. So, but so that's a good question. So, is G's in words when they use a G to phonetically spell something? Is it mm? yeah? There's no G sound. It's like it's like a Y, yeah. more like a. Well, so there is a G sound. What do you say? You get Copanang. Copanang. N G. Okay. Right. So P H A N A N G. Guy has a G sound. Guy, chicken. Chicken. Guy is a G. How do you say chicken? The rice. Kopat guy. Kopat guy. Cow. Kopat guy. Kopat. Cow is rice. Cow. Yeah. Right. So, which I don't. So there's five tones in Thai. Yeah, that's. So here, not, here's the fucked up thing about Thai. We'll do a whole a whole show. Tones on on language. We get to bring Jib in on that. Yeah, or we should get my old uh, Thai teacher to Skype in. Dude. Yeah. That would be amazing. She'd be awesome. Yeah, for sure. But she here in Bangkok? No, she lives up. Uh, she lives up country. But I used okay. to take online classes with her. Oh, nice. She, she could totally zoom in. We could get. Well, wait, you know people over at uh, Chula, right? Yeah. We could get a professor over there. Do it on site. I don't know any Thai professors at Chula, actually, just for a uh, just for, yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so there's five tones. So when you're learning Thai, tone is very important. And, the, like, under, being able to hear the tone yeah. differences is, is key. And I imagine this is why all Thais sing so well. Because that's an interesting they're statement. constantly talking in, you know, different the tones. Tone, yeah. So the tone changes the meaning of a word completely. The one that I learned really it was sawai. Sawai. Beautiful. Oh, and crazy. Or, or pig. Yeah. Oh, crazy. Yeah. Doesn't isn't one of them pig? No. No. Can you uh, say it the other pig, way? Pig is mu. Mu. Oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah yeah. That's pork. No, that's pig. Okay. But so here's I one. I love my Hello Kitty coffee. <laughs> I mean, this is just masculine. So I, I remember when I was 
when I was first learning the tones, I was I was with Jib. I was ordering food at a market. Okay. And I was getting spring rolls, right? And I asked her to put the uh, the sauce on top. Okay. Uh, the sauce <coughs> is nam jim. Nam jim. But not nam is water. water. Yeah. Right. Jim is the sauce, but it's also jim is a slang word for pussy in a different tone. Oh my god. So I asked this seventy-year-old lady <sighs> to put her pussy juice on top of my spring rolls. <laughs> What did Jim do? Did she throw up? Like what she said? <laughs> Jim just grabbed my hand and was like, "We need to work on your tone. Let me order this." And were you just like, "I don't know what you're talking about." So I, oh, I knew what I said as soon as Jim. Oh, really? So luckily, I that was my. You knew old, the bad word. That was my old condo, and so like I knew that auntie. Okay. Like, I ordered food from her all the time. And she was like, all and right, she just kind of laughed, like, okay. uh, you know, th- in ninety-nine percent of ties are super. Oh, easily. Super uh, helpful. Like if you're at least trying to speak some Thai. Absolutely. They'll be like, uh, well, maybe like, you mean no. this. Yeah, like uh, if you fuck up a tone, they're like, aha, that's funny. They're like, Jim. Yeah. yeah. Jim. And so, Jim? And so Jim? when I moved, when I was living in Aso, when I was living over on. Uh, Soy Cowboy? <laughs> yeah. When I was, no, when I was living <laughs> over. your view was. When I was living over on uh, Sai Pai Sing Tone. Okay. Uh, in Aso. And uh, Jim was like, maybe you shouldn't try to order that here because you might get what you asked for. Nice. <laughs> She's got a good sense of humor. That's pretty good. I'm liking that. But yeah, so asking like an 80 year old lady to put her pussy juice on my spring rolls. Yeah, that is. Uh, I wish we had that on the, video. That's not even a metaphor. That's like straight up what I asked her. <laughs> <laughs> what is the, Aztec says that's hilarious. What's the other one? He. He. Doesn't that mean like cunt or something? He. Yeah. No, no. He. Here. You think about here? Maybe. It's like a slang, basically bad word term. Here. Like, I hear is like, uh, oh, you piece of shit, you motherfucker. Really? I hear. Okay, I yeah. thought it was like the C here. word in English. No, no but, I mean, so I don't know the exact translation of here, but it's like. Here, okay. You would say But it's that, like an upward, like, right? Like, what the fuck, you motherfucker, I hear. Uh, yeah. okay. Because yeah. I said that, like, I said, like, well, let's go here, right? And then I'd like pronounce teeny, mm. right? Is that right? Is that, teeny. Is that, is that the point I read from? Yeah. Okay, so here. And, uh, and then I said, yeah, here. And she's like, oh, don't say. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah, I hear. Yeah. I hear. That yeah. means, like, you motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. All right, fair enough. So you'll, you'll hear people, like, uh, throw that out. Like, uh, if you hear people screaming that, like, you know, there's a fight going on. You hear any Thai person screaming something, yeah. especially if it's a guy. Yeah. Like, if you hear a woman screaming, it's like, all right, she's having an issue, whatever. Yeah. But when guys do it. Yeah. There's about to be a fight. Very serious. Yeah, I, I think. And at a foreigner, I'm yeah. running the other way. What do we got? Uh, oh, yeah, we got some comments, people. right? Yeah. ERM96 says, you're right, Mike. Oh, yeah, that's the doctor. He's out of, uh, he yeah. does the ER, actually, in uh, Hawaii. Okay, nice. Mahalo, dude. And then, uh, good vibes, howdy, doc. Oh, okay. Aztec just saying, what up? Yeah. Well, that's, they get that from the Cool Kids table. The Cool Kids table. Yeah, that's over on yeah. my ass off. The, yeah. That, we, that, that's Mike's what our channel. live streams. Yeah, live streams. I think, yeah. I've, got, I think you're, I've got your channel linked in the homepage of the uh, Bangkok stream. You do, yeah. And there's a, a bunch of guys that have come over and uh, subscribed. So thank you guys. Yeah, I thank really you very it. much. Appreciate that's you guys awesome. subbing. Don't forget to check us out. iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn. What is Stitcher? Is that like an aggregator of all? It's like another platform you can listen on. Okay, for podcasts. Like app, yeah. Got it, okay. It's mostly like... I think Stitch is mostly for Google people. Like, because well, I use Google Podcasts. So I use Apple Apple right. Podcasts, but like I think a lot of people before Google had podcasts available globally. Okay. All these other platforms existed uh, for people to get podcasts on on Google apps. Pretty because obviously right. iTunes was like first to the game, and then big Go- time Google uh, Google geo locked a lot of sites. Like Google Podcast. Just became available in Thailand technically oh, this year. Okay, yeah. I didn't know that. That's interesting. I'm trying to think what I use for it. I mean, here's what's interesting. So I, before I moved here permanently, mm. I had come over and actually, um, no, I didn't. I didn't meet you until I moved here permanently. We met last year. Yeah, yeah, November. Though. Yeah, yeah. So it was right after I just moved here, whatever. And then we had a podcast in like what December? Yeah. So I think me and you met over at uh, what was it? At, um, that coffee at True Digital. Digital Park. Yeah. Shitty coffee. It was shitty coffee. It was like nine bucks. It was, it was, it was, it was expensive. And it was like really like it small only, cup. only espresso yeah. or americano, yeah. which ties love. Like uh, espresso cafe culture here is essentially espresso culture. But where I'll take you over by MBK inside mm. the uh, art and cultural center okay. is pour over. The clean cultural center, the one down near 
No, because MBK no, is like, you mean like right there on the BTS. Yeah, right. So it shared the other side of the platform of Siam National Stadium. Okay. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. And so Gallery Drip in Bangkok, probably the best coffee in Bangkok. Okay. Uh, pour over only. Gallery Drip. Yeah. And Free and advertising. Ding 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 ding. Yeah. Oh, this place is phenomenal. We need to get some sponsors. Who's the sponsor of? Uh, of Bangkok Strange? We don't have anyone. No, 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 no. Your buddies. Oh, uh, Ash Kickers used to be. Ash Kickers, right? Uh, ribs, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ribs, smoked uh, brisket, chicken wings. Well, we can just start out like and saying, "Look, you're our sponsor." Yeah. They're not giving us any money. We, so, what's the name of the coffee place? Uh, Gallery Drip. Gallery Drip. Yeah. Bangkok Strange, ladies and gentlemen, Free brought sponsor. to you by <laughs> Gallery Drip over in the MBK. Yeah, MB, I love MBK. It's this crazy. Well, because horrible. you can get real stuff, but yeah. then you can also get fake stuff. Mostly fake stuff. Oh, is it mostly fake stuff? <laughs> yeah. So, like, I gave a pair of Nikes over there for, like, 20 bucks. What, what or my, Mikey's, what they be Mikey's. called, Mikey's. One of my favorite vegan restaurants is in the basement of MBK. Now, you're vegan Yeah. with everything? Yeah. Okay. So, it's in the basement of MBK. Pretty awesome. So, like, a food court? No, it's, like, its own little restaurant. Okay. Like, next to a top. What's like, it called? I don't even know the fucking name. Is it going to be our next sponsor? Maybe. Because, <laughs> I mean, that coffee place isn't giving a shit. <laughs> Yeah, we, we choose somebody there. We get, we get, no, who should we should get like uh, like recruitment agencies and uh, and insurance companies to sponsor? Oh country. my God, how funny that you say that! Perfect so fit. I'm on Bangkok Expats Facebook group. Mm-hmm. This guy posts, he's like, "Hey, do you know anyone who can invest? You know anything like that?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure, I'll introduce you to you know Robert yeah. or to that kind of thing." If those guys want any money, maybe Mark Wolf. And I said, "All right, fine." So I meet with him like the other day. He's got a recruitment agency. Yeah for nurses in Thailand to go to Germany. Really? So you know the whole OFW model that's yeah. in the Philippines, right? Yeah. They bring them. So and I'm, I'm just like that's stellar. Yeah. You know, and, he, and but here's what happens is they train them in uh, German, yeah. but also like, you know, medical terminology in German. And most of them that sign up for it already speak English, mm-hmm. right? And then they bring them over into Germany. Huh? So yeah, recruitment agencies, you know, the guys... And you have hot Thai nurses working in Germany. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I said, you know, do you still have the resumes like you do here in Thailand where you have to affix a picture of it? And it's like, <laughs> ah, no. You're Probably just... not allowed in Europe. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I mean, it is Germany. Like, here in Thailand, so if you apply for a job in Thailand... Oh, that's strange. They'll say, what's your age? Yes. Um, marital status. Marital status. What's your religion? And attach a photo. Yeah, and if you don't look good... Yeah. Yeah. So That's I, amazing. I um, I remember when I was uh, starting my PhD at Thomasaw, and they were like, oh, what's your religion? I'm like, atheist. <laughs> and they are like, oh, we don't have atheists in Thailand. So you have to pick a religion. Just put Christian. I'm like, definitely not putting Christian. Yeah, roger that. And they're like, no, 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 you're white, so you're Christian. I'm like, no. Interesting. That's not how it works. Yeah, and, and they weren't saying that to be offensive. Yeah. It's no. not kind of like, oh, you're black, you should be in prison. I mean, it wasn't no, like but that. It's, but it's also, it's kind of stupid. To, but, it's, it's, so yeah, it's based on ignorance. So they're like, oh, we only have five religions in, in Thailand. Okay, what, do you know I, what they're... I'm like, what, what are my choices? <laughs> and they're like, they go Buddhist, uh, Muslim, probably. Hindu, Muslim, uh, Sikh, and Christian. Wow. I was like, oh, I'll pick Sikh. And they're, okay. like, they're like, well, why is Sikh? I'm like, because you can never bitch about my beard, and I'm going to carry a knife everywhere with me. And this hat yeah. is going to get me laid. On this and, and, and so they go, okay, just put whatever you want. <laughs> well, it's like your name being in lowercase. Yeah. Right? I freaking love that. What's the first thing I said to you when I saw in lowercase? Uh, like, you know, tech nerd. Yeah, absolutely. You're a Linux guy. <laughs> if everything's in lowercase, you're a freaking <laughs> Linux guy. But yeah, no, and I, I've gotten that from like the bank. They're like, oh, you can't write your name. With, yeah, with, sure. Right, yeah. How are you going to tell me how to write my name? And it just, it's, like, if it, it was really an issue, I'd write it yeah, uppercase. Yeah, but sure. like, if I can have fun with it, why not? And nine times out of ten, they're like, they think about it. They're like, yeah, why not? Well, having the middle name Penis, I mean, that just <laughs> probably just says to everybody, hey, look, this guy, you know, he said he said his own. So here's another thing that's very strange about Thailand that we'll, we'll do an episode on this is middle names. Your middle name is legally part of, like, your identity here. When is it in... Well, in the U.S., how often do you use your middle name? So that's fair, yeah. It, they, they ask for middle name or middle initial. Yeah. Or if your names are too long, they're but, just like, Africa, don't bother. But, like, how often do you actually use your middle name in the U.S.? So my full name? Yeah. Michael Bruce John Lamont Somerville. God damn. That doesn't fit anywhere. Yeah. So the middle middle name Why is Why do you John. have, like, 15 middle names? It's a family thing. Okay. Actually. No, well, that and it's efficient, because they're like, look, we're going to have one kid. 
Yeah. We're not going to have none of these four. Who's who, well, that one's Michael? That one's John. That one's Bru uh -huh. no, no, no. Well, one kid, five names. Bam. Our top five names. One yes, kid. yes, one kid. He's going to nail it. My my father, my mother, four names. Yeah. You know that sort of thing. Yeah. So my middle name's Thomas. Okay. Which I never use. Yeah. Right. And the like. Uh, T sometimes. Even like no, never. Even Hold on, your passport is there. It's on my passport because it has to be. Yeah, right, right. But like when I graduated master's program, or mm -hmm. I didn't have to put my middle name on my diploma. Dana Blue. Yeah, that's it, my degree, whatever. Got it. Dana Blue. When I would sign things, Dana Blue. Never yep. use my middle initial. Here, it's on your passport, so it's on everything. Yeah, Like right. even on my bank account in the U.S., it's not there. AIS account. Yeah, so middle name is everywhere. What's interesting is some people would refer to me. My kids have four names too, Aztec. Yeah, see, he knows what time it is. Aztec's a freaking rock. So I'm actually, I want to legally change my name so I can get rid of my middle name. Gracie, actually, she's doing that with her daughter. In Streamline. But in the Philippines, it's weird because your middle name is usually the, the uh, maiden name of your mom. Mm -hmm. So my son doesn't have a middle name. I remember my okay. my mother was like freaking out. She's like, oh, all his friends are going to have middle names and he's not. It's going to make him... What the fuck is wrong with you? It's a stupid name that no one uses. Does he have your last name? Yeah, that's okay. my last yeah, name. Yeah. So it's Talay Bloom. Okay. Talay, uh, like yeah, sea. ocean. Okay, yeah. yeah, sea. Nice. So, but like, why like, why should I give him a middle name? It has like no purpose. But again, like you said, he's Thai. Half Thai. Yeah, half Thai, yeah. So he's, he's that, American. Oh, okay, he was born there? Yeah. Okay, got it. So, but like, I remember when my mother was like, oh, he's not, all his friends are going to have middle names, and he's not. It's, oh my god, it's so weird. You're like, you know what, mom? All his friends are going to be circumcised, too. But there's no way I'm subjecting him to that at 12 years old. <laughs> we should probably do that at the beginning. Actually, I wrote that the, um, he ended up circumcised at birth, and a doctor came in. I was like, kind of like, I don't know. Maybe I should, we'll wait till later. And the doctor's like, I was just fucking with the doctor. I'm like, <laughs> You can't, you can't do it at any time. Yeah, right? like maybe like, when he's 10, first grade, something yeah, like that. Like, something like that, yeah, right? Yeah. The doctor's like, you know that hurts. <laughs> and I'm like, really? Because I don't feel anything. Well, trust me, <laughs> right now it's going to hurt, too. The fucking baby's going to cry. Yeah, there's a reason he cries. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, oh, this is awesome. It's so much smaller in it. <laughs> <laughs> that apparently is referred to as a pretty barbaric custom in other countries. Yeah, this is very uncommon. Which is honest. I mean, I've seen the other ones, and not that I'm like saying, oh yeah, that's. But I don't like the look. The other in it. With the little snorkel coming off. Yes, the dude. What the hell's all that about? It's like I'm a I'm a little pony. It, it, well, I mean, if you've only ever seen circumcised dick, then I don't think a lot of Thai guys aren't circumcised. Yeah, that's pretty true. Yeah. But you know what I got the other day? Ham suai. <laughs> Should we go into what that means? Go ahead. Beautiful cock. <laughs> Where where'd you get this from? So, I, it was right on Sukhumvit. Soy. It's soy. No, 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 no. Soy. Sukum, soy Sukhumvit. No, no. Soy. Soy? Soy. It's not su Why? No. Soy. Soy. Like as in soy milk. No. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Jesus. Okay, well. It was right on Sukhumvit. And I'm thinking, I'm not anywhere near Soy 23. Yeah. I'm not near Nana. I'm like way down. Mm. Basically near Tong La. Mm. Did I say that right? Yeah. There we go. Tong La. And uh, and she's not Tong Lo. <laughs> thong Lore? Thong Lo. <laughs> Dude, I love this thong place. Where can you get thongs in, in Thailand? But yeah, she gave me the whole, like, you know. Pretty cock. Pretty cock. And I'm thinking, come on. And that's when I was like, you know what? I really do want a massage. <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't know whether it's like I got older or what. Or, you know, I'm with Gracie, right? So there's that, too. Yeah. And I'm just like, I don't want. I can imagine you, like, going into a massage place with Gracie and you come out and you're like, you're like Gracie, how, how did yours was how, was your, how did yours end? So here's the funny. <laughs> so Gracie and I were walking down the street, whatever. We look down this alley, and there's this massage place, right? Yeah. And the girls are like waving their arms or whatever. And so we go in, and like so we both walk into the place, right? And yeah. again, lot the darked out black curtains yeah. and everything. We walk in. The first thing they do is they look at me with like eyes wide open, and they said to her something in Thai, and of course yeah. she has no clue. She's like, okay. Yeah, she's like, yeah, sure, whatever. And um, and they said, well she she, she doesn't know any time like she wouldn't yeah. know how to say yes she <laughs> okay, wouldn't yeah. chat and um, and so they say well so this is an extra massage place yeah. like they just look at me and I'm like oh okay thanks and then so we left yeah. right but man I'll tell you there are places in Thailand where after a while I'm just like you know what I really do want a massage yeah like someone who's really strong walk on me 
you know, holding the the deal with the ceiling, jumping off the uh, the top rope with the elbow. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. It's like this is MMA. Priceless, loving the kinship over the <laughs> fucking cheese. Oh, Mike was good. Oh, Aztec, Mike sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what that means in Thai. I mean, come on. So, so I have a friend. She came to visit here. She's a little older, in her fifties, and she went for from a, the west. Yeah, she from wow, the west. Wow, she must look like she's a thousand over here. Yeah, well, she went for a massage. Okay. And okay. Uh, went to a place not knowing it was like an extra. Where was she? In Asso. Okay. Mm, yeah. So it's she's questionable. Getting, getting a massage, and so she, she's naked. Yeah, a yeah. Massage. Right. All of a sudden, she says the girl just starts finger blasting her. Really? Yeah. That's weird. I would think they would totally ask. No, just, just like the female. Just start like slamming at it. Right. And she was like, well, she's that further. She's rubbing it. Like Mining that. for gold. And oh, then, so she like had a little bit of foreplay. Yeah. Which she just like blam. But then she was like, she said she didn't know what to do. She was just caught off guard. She was like, what, what's going on? Like, what do you mean, what's going on? When she didn't know? <laughs> no, she knew, but she's like, what, what's this girl doing? Like, oh, I, she'd never heard of that sort of thing. No. Oh, she, she, okay. like, she knew it would happen to a guy, but okay. not. Okay. Right, right, right. She's like, she's like, I don't have a dick. Like, they, they can just grab her. Maybe girl's she like, did. Maybe she's been lying to you all these years. Possible. Mm. Never seen, so I can't Fair confirm enough. one way or the other. There you go. But so she said, next thing she knows, the girl's face deep in her. She, so from hand to mouth. Yeah. That gives that statement a whole new meaning so every she, time we so ever like, hear that. So I'm like, what did you do? She's like, I just let her finish. Up top. <laughs> Dude, we got to hang out with her. We got to bring yeah. her on the show. Yeah. But she comes back. Oh, well, come, are you kidding me? She probably comes here every weekend. <laughs> no. I love that place. <laughs> this is great. She lives, she lives in Connecticut. <laughs> so, you know, it's, I, I, I mean, I've been, heard plenty of stories, certainly yeah. from my guy friends, about also from other guys, even on yeah. podcasts. You know, guys like, oh, yeah, I went down to this place and a happy ending. We all know that mm-hmm. phrase. Never heard that happening to a woman. No. First time I ever heard of it. And that was like, several years ago. Yeah. That's just crazy. Three, three years ago now. So where is this place? On um, so 23. So, okay, backside of... Yeah, backside of Cowboy. Cowboy. Man. Wow. Yeah, so... Maybe they should be a sponsor. Yeah, I mean, right? you've got Black Cock... Uh, oh, yeah, we got the Black Cock... What is that, gin? Moonshine, essentially. Black Cock Moonshine. Black Cock Moonshine. Yeah, they could be a sponsor. This is, I mean, they already are. I, I would offer you some, but I know you... Yeah, no, no, no. Not, not for yeah. you. There's not enough in the world. <laughs> One's too many and millions and never enough. Very <laughs> right. accurate. Very accurate statement. So, Can't stop. Actually, you, you're very open about like yeah. your recovery. Yeah. Like, what, what's... And I know you're, you're kind of like at a point where like recovery is not a thing, but you still go to AA. I do, yeah. Which, again, but not part to, of that is I'm not supposed to say I do, but whatever. Oh, really? Nah, yeah. It's, here's why. Because if I sit here and I'm a spokesman for that, right? Yeah. And then for whatever reason, like, I drink again. Yeah. You know, people are going to be like, hey, it doesn't work. Yeah. Right? Now, of course, it originated based on the fact that, like, in the 30s... It was like Fight Club? If you, Yeah, you never talk about it. Yeah. Like, you never talk about Fight Club. That's yeah. the number one rule for AA. You yeah. never talk about AA. Well, and literally, so we have 12 steps. So, so I can't ask you about AA in Thailand? You, basically, yeah. Well, I'm gonna ask you about AA. No, 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 that's fine. So here's 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 what I'll say is that um, one of the, so we have you've heard of the twelve steps. <laughs> so where is this place? <laughs> so see, Aztec gets me, man. He's part of the cool kids table. He's, and, and let me guess, he's gonna lead with asking for a friend. <laughs> yeah, I always get those. So where is that place exactly? Because I'm gonna do a documentary. Yeah, asking basically. for a friend. Yeah, I'm yeah. asking for a friend. I'm gonna know. But so you've heard twelve step program, yeah. right? Everyone's heard of that. There's twelve traditions as well. If you don't know. Okay, but one of those is that we will remain anonymous yeah. at the level of press, radio, television, and films. Okay. okay. So when you see, like, you know, on, I don't know, uh, The Tonight Show, for yeah. example, you see they're interviewing the guy. And everyone in Hollywood's in fucking sober. Yeah. Otherwise, they're out of work. And, um, the, and But they'll never say they go to AA. They'll mm-hmm. be like, I'm in recovery, or I've been sober, or I've been clean, mm-hmm. kind of thing. Because, again, we're not... The organization is designed in a way that nobody would think would ever work. Yeah. There is no leader. There is no, there's there's shared leadership everywhere. There's mm-hmm. no president. There's no spokesman. There is public information in the sense like at three in the morning, you'll see on TV, if you've got, you know, if you want to get sober, or if you want to keep drinking, that's your problem. If you want to get sober, that's our problem. And we'll help mm-hmm. you with it kind of thing. You know, these little slogans, 1-800-COCAINE, for example, in the United States. Right? Oh, dude, let me tell you, I've saved my life. <laughs> At first, believe it or not, I called it thinking, 
did they deliver? Like, this is friggin' smart. And this was back in the, you know, the early 90s, yeah. before, like, this whole Amazon Prime thing was there. I'm like, how are they going to do last mile? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that market is, like, really... They got you, a scooter guy? Yeah. I mean, is there a guy in the nightclub? I mean, how is he going to get it to my... But, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I, I attend, you know, organizational meetings, yes. right, kind of thing. But the bottom line is that I go to places where people are going to seek solutions, yeah. you know, and then... It now at 28 years, right? Um, it's one of those deals where I absolutely do not. I mean, I can think about alcohol. I don't need to go buy any. I yeah. can walk by the store. I could see cocaine somewhere and be like, okay, like I can't, you know. Yeah. It just I just run the other way, kind of thing. But I go back there because, you know, I was hanging out with some friends, for example, on Copanyan. 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 Yeah. Did I say it right? Close enough. Good. Um, <laughs> and the woman to my left had uh, seven days sober. Oh. Lady to my right, one day sober. And of course, as you might guess, one of the things we sort of compare ourselves with, right? It's kind of like, well, where'd you buy a house? You yeah. know, what do you do for a living? That sort of thing. Well, in meetings, sometimes, how much time do you have? Yeah. That's a very common thing. So I'm like, well, you know, I get sober when I was pretty young. You know, and they're like, okay, well, how, much, you know, how long have you been sober? How long have you been in the meetings? How long have you been in the rooms? 28 years, right? And she looks at me like, why the fuck would you stay sober 28 years? And I'm like, if I told you one seventeenth of what I get to do in my life, yeah. you'd think I was bragging. And so the other thing is, you, you told me this, and I thought it was interesting. You got sober your first time. Yeah, I did. Like, boom, boom. I know. Well, yeah. But see, here's the thing. People are like, oh, my God, you got sober early, or oh, my God, you got sober, and you never, like, relapsed kind yeah. of thing. <laughs> I would submit, in order to do that, you have to hit bottom very quickly. Yeah. Like, in other words, oh, my God, people, you got sober so young. I'm like, yeah, no doubt. My life got shitty really friggin' fast. Yeah. I weighed 130 pounds. What's that, like, 65, 55 kilos? Yeah. I'm 6'2". Not, not a good look. No. And a lot of bone. A lot of bone. I was like, man, I could like model for National Geographic all day long. <laughs> you know, Sally Struthers would be like, we can't let this happen for 25 cents a day. We can feed this white guy. You know, and... Uh, Living in San Diego doing a load of cocaine. $6,000 a month. That's a lot of money at yeah. 44, 54, yeah. let alone 24. Now, that didn't last forever. Yeah, you're sucking a lot of dick to pay for that coke. You know what's crazy is, as much as you joke around about that, I would have done that. I honestly never did, yeah. but seriously. I mean, I got to the point where I was so desperate. The, the good news is, is that... That's the, the, the other side of the dick, right? You'll do anything. Pretty much, yeah. And then you be, I, I also became a monster. I mean, yeah. I was a total, total dick. Big time. Well, cocaine does that to people. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you don't you don't do that, you know, even recreationally and tell the truth. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're not a good guy. So, but I mean... And maybe I'm wrong, but isn't AA like a faith-based program? So the way that it's described is it is a spiritual program, not a religious one. Okay. Okay. And the reason they make that distinction, especially in the U.S., is that a lot of people grow up and they have this baggage, if you will, about you know the hypocrisy of religion, mm -hmm. or you know, you know, they molested the children, mm -hmm. or all these negative, or they had this deal, you know, a punishing God, and mm -hmm. all this stuff that they hate. So. It's important to make the distinction between, you know, you finding something that is more powerful than you. Because mm -hmm. don't forget, the first step, okay, in any 12-step program is, I admitted I was powerless over whatever, mm -hmm. alcohol, drugs, sex, spending, debt, whatever, and my life is unmanageable. And how, how does that work in, like, a, a, a Buddhist, sabai sabai country? So it's a great question. Um, and there is a book out there, for anyone who cares, uh, much like there is the Alcoholics Anonymous book. Yeah. There's the big book. There's, like, our text. And uh, it's got some recommendations in there as well as stories of people that have been successful. Uh, but there is a, a book out there that's actually pretty useful called Buddhism and the Twelve Steps. Mm. Because, believe me, if you're Thai and you've never, like, gone to a you know, Catholic church, Christian church, mm. whatever, and you go to a meeting, you know, I mean, it's rare, especially here, but in the U.S., I mean, they'll say the Lord's Prayer at the end. Oh. And people, it's very easy for people to be like, you guys said you're not religious, you said the Lord's Prayer. What the hell's your problem? Yeah. You know, so there's this attachment to it. So at the end of the day, what's been successful in AA is when the person obviously admits, oh, my God, I can't do this. Like, I can't even have a sip yeah. because I can't stop. Like, in other words, I didn't really love cocaine, but I love the smell of it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I will do that all day, every day. If I could use cocaine nonstop all day, every single day, normally, I would. Yeah. No problem. No problem. And uh, <clears throat> so, you know, you admit that you, but you really need to sort of attach something to there being a higher power somewhere. Mm -hmm. And whether that's like you're slamming yourself down on your knees and you're like, 
oh my God, I don't care who you are, I don't care what God is, I don't care what the, you know, help me, mm -hmm. save me, help me not drink today. Mm -hmm. Because it's a bitch. I mean, I don't know if you're addicted, like you're like, oh dude, I cannot eat ice cream, or I can't stay away from, if I go into power plug-in, pro yeah. plug-in, I can't leave that place spending less than $400, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And that's a little bit tongue-in-cheek. But I would submit you probably are not, you don't have an addictive personality. I haven't seen you yeah. behave in a way where you're like, where I'm like, Man, he needs to really stop that because it's ruining his life. Yeah, not not generally. Right. I tell you what, though, fucking mm -hmm. sticky rice, very close. You put some mango next to that uh, all little, day long. A little bit of coconut cream. Yeah. No, when you first came to Thailand, what did you weigh? Like about a buck sixty, buck seventy. <laughs> you're just like sticky rice and the shit out of it now. Dude, I, actually, if, if, if there's a place on Soy ninety three that has like amazing. Sticky, sticky rice, uh, mango sticky rice with the cream. Yeah, when when yeah. it's in season. Sure, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the downside, right? Is you can effectively buy it every single day of the year here. Yeah. But sometimes you eat it, you're like, oh man. Yeah, but there, there's like there's a three month period where it's like epic. It's, it, it could be cocaine. Uh, okay, I believe you believe that, but I know what you mean. I know what you mean. <laughs> no, but it, I mean, it, yeah. it's like it's like sunshine on top of <laughs> rice. You know? Yeah, like, exactly. Like oh, free oh, cocaine oh, for an yeah, addict, it's like free cocaine. Yeah, yeah, an unlimited yeah. amount of yeah. And uh, it, it's like two dollars. I know, and, and like, that's expensive too. Yeah. Right? You're like sixty baht. That was like but, fifty baht last but week. But that's like premium. Yeah, like, like no, for that's sure. when mango. Like now it's like forty baht. Right. Right. Because it's not mango season. When it's mango season, and they're just like, they're so juicy yeah. when they cut the skin off. It's just like, like nectar falling out of the mango. You don't need. You just like. Yeah. You just, yeah. Oh. The rice has more texture. Than the actual mango. So and then they put that that toasted uh, mung bean on top. I just thought it was sesame seeds. That's mung bean. Oh, they're pretty good. Yeah, toasted mung bean. I like them. Yeah. Yeah, but see, yeah. yeah. So anyway, there's you know there's yeah. a whole addiction thing. Yeah. So yeah. But, we could do a whole show on that. I mean, I gotta tell you, I mean, as far as like strange things going on. Have you had durian? Yes, it's disgusting. It is. I don't like it. Obviously, the smell of it is friggin' gross. So it smells like burning garbage. There is no other fruit in the world that hotels will hang a picture of with yeah. a red circle and a line through it. It's not like don't bring your apples so in here. It smells like burning garbage. Yeah. And it tastes like rotting onion but sweet. Yeah. It, it has the consist consistency of custard. It's one of those things where you're like, I have to force myself to get used to this. And it's got a skin on it like a sausage case. Well and then there's the spikes. Well and this I'm just talking about the fruit. Yeah the actual fruit. Yeah. And people fucking love it. They do, which is crazy. Now, what about crazy what about Jib? Loves it. Really? Loves it. Loves the smell of it. Like if she smells it down the street, which of oh, course you can. Yeah. From she, like seventy kilometers. She, away. And she wants it, like so soft, it's like just falling off the seat. And will she buy it and like bring it back? And yeah. You gotta, you gotta leave it on the porch, so, right? Like I don't mind the smell of it now. Really? Like, yeah, she eats it so much. But oh my! So much. Yeah. Like when it's in season, she'll buy it. But okay. it's like a very high calorie fruit. Yeah. Sure. Right. So uh, and then ties with it. Oh, don't drink alcohol with dirt. So a t Thai guy oh. told me when I first moved here, like, don't drink alcohol with dirt, you'll die. Really? Like, what? That's the st that's the stick. Okay. Because he, he's like, oh, you'll have a heart attack because it's it's like uh, the alcohol. It's, it's like <laughs> the alcohol and the dirt. That, that is not true. Clearly. And, and so uh, he's like, no, no, really. And so I, I took a big bite of durian yeah. against my like better judgment. Yeah, sure. And then I pounded a beer. Yeah. I was like, still alive. Oh, you did it right still in front alive. of him. Like, yeah. look at me, buddy. And he's like, no, 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 no. You gotta have some whiskey. He's like, he's, he's like, you're gonna, he's like, you're gonna be sick. You're gonna die. And he's like, you should did go you get sick? I was not sick. That was sick. So you just kept drinking and drinking and drinking. I'll show this guy. <laughs> Absolutely. One beer. One, one beer is my limit. It, really? Yeah. Yeah. See, that's the thing. I, you could take it. Or leave. It's like that piece of yarn. Yeah. Like to you to, or to me. Yeah. I could. Yeah. I could take that or leave it or it doesn't matter. One, one no sip of alcohol though, and you're done. Done. Yeah. I can't stop. Wow. And here's the other thing too: is that uh, once the alcohol comes in, I need more density of it. In the sense that, like a beer, like I drank beer rarely. It's twelve percent yeah. alcohol. Give me a break. It's like, no, it's like four percent alcohol. Four to oh, six. twelve proof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four, yeah, yeah. four, four to six. six yeah. Yeah. And but I mean, I was like, am I okay? Fine. If it's the only thing I got, that, that's what I'll do. But I was like three to four bottles of hundred proof Southern Comfort. Yeah, you're telling me SoCo was your thing. Yeah. Yeah. SoCo and cocaine. And, yeah. 
Yeah. Good combo. Yeah, it's, oh yeah. Let me tell you, because I had the sugar. You know, that was so funny. So I was telling my buddy, we were that I was in this. On, on, I was on the board of something. Yeah. So we were gonna have like this, you know, big event and everything. And he's like, well, I heard you don't drink, whatever, you know. And then he's, you know, every now and then, inevitably, the questions come up. What was it like? What did you do? You know, of course, anything I tell them, even if I tell them the smallest of stories, their eyes open up like, crazy. Jesus Christ, why would you do? My God, if you did it like that, why didn't you just stop? I'm like, yeah. Trust me, it doesn't just we're gonna just flip the switch off. You know? Yeah. But um, I said, yeah, I used to drink, you know, three to four bottles of 100 proof Southern Comfort every night. And he goes, man, that's a lot of sugar. And I'm like, right, <laughs> it was the sugar that was making my life so fucking impossible. <laughs> the, the, the threat of diabetes yeah. at 24 years old. I said, I think, why do you think I didn't eat Big Macs? Because I just had to have it. Any custard apple yeah. or soursop available in Thailand? So soursop, I like, actually. Have you had that? It's like a pear juice. I've had that from yeah. the Philippines. What's this other one? Sure. Sh- well, you can you can put it on the screen. You just yeah. click the, the thing. Shamoya? I don't know that one. Custard apple or soursop available? I've never heard of any of these. Yeah, no, soursop is very common in the Philippines. Gracie and I would buy that actually at the Philippine grocery stores in the U.S. Okay. And it's kind of like, wouldn't you say that? It's like kind of like pear juice. I don't know what he, uh, what's his, what does the... Hate the player, hate, hate the game. Yeah, hate player. Um, and that stuff actually I like pretty good. The other one I've never heard of. Um, I, I've got, I had mango pear, mango peach the other day. That'd be good. So it's I, pretty I, sweet. I, I, pay, I paid $12 for peaches. <laughs> Not that for how a, many for a peach? Not that long ago. Twelve dollars for one peach. So I bought a pack of two. Um, for three sixty? Yeah, each. Three hundred and sixty baht, or three hundred and thirty baht. No, no, it was like it was like basically seven hundred baht for two peaches. Wow. Yeah. Where was this? At a donkey. I was gonna say it must be like Villa Market or something. Like it, that. It, was, it was like that Japanese market donkey. So they're imported from Japan. Yeah. Okay. It's like, here's the thing: like I haven't had a peach in forever. Right, like a fresh peach, like just like jarred peaches. I'm trying to think if I've seen them in the markets. No, you haven't. You only see them in the specialty grocery stores, and they have that like styrofoam covering. They're imported either from Korea or Japan. Oh my God! So they don't—it's not like oh yeah, let's get them from Georgia. Yeah, no, no, no. They're like three hundred baht each. Okay, and well, they, but they're huge. But they're also expensive in Japan. Yeah. Let alone here. They're, they're delicious. Mm-hmm. And so Jib was like, because sometimes I'll buy like jarred peaches and syrup or whatever. Yeah. But Really, Del Monte. Yeah, it doesn't really yeah, hit the, hit no, the no, spot, yeah. right? Well, plus the syrup is so freaking yeah, ridiculous. Way too over yeah. the top. And so I got these, uh, I bought these two peaches, and Jib was like, oh, it's so expensive. Like, it's not worth it. Um, so I, I, when we got home, I cleaned it, cut a piece off, and gave it to her. She was like, wow. Did, she, did, did you take the skin off or eat the skin? Eat the skin. I totally eat the skin yeah, up top. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. See, so you get me. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a skin-free guy. What about Jib? <laughs> Have you seen my circumcision scar, Mike? This thing's a thing of beauty. <laughs> but uh, it's a, she, this is her first time to have a fresh peach. Uh, and, ever? Ever. Really? That is not a thing yet. They're crazy expensive. Okay. So for her, like, she could buy a mango for 20 baht, like, during peak season, which is mind-blowingly delicious. Yeah, right, for 20 baht. Here's the thing. If you live in the U.S., you've never had mango. Yeah. You may think you've had mango. No kidding, yeah. But you've never had mango. Where do we get it from in the U.S.? South America, South right? America, yeah. yeah. It's not, not even the same. I love how the mango, who, who, who are in the sour stuff, you, I've certainly bought uh, you know, dried mango from the Philippines, yeah. right? And it's like from Cebu. Like those are the ones that they just sell pallets of it. Yeah. In the, but the thing that's funny about it is it says it's of export quality. Yeah, because if it were like domestic, it, that we would we only keep the shitty stuff here in the Philippines. Yeah. That was something that I found out. I so I come over to Thailand, I go to the Philippines, I'm in Vietnam, and I'm thinking, oh my god, all of my shirts they say they're made there. I'm gonna go over there. They're gonna be cheap. They're gonna be everywhere because they were made down the friggin' soy. No, all the good quality shirts made over here get shipped to the United States. It's the same thing with uh, so they grow asparagus here. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And uh, so, but if you buy like domestic asparagus, it's like this little shitty, like uh, twig, twig asparagus. Okay. But if you go to like a villa, it'll say export quality. Yeah. And it's like these big, Thick, juicy, right? Thing. Makes your pee smell immediately. Yeah, it, lo- it looks like like some like a uh, porn star schlong of <laughs> asparagus. It's just like like a whole bushel of like porn star schlong. And that just brings it right back to the first <laughs> right beginning. Back to strange. Absolutely. All fruit in Thailand is amazing. I hate coming home uh, back to bland, right? Fruit in America sucks. So do vegetables. 
tomatoes, yeah. you could close your eyes and be like, what the fuck am I eating? Here, yeah. it, the goddamn thing smells like a tomato, yeah. let alone tastes like one. I eat tomatoes like apples here. Dude, like... tomatoes at Burger King on the burger actually taste like something. Help to here. describe, sour is grown in Vietnam. Sour I have to, I have to look it up. Sour sauce. It's, it's pretty sweet. Yeah. I mean, oh, custard apple. I think I know what custard. It looks like a um, you, you said custard apple uh, hit the player in your previous uh, comment. I think it's like a, I think they call it sugar apple here. And they grow here. Yeah, it's like okay. it, it pulls off into like little hexagon looking segments. I think. That's weird. You know what I love is jackfruit. That's sweet. Jackfruit makes like the best uh, smoothie. Vegan, the the best vegan meat substitute. In like in other words, you can mold it and make a hamburger out of it. Kind uh, of thing? You make like pulled pork or like, okay. You dehydrate you keep it, keep it, season it, yeah, and yeah. bake it, and it makes like a decent like stew, fill, like a filling. Okay. It's not like meat, but like a like a thick filling. So it's not like Beyond Meat or those like okay fake companies that make the I soy. That Beyond Meat is fucking crazy. That that's an addictive thing. You know what all I give a shit about? What? Bought low, sold high. <laughs> Their stock has been epic. Yeah, lately. you told me you bought. There's nothing. They're just gonna get better too. I'm sure. I, you know, it's it's very interesting how obviously a lot of people have lost their jobs. That sucks. A lot of businesses have closed. I walked just walk into your place today. Yeah. Easily two more places for sale. Completely boarded. Not yeah. boarded, but you know they do the metal thing to hang in. And um, but of course over here it's like yeah it's for sale, but it's yeah. for sale at what the market value was last November. Yeah. They don't discount that thing no. at all. Real estate's a different beast here. Yeah, like, for sure. So Jim and I have been looking at like we've been talking about like potentially like. I want to get someplace about twice the size of this. So that would be like 400 square meters? Yeah, like, yeah, like uh, 600. 600, so about 6,000 square feet? Yeah, so, but I want to do something that's like, I want like more workshop space, less living space. So I want but, more. So you do, I mean, this is two floors. So yeah. you effectively just have a four story one? So what I was saying is like maybe like a big, like first floor kind of like workspace, like studio. Which is kind of what you got now. But then, like, just like a small apartment above it. Okay. Or like buy like an old building and renovate. Like warehouse kind of thing. Yeah. So I mean, somewhere between here and Udonso. Yeah, I mean, again, you know, the further away you get, right? Yeah. I mean, again, if you guys don't know, what he means basically is between here and like two blocks from here. I mean, not two blocks. Two stations. Two stations from yeah. here. Yeah. Um, now Udonso is coming up. I mean, Udonso yeah. is going to be the new Prakanong. Probably. You know? Yeah. I mean, once they get some, once they get the Bangkok Mall in, holy shit. Is it going to be the biggest mall in the world or biggest mall in Asia? Two kilometers long. It's going to, so here's what they, they're definitely going to, it's going to, definitely going to be the biggest mall in Thailand. It's owned by the same guy who owns Paragon, right? Or the same group. Uh, who owns that? Is that, that's not CP all. No, no, no. It's, it's a different group. But the, Is it Chinese? No, uh, Thai Chinese. Thai Chinese, okay, yeah, yeah. So the wealthier Thai, yeah, very wealthy Thai. But so different than Central Group, okay. But it's like its own thing. But yeah, that that mall is. I don't know if it's gonna be the biggest in Asia because there's like a mall in China that's like a city. Well, the, uh, interestingly enough, the, I believe the biggest mall in all of Asia is in the Philippines. And what? They, oh yeah. Um, it's like Mall of America, so yeah. let's call it something like that. It's in Manila. But what they do apparently is that they did this years ago is they bought the real estate around it yeah so if anyone ever makes a bigger mall they yeah, just expand just the fucking yeah <laughs> which again you know i mean at the end of the day i mean i get it that it's a good thing to have i suppose to be number one it's something so, but, uh, <laughs> maybe not consumption but yeah it's the number one at basically providing an air-conditioned facility with free wi-fi so, for the filipinos so that's the thing with malls in asia right like malls are dying in the u.s malls are thriving in asia because of aircon it, and the food and the experience. So here's the thing, like I hate the food at the malls in Asia, like for the most part. Yeah, like, yeah. Occasion. I mean, Terminal Twenty One food court's pretty good. That's a different story, though. Yeah, like, yeah. The food court at Terminal Twenty One is its own, like experience. Like, yeah. Street. It's like legit street food, mm -hmm. and it's cheap. Yes. But like you go to Paragon, like that fake ass street food on the ground level. Oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah, like yeah. two hundred baht for like no, uh, totally. mango sticky rice. Yeah. Like, fuck you. No, it's over. Two hundred baht. That's a crime. Well, I mean, they got boats that take you over there. You know, yeah. they get red. Yeah. But like you go to, well, that's I I can't say. I can't say. I can't say it's the same shit show though. It's very expensive. Overpriced like crazy. But I, I thought. But I still, can't say it was filled cheap. with people. I can't say it is not that big, uh, Aztec. Bangkok Mall well, is it is it Udon Sok or is it 
uh, yeah, Udumsuk. Udumsuk. Yeah. You get off of Udumsuk, and it's 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 south. In other words, it's it's basically the end of Udumsuk Road, yeah. right? Which is basically south of Udumsuk yeah. Station. So you've been to Mega Bangna. Oh, absolutely. So apparently, Mega Bangna can fit inside that mall yes. of Bangkok. Yeah, yeah. So um, Aztecs asking about like Icon Siam. It's actually not that big. Okay, well, again, okay, he's from Australia. Okay. I don't remember where you're from, but he, I mean, look, Sydney, great, huge, global city. Yeah. They don't have malls over there. So, Icon Siam is probably half the size of, of Paragon, maybe less. Yeah, Paragon's pretty big, but you also got to remember, Paragon is like a full-on housing next to it, right? I mean, I, it's got that massive hotel. Yeah, I, so Icon Siam is probably on par size-wise with Terminal 21. Yeah, uh, maybe yeah. a little bit bigger. Yeah, and Terminal Twenty One in Pathi is definitely better laid out. I mean, Terminal Twenty One in Bangkok goes straight up. Yeah, so, right. Whereas well, it's a little bit laid out. Well, think about the space they built in, right? Mm-hmm. It's like kind of major corner, yeah, right? right? So the one in Pathi, yeah, they built purpose built in. I've never been to it, but I saw it when they were building it. Yeah, it's it's built on like the edge of like the beach road, right? It's like a, uh, no, it's second road. Yeah, but I mean, it's like you. It's at the end of like where Beach Road ends. Yes, yes, it turn is. right. Pathy, Pathy and North Road. Yeah, and so the Dolphin Roundabout. They it, it's also place. more floors, right? It's not more floors, okay. but it's definitely more square footage. It's it's, it's distance. It, it's a whole section of like. Yeah, but it's huge. I would say Icon Siam is on par with Terminal Twenty One in Bangkok. Size wise, yeah. square footage wise, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty similar to. Uh, I was gonna say Emporium. Yeah, maybe. Em Quartier. Which one of them has like three towers? It's all fucking confusing. I got lost in there. Oh, I got Siam. No, uh, either in Quartier or in Port. Oh, uh, yeah, I think Quartier has it. It's like the Helix Tower, and then like yeah. you can get lost in all these. Well, Emporium's got uh, AIS. I have to leave at the 25 center. minute mark, but back for the duration. <laughs> the only problem is kind of leery about asking, what did I miss? <laughs> 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 so, uh, so the language here is a little different yeah. than live my ass off. Who do I? Did, did you hear the part about the porn star schlong asparagus? <laughs> or, or my lady friend who got a happy ending at a. Uh, who got finger blasted at a massage par? Like, you didn't miss much. Finger, <laughs> finger blasted, dude. That is gonna be. I'm using that somewhere. Yeah. How so, do you say that in Thai? <laughs> finger. Oh, I have to think about that. Yeah, definitely <laughs> think about that. So, Asik says I didn't realize that Paragon was that big. I haven't been in there for years. So, Paragon's. I think it's like it's top ten largest malls in the world. If it I'm is. not mistaken. Yeah, it is. Central World's considerably larger. Um, but it's also got that. Yeah. Mall next to it, like attached to it, is that kind of? It's like it's not. It's not like IT mall, but like Central World, like you know where the new Apple Store is, yeah. right? So like to the, I don't know what is that? I get east. Uh, I get anyway. So down whatever that main street is, like Rama Four yeah. or whatever it is over there. Um, there's that like it's it's like an IT mall next to it. Okay. And it's basically attached, but you can walk through the floors to the one next to it. So that makes Central World gigantic. Central World is the biggest mall in Thailand until Bangkok Mall. Okay. Bangkok. All right. Um, Mega Bangna is it? Mega Bangna is massive. Central World's seven floors. Uh, yeah, I guess you're Mega right. Mega is two. Yeah, I was gonna say it's only two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but well, I mean the so IKEA foot, there. footprint is bigger. Yeah. But overall square footage, not. Okay, got it. Right, and actually, I think there's nine floors in Central World because of uh, like the theater and the layers. Oh, and the layers. right, 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 yeah. And then there, on the other side, there's an extra floor as well. So Paragon is very huge. Mm-hmm. And especially there's parts of Paragon like you don't even... Uh, glad we're back to the porn, <laughs> Roberts. <laughs> so there, there's parts of... There are parts of... Paragon, like you don't even know exists. It's like a plastic surgery clinic in Paragon that's like around one of the corners. Does it have a, a driving range? What's the one with the driving range? No, it's not in the city. I know. Really? Okay, but I then also that. in Siam, there's all of these other like sort of ancillary malls. Okay. Siam Discovery. Yeah, Siam, right. All of that. Well, if you Icon get, Siam. If you get yeah. out on Siam, hmm. right, on the station for like, I mean, yeah. you know how they'll have like walkways. There's an entire floor, like it's all one floor beneath where yeah. the trains are, yeah. and it, it connects every single mall. Yeah, it's giant. In, in fact, it's so big, and there were so many people. They had to section it off when it was COVID. Yeah, so like then, you could only go to certain places. There, there's Par- Siam Paragon, Discovery, Siam Discovery. Uh, there's one more with the Siam in the name. Yeah, I thought there was like four. Now, there's four malls total yeah. on both sides of the road. Isn't MBK one of them? MBK is different. That's National Stadium. It's not Siam. 
It's close though. This guy, you can walk there from Scientology. Yeah, okay, maybe that's what I thought. MBK is huge too, but it's not even close to Paragon. And then there's, so you you told me about this, and I went over there, and I completely agree as far as like one of the top IT sort of tech malls, like yeah. where you can get actual, yeah, you can get phone cases and shit like that, you know, one after another and cables, but you can also get like decent audio, decent gear, yeah. is uh, a Fortune Town, Yeah. right? Is there anything else like that in Bangkok? There's like a pseudo Fortune Town? IT City. Where's that? It's, it's uh, just outside the it's outside the city. Okay. Uh, it's like a an IT mall, but it's like it's more like hodgepodge shops. Okay. They prepare. It's kind of like the fourth floor of uh, of MBK. Okay, got it. Yeah. yeah. Cheap shit. Yeah, and like repair shops, places that will fix your iPhone for like ten bucks. That's another thing that is Bangkok strange. If yeah. you've never been here before and you're like, geez, I wonder where I can get like a cable for my for my cell phone. MBK fourth floor. And there is a shop. Every four meters, there's a different table yep. selling exactly the same thing. 1,000 cases, 1,000 screen protectors, 1,000 cables. And what's crazy Central is... Central Plaza Westgate is the biggest by area, but less stores. Central Plaza Westgate? Where's West, that? I think that I think Westgate is the one out um, near Lot Prow. Oh, way up, what, towards the airport? No, uh, like, uh, yeah, like to Dom Young, Lot, Lot Prow that way. I think okay. that's Westgate. This, so this no that's hmm. Central Festival, out that way. I don't know which one Westgate is. Is that the one where the buses sometimes stop? Left the, the so he says left at the Lady Boy MMA fighter <laughs> came back with your mention of Linux and using only lowercase. <laughs> yes, please on anything Linux. No, I'm a, I'm a Linux guy. I, I ran Ubuntu for years. Yeah, and that's years a and years. really good distribution. Very yeah. reliable, lightweight. Yeah, super lightweight, and uh, you know, it, it's great because with there's all this. All these apps built into the Linux system that that install very natively. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, plus updates. Yeah, updates and support. Get app you, update done. Walk yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I ran Linux for years and years, and back in the day, I had a a myth server running on a, a Linux machine okay. in my uh, from my media center in my house. Nice. This is before like on demand. Oh, sure, and sure. All yeah, that. yeah. Um, well, so that RTMP relay server, yeah. that's Ubuntu writing in, nice. uh, it's like 1806, 18, something like that. I, I don't have any Linux, because uh, I run, my whole ecosystem is Mac now. Yeah, which uh, is okay. BSD. Steve says, oh, it's in Nantabri, IT shop, Pantip Plaza. Pantip Plaza, so isn't really, so, uh, Prevent Opa. Where's Pantip Plaza? So Pantip's not really a tech mall anymore. I, I don't think. It's not as good as it was when I first moved here. Zare ranks it, absolutely. Zare ranks it is legit. Where's that? So it's in Patum Tani and ranks it. It's, um, How do you get there? Not far from Future Park. So I don't know if you can, to the bus. I don't, I don't know if the train runs up that far yet. Okay. But when I lived in Patum Tani, I would drive my motorbike over to, to Zare ranks it. Okay. And uh, yeah, you can, it's, it's basically uh, a bunch of tech shops. And there's a, there's a couple, I think there's like a mini power buy in there. Okay. There's a, a which is not. There's a McDonald's out front, which has the, the wine Ronald McDonald's. Yeah, they have the, the um, classic. But yeah, Zare ranks it's a legit kind of like nerdy place. Westgate is Bang Yai District, Nantabri Province. Bang Yai. Uh, okay. went to Pantip, it was empty, yeah. Wow. So actually, last time I went to Pantip, they were selling dildos and porno DVDs in like one of the booths. Who the fuck buys DVD? Why would you buy DVD? They're probably VCDs, actually. But v? What does that mean? Video CDs. Like it's kind of a classic Asian thing. But you mean you just upload like the uh, they, they, V4 on yeah, it? Yeah, they just rip it. Like so, just data. Yeah, yeah but okay. but um, yeah. So that's one of the weird things. Porn's technically illegal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but like, so are like dildos, but. You can go into like some of these like more empty mall places, and they or, have the DVDs. Or like we'll just walk down Soy Eleven, and they're just or selling. Or Sukumvit across from Nana. Yeah, and they're just selling porn and dildos and butt Viagra. Parts. Yeah, street. Yeah, Viagra. Dick, like like <sighs> like street dick pills. If I was gonna, like, you can buy dick pills legally over the counter at from the pharmacy. pharmacy. Why so would why, you? Why would you buy dude, it from a street vendor? Of all, that's the thing. I say to my, I said, look, dude. Here is the 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 top five important safety yeah. tips. Never buy any friggin' Viagra Cialis, whatever, off some guy in the street. Or definitely buy your Viagra Cialis off some dude in the street. Fair enough. That's true. Yeah, that's true. By contrast, yeah. if you really want to have a good night, yeah. if you want to relive, if you want to live, don't. 
Yeah, right. But if you but if you want to live, yeah, if you want to live, definitely do live your ass off <laughs> potentially. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever had any guys ask you, so dude, is it really like the Hangover over there? Yeah, all the time. Isn't that crazy? Like, what, what do you mean? They're like, have you been to that bar? Yeah, like, like I know where that was filmed, but it's not the bar that you know. Well, it's, yeah, it's the other one, right? Yeah. Sorry. But the other thing too is when they have the. It, what's what's effectively supposed to be soy cowboy yeah. in the movie, which is completely some alley yeah. elsewhere, but like I mean, yeah, Just so that's what's body it. Viagra from a Nigerian. Oh, dude, yeah, right there on the John. Jo- hate the player, hate the game. John Jones style all day. Gas station dick pills, son. <laughs> Estrogen blockers. Yeah, actually, so horny hate, goat weed. Yeah, hate the player, hate the game. We talked about that on the episode that's gonna drop tonight on iTunes with uh, Tony Huge. Yeah, he he talks about. We interviewed him for like four hours, and we were joking about like uh, the John John Jones and dick pills. He's like, oh yeah, man, estrogen blockers. That's a great way to to do it. Tony <laughs> takes Tony takes Viagra every day. Every single day, every fifty day. milligrams. Yeah. And my first question was, dude, your headaches. Yeah. He's like, no. Nah. He's like, I don't get that. I mean, maybe you just get used to it. That's a lot of Viagra. Like every, Isn't it, though, it, right? And then he's talking about he can't fuck his prostitute girlfriend enough. See, now that's the whole... Because I, I actually, you were downstairs doing the air conditioning guy. Yeah. And he and I said, hey, so, okay, some of these stereotypes about guys that are on steroids and stuff. I mean, is it true it makes your dick smaller, you can't get it up, that sort of thing? He goes, no, absolutely not. And then, 30 minutes later, he's double-clicking on, oh, yeah, I basically take Viagra. I'm like, dude. But he's saying he takes it for, like, uh, like workout benefit. He also said he takes it for self-esteem. Do you remember that yeah. inference? Yeah, yeah. Which I, I mean, I get the whole, okay, I wish my dick was bigger. He, he also said he likes to watch Lady Boys fuck his girlfriend, so. Yeah, that was open-minded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's one way to put it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, look, I came over here and I was like kid in a candy store, too. With the Lady Boys? No. No. I mean, they were interesting, for yeah. sure. Because well, if for no other reason, I mean, I think I told you the story. I told my guys the story. I'm in Bangkok, like, first night. Okay, and I'm staying at the JW. And yeah. I get here, I'm here like one hour, and it's like two or three in the morning. I'm like, all right, I'm jet lag, let me walk around. So I walk around the JW, I walk down, what is it, I guess, Soy 1, right, yep. that goes to Nana. All the bars are like that. Soy 2? Soy 3 or Soy 2? Something like that. It depends on which side you're on. The, yeah, yeah, so the front where it says, you know, world's largest breaking out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Across, yeah. across from Hooters. What's now Hooters? And uh, so I walk, all the bars are letting out, and like, you know, I'm this guy, completely sober, you know, yeah. and they, you can tell if there's a new guy. Yeah. I mean, I didn't have socks and fucking sandals, but I was just like, obviously. <laughs> you might as well have. I might as well have, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like walking down the thing, and, uh, and you know, they're all, I mean, lip, like touching, like, oh my yeah. God, you know, can you, and so I start talking to this girl. Yeah. Talked to her for two hours before I realized it was a lady boy. She had been jacking off for the past hour. I guess. <laughs> I was just like. The, and so I, because we was a fairly dark area yeah. where we were, right? And we're like, said, you guys think Thailand will open up their airports again so I can live for? I keep talking. Internationally, no. No, not for a while. Not for the, not this year. Uh, the only way you can get over here now is charter. And it, well, sorry, starting October first, possibly you can get over here with the charter. But yeah, so I mean, it was really interesting to me. I was like, oh my god. Like, I mean, I look, because, I mean, you can spot a friggin' transvestite yeah. from two states away in yeah. the United States. Well, in the U.S., they look like me. It, you or me wearing a fucking dress, yeah. you know? And, um. Beard and everything. Basically, yeah. yeah. And then it just, you know, and I'm, I mean, hey, you know, it's kind of neat. It tickles. But, yeah. I mean, so I've heard. This one. But a friend yeah, told me. A friend, you know, I'm asking for a friend, and uh, so that was sort of interesting. So kid, but I mean, you know, and then I thought, okay, well maybe I'll do this one thing that I've never done. Yeah. Right. I mean, I'll do all every guy's fantasy, as they say, right? So I do that sort of thing, and then I start hearing about, you know, guy like Tony, right? A guy like that would like tell me some stories. I'm like, oh yeah, definitely, I'm gonna try that. And then I get to the point where I'm like, that's just not me. Dude. Yeah. Like I just, I, I mean, I don't know. I I don't think I'm terrifically boring, and certainly before I met Gracie, I was a lot more energetic worldly worldly but you know honestly i mean if you tell you a story i mean if it were you and me like yeah. having the infamous uh, locker room conversation yeah both of us would probably be like yeah, yeah. i mean did some whatever the, the, i think the funny thing about Tony is to talk about like like watching the lady boy fuck his girlfriend he oh so, girlfriend in quotes it's a very, very loose term girlfriend well yes yes as you and i would define it like yeah. in other words i have Gracie's my girlfriend. Yeah. There's no other, like, extra. There's yeah. no, like, only on the weekends or she won't see me kind of. No, yeah. no, no. Come on. I mean, for me. For yeah. me, that's same, the way Same I, for me. Yeah, yeah. But, it, but for Tony, it's like girlfriend means. He just she, has sex with her more yeah. than the other ones. And, like, 
I'm pretty sure if either of us were like, oh, I, I, I'd like to fuck your girlfriend before you go, we'd be like, absolutely. He'd be like, yeah, in fact, ah, oh, shit, I forgot my battery in my camera. I yeah. can't, is there any way you guys can record this? Yeah, he's like, can, can I use your phone and you send me that? But again, you know, you have friends. Right? Yeah. Well, Eric, he admitted it, yeah. polyamorous. Yeah. Right? And I'll tell you right now, Gracie came up to me and said, you know what, I've been thinking, I kind of want to be polyamorous. I'm like, well, guess who you're not going to ever spend any more time? I, I don't, gel, whatever. I, this is not me. Yeah, I don't, Eric doesn't, he makes it work for him. It's his life. It's been his Absolutely, life for a long yeah, time. Right. I, I couldn't do it. No, me neither. I don't have the energy for it. Well, I just don't, I don't desire that kind of like extra. Yeah. Like in other words, I didn't meet Gracie and be like, oh, I can't wait to date her for 18 months so I can get a better one. No. Yeah. I mean, I just, let just like, oh, sure, when you met Jib, yeah. you're like, oh, yeah, this is kind of cool. It's working out. Oh, yeah, I like her a little bit more tomorrow, you yeah. know, kind of thing. And it just builds, builds, builds. And then finally, you're like, well, shit, we're going to get married. Yeah, six years later, you're like, oh, I guess it's working out. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And I don't wake up and be like, oh, that was a shitty decision. Again, but unlike Tony, neither of us go to brothels in the Philippines looking for a baby mama. No. And, you know, and again, I I was thinking about that the other day. Did he go there looking for someone to give birth to a child of his? That's what he said. Okay, because I couldn't remember whether it was that or he's like, okay, my next wife. But it was, no, I want someone to produce a no, child. No, he, he doesn't want to be married. He wanted to have a baby with okay, a got prostitute. It. Yeah, because yeah. she was experienced. Yeah, it was, he, Which I don't get. Is that, remember what? Is I that, get the sex experience thing. So he, he, he says he likes that lifestyle. And you, you guys can listen to the whole episode yeah. when it drops tonight. It's, well, because it's four hours. Four right? and a half hours. But it's nonstop. Yeah. It's not like, well, let's, you know, let, let's just talk about playing cards. No, 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 no. Yeah. More yeah. vagina, more yeah. lady boy. Yeah. More drugs, more lady yeah. boys. Right. More, like I say, he talked about fucking dudes, fucking lady boys, the but difference. But he did say, yeah, I've tried that. I've tried the dudes thing. I was like top or bottom. He's like, whatever. But yeah, but he also didn't seem like he really liked it. Yeah. Like the having sex with the guy thing was more like, yeah, I just checked it off my list, but yeah. I didn't feel like doing it anymore. Like, yeah, he said it's not for him. Right. But the ladyboy thing. Ladyboy, he loves it. But she, see, that's the other thing, too, man. If you've never been to Thailand and you hear you and I, yeah. who, I guess, you know, self proclaimed normal guys, yeah. right? Strange guys. Strange guys, you know. But but talking about, you know, that sort of thing, you think, oh my God, they're, maybe they're gay. Uh -huh. You know, maybe they're, you know, there's like, it's totally different it, over here. It, 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 when, also, I would argue, like, it's a weird argument to make, I guess, but lady, like being with a lady boy, I think wouldn't be gay. No, I don't. I don't believe it is. Yeah, it, only because it maybe in like the most like rigid, like Anglo Christian, yeah, mi Middle America sure, sure, sense, hundred sure. percent yeah. gay. Yeah, but but it depends what you do with them, right? It's actually, yeah, but but I mean, in uh, I think in just like a worldly individual's kind of point of view, the furthest thing from it. Well, because the point is, is that. They don't get into. They don't want to be a lady boy because they want to be mildly attractive. Yeah. They are obsessed with yeah. looking like a woman, being a woman. Like, like Jessica Rabbit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just like thin waist, big boobs, kind yeah. of thing. But they also they act it. They 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 prefer to act that. Way, yeah, yeah. Which is arguably what you would label in the United States as like totally gay. Like, dude, you're being totally gay. So like we would, right? Here's the other thing, right? Like uh, tomboys in Thailand. Yeah. Right. Take on. Like, I have a friend, she's a, she's a tomboy, and, uh, like, she had surgery to remove her breasts, like, she's a... Wow. Like, she, she's got a, a girlfriend who's, like, super hot. That's rare. Who had boyfriends before. Yeah, right. And, uh, and she's just, like, she works out. I don't know that she's on testosterone, but I'm assuming. Yeah, probably. Because right. of the amount of muscle she's put on. Yeah, right. But, yeah, like, she, like I said, she had her breasts removed, like, she had... And like she didn't, not like she, she was rocking D cups before she's tired. Yeah, so yeah, she yeah had like, sure, right, yeah. She had like little A cups. Right, right. But, uh, you know, but she's just, the way she looks now, she's taking on, she's still very feminine, she's still very attractive. Really? But she's just taking on a much more masculine form. It's behavior, too. Yeah, and she, like, when she talks, so you guys who, who know a little bit of Thai, there's a gender specific sound. Yeah, Like they, a ka, and, krup and ka. Krup. And some lady boys will say ha. Yeah. But, um, so my friend who's a tomboy, she will say, crop. Right, okay. like a guy would, yeah. like you and I would. Yeah, right. but, in, and so it's funny, like, ties will refer to, like, a gay person, like a gay guy, they'll refer to her then as she. Right. Even if they're not a lady boy. Right, right, right. Right, it's, there. it's, you know, it's not meant to be offensive, it's the way that they kind of conceptualize. Yeah. Gen and genders, I, I would argue that in, it, it's, it's weird, in Thailand, gender is much more static at the same time, it's much more fluid. Uh, and more accepted. Yeah. But, but I mean, it's like, it, from 
at the same time, people have a very rigid view of it and also a very fluid view of it. That's a good, yeah, that's yeah. a good it's hard to explain, like if, if you haven't lived here for any no, period of time. It, yeah. And I don't even know that I can articulate the, the whole concept. Well, plus, the other thing, too, is I mean, your first interface, certainly mine, and what I've discovered is many of my buddies, too, your first interface with yeah. Lady Boy, usually it's in a red light district. Yeah. Actually, mine was at university. Well, yeah. yeah. I, I, okay, yeah, to be fair, actually, my first, after I discovered, you know, talking to this guy, was the following morning at Starbucks. Yeah. Tons of them work at Starbucks, tons of them work at 7 Eleven. So, here, this is great. So, talk about like red light district, but lady boy sex workers, the McDonald's next to Robinson's between Asok and Nana, anytime after midnight, it's a 24 hour McDonald's. Okay. And the Robinson that Downstairs? You, yeah. The okay. Robinson that you can get to from the Sky Bridge at Asok PTS. Okay. You go in there anytime after midnight before like maybe 7 a.m., mm. jam packed with lady boy. Uh, that's exactly. interesting. I found that to be very common in the Philippines, the McDonald's. That's where the freelancers would go. Yeah. Not necessarily, but girls too. But so wait, this really? Yeah, yeah. That's kind of it. I mean, that's far away from so, Nana. So, well, it's in, it, it's in between Nana and... In, Cowboy. Yeah, and these are freelancers, but like like more of like the streetwalker type. So it's like it's, chicks from Cowboy, though, coming over from... No, them. no, it's like... like they're not quite at the level to work at a cowboy or a Oh, uh, God. So it's Beach Road Chicks. Yeah, Beach Road Chicks. Yeah, right. And so I, I found this out. I was with Jeb. And, I'm like, uh, hey, let's get a burger. No, so we're... It was after the Full Metal Dojo when it was at the Old Insanity. Okay. And it was probably like 1 a.m. Okay. And uh, we, we were popping in there to get like uh, something to eat, something to drink. We've been there all night, so we're hungry. And uh, I'm looking around, I'm like... This is a McDonald's. Yeah, this is a McDonald's okay. one. Okay, I know what this McDonald's is here for now. Got okay. it, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, it just, like, jam, like 90% of the clientele in there at that point were these girls. And you walk in and they, then they see you're with someone. Yeah, that's the other way. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, you're not worth my time. I love walking down the street holding Gracie's hand. Yeah. Not one girl bothers me. Yeah, yeah you walk solo. Like. Oh, my God. You yeah. know. Which, again, when you're first over depends here... Depends on the soy, right? Depends on the soy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, that happens... Well, you know what's funny? Is I was walking from... Uh, I was walking down Beach Road from the pier all yeah. the way to the bus station. Mm -hmm. Right? So probably like three, four, five, six kilometers, whatever. And afternoon, I'm sweating like crazy, right? Mm -hmm. And to the point where, like, my shirt has got, like, stains on it because yeah. I'm sweating so much. And I walk by these massage places. None of the girls ask me anything. They took one look at my shirt and yeah. they're like... Oh yeah. my god. I'm all set with that. Clearly he's Russian. There's no friggin' way I'm touching that sleazy ball. That's well, greasy and Yeah, shit. no, forget it. His, his money's probably dirty. <laughs> it's not gonna work for me. Money's covered in cocaine. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, again, I can't imagine doing that in Thailand. Just instant jail time. Yeah. Friggin' very terrifying. How long are we in now? Are we in about three hours? 3.15. 3.15? I mean, that's, I think that sounds pretty good for the that's first a, Yeah, time. it's a pretty good yeah. three-hour live stream, our first go at it. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So, guys, we're going to wrap this up. What's the point? 1-800... 877 uh, wow dude 877 wow dude 877-383-9699. So or, sorry, sorry, sorry. 877-969-3833. One of those is right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, something. Wow Re dude. Just rewind. Wow dude. So if you want to leave us a message for the next live stream or for a future episode, you can do it there. Yeah. We'll figure out some other way to, to get it. Uh, maybe like a, a, uh, there are a couple of web-based tools we can use. Well, they can email can, BangkokStrange at Gmail. Yeah, send us an email, BangkokStrange at Gmail. Yeah. Leave us a comment on another episode or, or leave a voicemail if you want us to play that. Yeah. I missed the first two hours. Uh, Aztec, I appreciate you coming for the last and you can always, uh, you can always catch it. On the uh, on the channel, it'll be posted up there. Love the stream, though. You guys are fun lift. Thank you very much. Right on, man. Appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate you. Um, again, we'll have Tony Huge's episode drops tonight. That interview, I haven't put it on YouTube yet. I don't know if I have time to, to get a, a version up on YouTube on time, but well, you got an MP3 of it, right? That's, yeah, I'll, I'll take care of it. So, yeah. all right. So Michael, take care. Yeah. Cause I got to go out to the uh, optometrist and get my uh, eyes checked. Okay. Yeah, a little bit too much. Uh, yeah, uh, like, how bit. blind, Dad? Yeah, yeah, like super blind. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see shit. And on that note, I went home with a lady boy the other day. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was 
20 Jesus. minutes in before I realized. <laughs> you were like, wait a second, I can't even see. Let me use the Braille method. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. I see who you are. <laughs> so, appreciate it, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. You know, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, wherever you get your podcasts. YouTube channel for sure. We're going to we're trying to work out a, a good live stream schedule so yeah. we can get these going more sure. frequently and uh, do some fun stuff. And they don't always have to be in person at the studio. We, even though we only live like a, a two stations. One but station I'll be traveling. Two two, one one be station. Traveling. Yeah. When's your next trip? So Suratani, September 9th through the 19th. I'll be back down in Copanyan. Yeah, Copanyan. Copanyan. Mm-hmm. So I gotta do, we'll do live streams there. Yeah. Definitely, at least one. You staying at the same bungalow? I'm going to start there, but again, I'm going to keep going clockwise around the island. It's not a big island. No, absolutely not. But I only made it like three beaches. Yeah, well, because you got to that isthmus. Yeah, it's I was like, just like, this is freaking awesome. Why would I go any further? Plus, I only got two more days. Done. Yeah, how long are you staying for next time? Ten days. Ten days. Yeah. Days. Well, it depends. So, the Canadian embassy tells me that they're supposed to have my new passport mm. on September 15th. Okay. But I don't think I need to go the day they say it's available to pick it up. No. I'm sure I could wait four or five days. Yeah. Come back with a tan. Yeah. Bring my own isthmus. Your own isthmus back? Sure, why not? The lady boy action. Wow, happening. I mean, every time. Every time. I mean, you're talking a married guy as <laughs> well as a guy who's basically married, and all we talk about is lady boys. Lady boy. Is that wrong? Tony wouldn't say so. Tony is awesome. I love Tony. <laughs> He's so open minded. So, when, so, actually, there's no parties, really, no other tourists down there, right? No. Well, okay, so apparently there is the full moon party every month during the full moon. Even still with COVID. Even still, yeah. However, obviously there's significantly less people it's basically just the people that live there or that come over from Sumui or that sort of thing so it's let's yeah. see if you, any bodies wash up on the beach when you're there yeah so I mean, Copenhagen for those of you guys that don't know right. it's called um the full moon party too I much think. porn makes you blind <laughs> how blind dad yeah good thing I have the 35 point font on this so I can see <laughs> control plus, 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 plus. <laughs> so Copenhagen is the pretty much the death capital of Thailand for tourists uh, as it relates to basically overdosing. Well, idiots getting high and drunk yeah. think it's a good idea to go swim. swimming. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. 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 the full moon makes it so bright. Anyway, with that, we will end this live stream. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, stay strange. Peace.